that uh, youngsters get a chance to come out of karting and uh, sort of make their way into what is going to be uh, the top end of uh, South African motorsport. And that is, uh, first of all, probably from here to Polo Cup, from Polo Cup into South African Touring Cars, and from South African Touring Cars Super Cup, all the actual South African Touring Car system itself, making their way up, up, of course, looking into getting a massive amount of support that will allow them to get through, and more importantly, a massive amount of experience that will gain here. You've got the likes of uh, Daniel Rowe, who uh, should be joining me uh, shortly in commentary, um, and hopefully he'll be uh, giving us a little bit of insight as to how this all works. And then also the likes of uh, Matt and Jono, the two uh, ex-Volkswagen pilots that uh, came out of the Volkswagen Driving Academy and out of the Volkswagen Racing Team that are coaching these youngsters and getting them uh, into what is going to be their first official season of National Championship Motorsport. I just want to go to the qualifying quickly on our sheets here just to get the exact standings as how they are going to be lining up for, you for the very first race of the season. as they roll to the line. Lap time is going down into the 134s is the quickest lap of the uh, weekend so far. 134.199. Give you an idea from karting alongside Chad Bertold. Jaden Kirsten and Daniel Rowe, of course, is in there for uh, this, this race. And uh, he'll be joining us, I think, for the second race then for uh, a little bit of additional commentary. Uh, Uzia Khan and Josh Moore will be alongside each other there for what is going to be the third row and uh, it looks like we might have uh, either Jonathan or Matt in one of the cars out there as well just for, uh, to fill the field and give that car a run. They're all exactly the same colors, they're the one litre uh, turbocharged machines and of course those, uh, those polos uh, were developed last year actually as part of the Volkswagen Challenge by Stuart Mack uh, in lieu of the fact that Rookie Cup would be uh, starting things out this year in a full, fully fledged championship running in conjunction with because of uh, the extreme festival of motorsport and with the Volkswagen Polo Cup. On some occasion there's going to be possibilities that these guys might even join the back end of Polo Cup depending on the circuit and how long it is. If there's enough space there's normally going to be enough time for them to go to play. As you can see they're heading down in towards turn number one. Only difference on the side of the cars basically it might be a little bit of a personal sponsor or the livery as you can see, has also got uh, just a, a, a blue or orange, a yellow or a white stripe in the front end of the car to show you how things have gone and uh, what's what's gone down there with uh, the po the uh, Rookie Cup. So as they go into Cashel Corner for the first time, pushing hard, they're giving an Judd Berthold, of course, with the front row, looks like they've got away ever so slightly. They were kind of about a second quicker than anybody else, so it should be uh, basically how, they, how they'll be lined up. And uh, they could possibly be following on there. The 17 car going through there is Josh Moore. He's made up a few positions off the start grid. So not a bad start there from him. And, of course, he'll be looking to try and uh, up his game throughout the weekend and see if he can get into the mix there with the front end of the field. So just waiting to pick up on some timing when to pick up some timing as well the timing apparently hasn't gone out just yet so we'll get to that as soon as we can and hope you've enjoyed all the action so far a big welcome to all of our friends and fans from all around the world joining us here for uh, round one of the extreme festival of motorsport it's uh, a round that's going to see lots of action from polo cup from rookie cup so they begin touring cars make their debut here under near the their new uh, branding as the touring cars as opposed to what was global touring cars in the day and then uh, we'll be seeing action from the Sunbed ZX-10 Masters Cup, Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop, and of course the Formula 1600s as well. That's uh, our lineup for the day. So you can see in the background there, the battle raging for what is about 4th, 5th and 6th place there, or 3, 4 and 5. 3, 4 and 5 at this stage, as you can see the 78 car there coming through of uh, Uzziah Khan. He's just up the road there. 
And uh, the 31 car there, I think it's Coach Dan. Coach Dan in there, so Daniel Rowe will be in uh, one of those. Coach, uh, all the coaches running in these cars as well, just to give the guys a, a look and feel of what it actually feels like to be in a pack of cars as well. And give them the experience of fighting it out amongst themselves. They, they all literally come from a karting background. So uh, the majority of these uh, drivers coming out of karting and stepping into what has been an amazing run so far for uh, the uh, race action that we've seen in Polo Cup. And of course, these are the guys that are going to possibly be the future of Polo Cup heading back down towards turn five, Fostron corner. Nice move there around the outside. Looks like uh, Judd Bertolt trying to find a way past the 27 car, just putting the pressure onto uh, Divian Naidu at the front. Nice little battle between these top two. As you can see, they've pulled a bit of a margin now, over three and four, which is uh, Jaden Person and Daniel Rowe. Daniel Rowe and Josh Moore tucked in behind that is uh, Uzziah Khan and Manny Merton. As I said, Manny Merton running at the back of the pack. Oh, sideways there from Judd Bertold into turn number one. Nicely done. Caught that car very nicely, but he had it absolutely lit under braking. And see how hard he's trying to get through there on Divian Naidu. The lap times there, 35.5 is the best time coming out of Divian Naidu, but a 34.9 just been done by Judd Bertold to close that gap down on uh, the leader. So we uh, expect to see a big battle between the two of them as they get into it now for the first time here in Rookie Cup. It's an eight lap as I said and they now are uh, well into that third lap of racing here at Kilani International Raceway. Big push on the cards here between those two drivers as well and they are looking pretty tasty at this point and uh, I've got to say from a Motorsport point of view, this is certainly the way to go. Uh, following on, on a very similar vein to what we'll be chatting about later on with uh, the guys from Toyota Gazoo Racing, <coughs> giving more youngsters opportunities to get into saloon cars. The more, the merrier. I always say, um, there's a there's a whole stable of drivers, of course, that come out of karting that go into the uh, the other category that'll be on track a bit later on. But uh, this is Volkswagen's way of possibly honing the skills of some future champions. Naidu just showing his karting prowess there and just uh, taking the wider line. Got the drive out of the corner which ensured that he stayed in the front end of the race and ensured he stayed in uh, the front of uh, Judd Bertolt more importantly. But the way the two of them are fighting, they are starting to slow each other down ever so slightly. You can see in the background, it looks like Jaden Hurston and Daniel Rowe are going to be closing in pretty rapidly onto the back end of that one. So the battle for the lead could change up into what is going to be one a fight for Possibly four, four cars. Naidu on his last pass, 36-3. 36-3 from Judd Bertolt. And then the 34-7 and the 34-7 out of Kherson and out of Daniel Rowe. So, you know, certainly some big, big issues here. As they fight so hard together, these two should realize that uh, they've done that in karting. And, oh, banging. They're touching into turn three and four and down in towards... Uh, Dab strip. You can see a big uh, dam bit of damage on the one side of the car, and uh, somebody running wide as well. I think that was might be uh, Jaden Clisson. Yeah, Jaden Clisson just running ever so slightly wide, coming out of uh, Dam strip, and now up that short straightaway into Sorrel Sweep. So as they come through there, oh man, it is getting real. All four cars now in the mix at the front end, and all four of those cars in with a chance now of a victory. Divianada, Judd Bertolt, Jaden Nicholson and Daniel Rowe. Remember, Daniel Rowe won't be scoring points in this championship. He's literally just out there to put another car into the pack and to give them the, the, the whole look and feel of what a Polo Cup championship will be about uh, 10 on 1. It's not uh, as easy as it looks, but across the line, once again they come, getting to the halfway stage completed. Further back, battle continues for uh, the back end of the field and that's just uh, Josh Moore, one of our youngest drivers out there. He's of course coming through there fighting with Matt Merton. Late breaking from Divian, locks up, oh, out of shape, there you go. Into the kitty litter, had to happen at some point. The 27 car, Judd Bertolt, just getting it a little bit too too much pressure on uh, the breaking point there. Couldn't quite make up that gap and ends up in the kitty. So he comes onto the track and slots in just behind Ozia Khan. So uh, that's how things have gone there at the front end. So Coach Dan, <coughs> now in third place, still applying pressure. On to Jay Nicholson, but what it has done is it's given an opportunity for Divian Naidu to uh, basically move into a relatively comfortable position at the front end. It got up close and personal between uh, the four cars, but unfortunately there, a small mistake coming out of uh, Judd Bertolt 
saw him drop to the back and uh, almost into second last place. We'll get confirmation of that, of course, as they cross the line and go through uh, the timing beam to see how things have gone wrong there. But Bertold is uh, the man who's now dropped, unfortunately, uh, by the wayside and out of contention there for that first lap victory or first victory of Rookie Cup for 2024. So they head down in towards turn five again. And uh, it looks like 53 car there of Jaden Huerson keeping Daniel Sun at bay for now, but trying once again to close that gap down on Divian Nadu. 37s out of those two cars on the last pass. They've just crossed the line again. We'll get confirmation of those lap times changing now. We'll also see, of course, uh, the demise there of Bertold. Bertold dropping down by the wayside. He's still in third place, according to uh, the timing monitor. He now drops down to fourth, of course, with Daniel Rowe crossing the line. Daniel now backs out and now leaves these two to fight it out. So, uh, Coach Daniel, Coach Matt Merton in the house there with the uh, youngsters in this karting uh, fraternity step up. And what a step up it is. These little one litre polos are so, so good to drive and really looking good as they come into the mix here. But uh, a big move here from Divian Nadu to try and stay at the front and possibly steal the first victory for 2024. His days are not done yet though. As Luke Selby's joined me on my side, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people that have joined us on YouTube as well as on the Extreme Festival page. <coughs> big pardon and a big welcome to all of you. Uh, we've got a packed Kilani International Raceway. Kind of expected it here at the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. And now heading down in towards turn five again. It is Divian Nadu who has got a really, really comfortable margin. Maybe a little bit uh, of breathing room there between himself and Jaden Wilson. Could be closed down within the space of the next three, but Jaden's going to have to step up his game. He got down to a 34.9, which is about half, no, about 2.2, 0.3 of a second quicker than the leader. But it's not enough to close that gap and get past. He's going to definitely have to go about a half a second quicker if he wants to get past. The gap now, almost a second between them. And on the back straight away, this is of course the battle at the back end of the pack. 17 being Josh Moore, Matty Merton just behind him. So Matt just applying the pressure onto Josh, keeping him honest all the way through this race day as well. Doesn't want to give the youngster any opportunity other than uh, the pressure that's required for him to stay at the front end of a battle like that, even though it's at the back of the pack. It's two by two racing here, kind of, as they're into this one. So uh, as they go two by two towards the uh, final two laps of racing, Divianari and Jaden Hurston for the lead. Big gap down to Daniel Sun. He's gone back to fetch Azir Khan. Azir Khan also needs to be a little bit concerned about the fact that uh, Judd Bertolt, despite him going off, has not given up yet. He is still in with a chance of uh, possibly spoiling the day here for Azir Khan and still stealing that third place overall. Because remember, Daniel and Matt won't score in the points. They're literally out there to uh, put a few more cars into the mix so that these guys get used to racing with uh, a big pack of cars. Down the brakes. Oh, big lock up down in towards turn number five there. From Jaden, he's trying hard to close that gap. It's come down to half a second, so he's made up about 0.4 on that last lap. So, certainly a chance here for Jaden Hurston with uh, one to go. Still looking for a possibility of that first victory to go his way as opposed to Livia Nardi's way. There you go, your top two heading across the finish line now. And down towards turn one for the uh, last time. Nadu hangs on. He's turning point their great apexes from both those drivers. They've certainly been listening to their coaches, working with the data that's provided from uh, the systems in the cars to tell the drivers where they might be braking later or braking earlier than what they should, telling them where to get onto the throttle as well if they're not getting on the throttle on time, telling them where to stay on the throttle because sometimes what they do is they'll come off the throttle and wait for the braking point and then brake as opposed to staying on the throttle and braking where they need to. So all of that data, all of that experience is going to be put into these drivers throughout the year here in the Volkswagen Rookie Cup. And by doing so, we'll ensure we've got another crop of youngsters making their way through uh, the stepping stones of motorsport that's being provided here by Volkswagen Motorsport with this Rookie Cup. A little bit of first uh, battle scars on the left-hand side there of Divian Nadu. That was when him and uh, Bjorn, uh, Bjorn, I want to say Bjorn, sorry, Judd Bertold uh, touched earlier on in the heat. 
But uh, certainly not over yet as they come down onto the brake shift of Cape Town Corner one more time. Into Fostron. It doesn't look like there's going to be an answer. No, Nadu looks like he's going to hang on. So he's timed that to perfection as Divya Nadu. He had a little bit of a fight in uh, about the midway through this one. And then as soon as he lost touch with Judd Bertold after the mistake made by Judd in the 27 car, he hung on to beat out Jaden Kwerson and there it is. Check it flag out. Divya Nadu takes the victory. Jaden Kwerson in second. Daniel Rowe will probably just back out and uh, allow the rest of them to come through here for third and fourth. It looks like Buzir is going to just hang on and is getting ready for the Lynch is waiting for it. Across the line, yeah, Buzir Khan for third place, Jack Bertolt for fourth. And Josh Moore will come through for the top five in Volkswagen Rookie Cup. So that is our first race of the day in the bag. That's how we do it here at the Kalani International Raceway. So we hope you've enjoyed all of that race action and of course more to come. Sunbeds and external Masters Cup are up next. We've got the Invest Chem Formula 1600s and Formula Ford Kents joining them this weekend. Astron Energy Polo Cup, Gazoo Racing Cup. We've got the Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop and we've got the South African Touring Cars and Super Cup debuting underneath the new livery later on this afternoon. And of course, we've also got a big lunch and fan walk which will be uh, provided. And of course, if you're here at the circuit watching from the sidelines and of watching our uh, live stream, I suggest that you uh, get ready for that because it's certainly something you don't want to miss out of chance on getting up close and personal with your favourite rider or driver around the circuit. So up next it is Sunbet ZX10 Masters Cup. It's the two-wheeled action coming your way. And we'll be back shortly with action here from the first round of the Extreme Festival here at Colony International Raceway.
Sunbeds had extended our license cup and had a round already at Red Star and an amazing round you guys had there. But of course now the real seriousness starts to come into play because it's the first away round. You guys are going to think about budgets, you've got to think about what you're going to bring with you, what you're going to bring in your A game. Byron, what have you brought? Nothing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just having good fun, just struggling a little bit to get where I want to be, but so oh, we're going to give it our best shot. We've got to try and find a pit next to one of the Cape Town boys. Okay, this is just a big, big hint here for this series, I can tell you right now. Deets, we've got a brand new sponsor on board this year. That's good to see. And it shows you that uh, whatever we've been doing on the, the live stream and uh, the, uh, the ability to project what's happening in the series is working because it's drawing in new sponsors. Yeah, I have to say I was very fortunate to get uh, True Sailor Angling Supplies on board this year to, to help me in the ZX10 Cup. What an amazing sponsor to have on board. Um, this weekend so far has been a little bit tough, as you said, the Cape Town boys are very, very fast here, but we're slowly chipping, uh, slowly chipping away at them. Uh, me and Steve, as always, I think we're pushing each other, our times are bettering every time we go, uh, go out, trying to keep up with Byron here, but yeah, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, made a couple of changes now for this last uh, qualifying session today, and hopefully banging a good lap there and then we'll work from there tomorrow we race we race out in front of you that's it that's how it goes <laughs> Stevie the last time you had uh, a lot of help to get down here brought the whole family down as well hopefully done the same thing this time and got a chance to uh, experience the Cape Peninsula and what, what it provides but more importantly right now is I know there's going to be some serious thought into your racing and maybe a little bit more race effort as opposed to having the jaw yes no it's true Rick. Um, uh, to be honest we haven't started uh, the greatest way rest all was good for us we really dug in nicely there but uh, Coming down again, we had car issues again. So thank you to the family we got. If it wasn't for Dave Ringo, we wouldn't be here. So first of all, thank you to him. But yes, no, we're more serious this year. Yes, the last year we did uh, a lot of homework to say. And uh, this year we, we started off good, like we said, doing our first week challenge. We have to spend every time we are here. We a little bit tough there. We had some super problems yesterday. I've already received mate. And uh, just uh, the clip at the bottom broke. That's what they need to talk about in the corners. But we fixed that overnight and we're going to much better today. This is looking good for us. Uh, thank you to, to Prime Equip. Eddie from Prime Equip is the only sponsor we've got for this year and ETR Performance. Without them, yeah, we wouldn't be here for sure. You looking forward to the challenge, boys? Absolutely. Full on. Well, there you can see a nice big field of uh, sure, nearly 30 riders on the track. One of them, unfortunately, was not able to make it on the circuit, but thank goodness for that for me, actually, is uh, Clint Mutton. He's going to come and join us in for a little bit of commentary as to what's happening. But great to see big crowds out here for the Extreme Festival of Motorsports first round here in the Mother City. And, uh, of course, uh, Cape Town showing off this morning. It looked like we were going to be aiming for a little bit of wetness, but uh, fortunately the clouds have cleared, the wind has blown the, the rain all away, and uh, I think we're going to be in for a, a clear day most of the day. Nick. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, weather's looking good. I think it was good to have a bit of rain, wash the circuit. Cars have been out, cleared off any of the muck that there might have been. So I think we're in for a really, really awesome day from a weather perspective. I think the track is as good as it could be. And I think we're in for some good racing. Yeah, I think the, the racing has been spectacular, of course. It's one of the reasons we've seen uh, the front end of that field uh, with a couple of extra names that have not been involved in this championship before. Uh, the likes of Clint Seller, who's on pole position. Uh, the likes of Alan John Fenter and, of course, uh, you know, those, those type of riders not involved in the series in the past. And with the change-up, have, have realized that uh, this is possibly, you know, the premier category in the country in terms of motorcycle racing. And that's where they need to be to make their sponsors happy. Absolutely. This is the premier class. And I said years back that, that this is the way to go. One Make Series been around for many years and I really, really believe this is the place that motorsport's going to grow in South Africa. Um, I think the rules are, are, are great. It makes it all close racing and I think we're in for a really good show today. I think the boys are going to have to really pull out their best game if they want to chase Silla. He's really, really lighting the circuit up today. Yeah, he is, he's, a, he's a man who sort of gets to grips with things pretty rapidly, whether it comes to uh, any form of uh, the two-wheeled side of the sport. Um, he did say at Red Star, uh, I picked up on one of the interviews that they did with him down there, that was battling a little bit on the Kawasaki, not used to over riding a Kawasaki at all. I don't think 
in his entire racing career he ever got on board a Kawasaki. He was either, either on a Honda, um, particularly, or on a Yamaha, and those are the two sort of choice steeds that he won most of his championships on at uh, one point in his career. And of course, there's seven national championships uh, underneath that man's belt. Yeah, well, can you imagine if he if he really got on with the Kawasaki? Uh, at the moment, he's really showing the guys the way around. So if this was his bike of choice, I think the guys would really be in trouble. So, yeah. yeah, I think exactly. the rest of the field are really got to bring their A game today. Well, he's, he's about two seconds up the field ahead of Westman. Westman, of course, being a local man like yourself, knows the circuit well. But uh, Trevor Westman, on, on a good day, is a tough man to beat here at Kalani International Raceway. Uh, Alan John Fenter, as we've seen in the past, has had some spectacular days here too. But of course, Al is in this championship. He has got some big aspirations coming this year, of course, with running in the Northwest 200 as well as the Isle of Man TT. So that'll be in the back of his head all the time. Doesn't want to in get injured or anything like that before that happens. But we go to the five second board, Clint. We got those three on the front row. Entercott, McMahon, and Lamb on the second row. The champion is only down in seventh. Graham Van Bader, lots of work to do. Absolutely. I think Graham will do a lot better in the race. And away they go. Graham is a Saturday guy, so I think he'll do really well in the race. It's going to take him a little while to settle down. Fantastic start from Jason Lamb. He didn't settle down. He just disappeared at the front end. Clint didn't get the start right. Maybe not used to, of course, the uh, the starts on these Kawasaki. Slightly different to machinery he's been on before. So it will take him a while to get up to uh, kind of the pace. But as I say that, he's up to the pace and dives on the inside, going through into turn one, or into turn two, I should say, and up into the lead. So Clint Seller only took him the space of two corners to get ahead of Jason Lamb, who got such an incredible start off the line. Coming down into turn number three, into Demps, right on his tail, though, Trevor Westman. The killer is looking uh, pretty dangerous. Yeah, he is, and he knows this track really well. So yeah, give him a couple of laps to settle in, and, and hopefully he can uh, give Clint Seller a run for his money. Just looking at that mid pack, I picked up on Bike 7 as well. That's Piers Knut, man from uh, the UK who comes out here every single time to race World Masters Cup on the Extreme Festival. And uh, the first time we saw Piers go at it, he was basically flat out and uh, sort of fighting for a. He's now up into that top 10, 15 positions. So massive improvements coming out of him. Absolutely. Piers is riding really, really well, but he's put a huge amount of effort into it um, every time you come to Kalani. Piers is here and he's practicing. Putting in the time, putting in the effort, and, and yeah, he's come along on leaps and bounds. Very impressed with Piers. A massive amount of support for him as well. They're all running wide. Was that Lamb who ran wide there, possibly? Just picking up on the back of the bike. It was. It was Jason Lamb. Jason Lamb running wide, just, fit, just looking at the leathers, I get it right. Fortunately, he stayed upright. That's an important aspect. But it's allowed Enticott through, it's allowed Hein McMahon through, so Slucky's up there. Graham Van Bras still battling down in about 7th or 8th place. Looks like he's got some work to do and see if he can make his way to the front end. But certainly, we are in for uh, what is going to be another epic battle here with uh, the ZX Tenal Masters Cup. Just waiting for our timing to update. There are internet issues countrywide so we just want to just let everybody know that if we are not spot on in terms of the timing and you're having a slight delay it's not because of us there's a there's an internet issue in south africa uh, period at the moment yeah i think uh, everybody's struggling with that but another man that's really impressed me is, is david varinga he's also come yeah. along leaps and bounds and this is n i found this to not be a very easy circuit to learn for the for the guys that don't ride here every day so to be in ninth place, Brian Brian von Tukunen, I think that's a very good good position for him to be in. Yeah, and not too far behind Graham Van Bredar as well. Varinga, as you said, massive, massive uh, improvement from that rider. Uh, Lububala and Sana also not too far behind. They're sitting in 11th place. So Lubs also stepping up the game and uh, getting the pace to where he needs to be. This is Van Bredar being caught now by Jason Lamb. That is last year's championship battle, basically. Uh, sitting down at this stage. What are we looking at? Uh, sixth and seventh place on track. Yeah, unbelievable. Everybody just seems to have stepped up their game. Hein McMahon also running really well. Um, David Endicott ahead of Graham as well. So, yeah, Graham's struggling a little bit at this stage, but uh, uh, he won't give up. He'll keep fighting, and I suspect he'll move up as the race goes. Clint, I know that you'd love to be out on track. Um, uh, what's the issues on, on, on your side that uh, didn't allow you to get onto the circuit? Um, essentially, no real issues. Just my son, Max, has been racing a okay. short circuit on the 150 and a long circuit on a KTM 390. And uh, as anybody who's worked on KTM 390s know, they can be a real headache. <laughs> so that's kept me really busy, which hasn't given me the time to, yeah. 
to fix my bike from my Kalami off. And uh, yeah, at the moment, I just want to get him up and going. And uh, once that happens, uh, I'll, I'll be back to do some riding. Some riding, definitely. We're looking forward to it because I know you'll be running in that pack as well. You mentioned Baringa. Also, going to give a shout out there to Dave Baringa, of course, for uh, giving a bit of assistance there. Uh, Front interview was with Steve Galgachi, yeah. and apparently they had some car issues on the way down to Cape Town again. Okay. Once again, Varinga jumping in, helping out to get them here. So yeah. putting another rider onto the grid is an important factor. And um, we're watching Varinga at the moment, fighting there with Bontakuning as they head into turn two. Just behind them, though, they start to line up in a big way. Lubabalo is there, Piers is there, J JLR is there as well. Adrian Vidalin having a good run too. Carrot Frey, and of course Byron Rothkall up into that top 15. So um, what we tend to see, and I, I, mean, I always say when I've got somebody next to me. Um, and you'll know it from, from experience on the bike itself. You kind of get the pack of riders that are on a similar vein, similar lap time and similar riding style and yep. skill yes. that get together and start to fight it out. And that's what we're seeing here. Absolutely. And, and this track is very fuzzy. But three or really are really feeling it. Um, arm pump is a big thing at the circuit. And just generally, there's nowhere to relax. So, so, so trying your best to relax on the straights is, is a definitely a, important to, to finish the race strong. Uh, if, you, if you're fighting the bike, you're going backwards from the get-go. It's, it's a matter of, of, of being calm, being smooth, and that's how you produce lap times at the circuit. Piers could do now, feeling the pressure a little bit there, I think, coming out of Lubabal and Sana, and Sana just staying just ahead of Canute. So Piers is there looking for a chance through, looking as well, watching out for Bonte. Bonte is putting huge pressure onto the back end of the juggernaut there, Dave Ringer. And then uh, this, this little, and then of course it'll be JLR for the top three and C's. Yeah. At this stage though, it's Westman from Fenta from McMahon. Top three are all out of A class, and then your leading class B man, understandably, would be Graham. Yeah. Yeah, I got Gra Gra Graham still quick, um, possibly today at the circuit. I, I think he always struggles a bit at the circuit. Again, it's a physical circuit. I know he struggles a little bit with his wrist, so the circuit's not going to do him any favours. Mm. But if he stays smooth and he doesn't panic, I think he'll still move up as the race goes. I think there's a bit of panic coming the way of uh, Trevor Westman, because right now he has got Alan John Fenter all over the back of him and Fenter looking for a way past here in a big way. He's, he's put a little bit more pressure on, and if we look at the lap times, I mean, Westman on his last pass did a 13, uh, did a 14-1, we got a 14-1. Even this match between the two of them. But Alan John Fenter on his fastest lap is two tenths quicker. So he had a good chance of maybe spoiling the day there for the killer and uh, putting him down into uh, second place. They're not gonna catch Seller. He's almost eight seconds up the road. Yeah, it's a pity. It would have been nice to see a big battle up front, but Seller is just in a, in a class of his own at the moment. He leads there. You can see that gap now, just as they came down towards turn five. Foster on corner. Alan John Fenter, slightly different line. And remember, he's worked quite a bit here with um, Ronald Stanton on a few occasions too. So learning the circuit on the uh, more classic bikes when they came down here for the TT, he'll know those, what I like to call, the Cape Town boy lines. Yes. You know, there's, there's some certain lines that you guys know that work better for a rider on a motorcycle than particularly maybe some of these mid to back end riders will know about. Absolutely. Kalani is, the, the trick here is to miss the bumps, which is difficult. Um, and again, that, that, that all plays into the energy at the end of the race. If you're riding over the bumps, you're really fighting the bike. So relaxing, trying to miss the bumps, it's, it, it's difficult and it takes many laps. And the minute you're in a pressure situation, you're inclined to miss those smooth lines. So I, I suspect that battle for second will go um, Westman's way eventually. Yeah, it looks like Westman's going to... Just try and use those Cape Town lines to his advantage. But Alan John knows about them. So he'll probably try and look. That was Steve Golgotchi just going through there as well. Nice to see him having a good run. There is Dieter Hazeman. First time we've seen him on circuit this time out. Also running brand new sponsorship on the bike. He chatted about that in the pre-race interview. But uh, it's great to see that uh, even in the mid-pack here, I mean, you've got Dieter running currently. Where is he running at this stage? I think he's just outside of that top, no, just inside the top 20 in 18th place. But what we're doing from a, <coughs> a live stream point of view and providing the, the package we do here on the Extreme Festival's um, uh, live stream package, it's allowing riders like Dita, like yourself, yes. and like anybody in the pack, yes. to pick up those little sponsors that help out with the, with the builds in the end of the day. Absolutely, and, and, and I think sponsors in this series get so much for their money. This is really the only place to be putting your money into, into motorsport or to motorcycle racing in the country at the moment because the coverage is unbelievable. 
the TV time, the, 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 the uh, live stream like we have now, uh, all the socials, it's, 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 it's really, well, yeah. really brilliant. 100%. So as we're getting into the, the closing stage, we've got about uh, three laps to go there for Seller, or two and a half, he's halfway through that, that lap as well. And, and another guy that's impressed uh, over the years, Byron, Byron, Byron Rockwell. Rockwell. Yeah. He's definitely, I mean, I rode against him a couple of, two years back in East London. Mm -hmm. And from there to here, it's a completely different guy. Um, he's really going well. And that well. was after that big crash, remember? He had a big, big yes, one and uh, had, had, had uh, a lot of time off. So yeah. after that, it's taken a while sort of to get that, that edge back. Yeah. But now that he's got it, of course, he is uh, certainly a man to watch out for. And sitting in that top 15, you're running in 1 minute 18 as opposed to the 114, so yep. only four seconds off the pace, pace but yep. they're in the same age category. Yep. Clint now starting to come in amongst some of the back markers. Starting to close in there, I think, on the back end, possibly of Harwood. Of Ian Harwood, yeah. Harwood yeah. and... Coming up on, I think that's on his ex-teammate. It is. That's Afiso? Yeah. Former teammate there. They both used to run under King Price uh, when they were on the other HRC brand and getting through there relatively easily as you can see up into Sorrel Sweep. That boundary corner on a motorcycle is a, is a handful, hey? That's an unbelievable <laughs> corner. For me, that's the, that's the corner on the racetrack that I come to ride for, that corner. It is just exhilarating to ride that corner. It's a true racer's corner, that, in my view. And you literally come out of the end, you can go through the box to everything she's got. Flat sticks, and then at Kalani, essentially, when you hook six gear at the end of the straight front wheel, still a little bit up in the air. So when there's a side wind, it's, it's quite a handful at the end of that straight. Let's, let's maybe mention that to Clint, because he's had a few occasions where it went wrong with wind from the side. East That's London comes to mind. But right now, it's going all according to plan. The King Price insurance man is out front. He's in the back markers. He's coming up. I think on Golgotchi, yeah. See if Golgotchi's going to get lapped here by Clint Seller. I think another secret to Clint's re good results is they managed to get that bike really well dialed in. Yeah. And if you watch his bike, it literally looks like it's on rails. And that all comes down to rider and mechanic experience. Um, and, and I think he's really got it dialed in. And, and that's what's making the difference today Certainly. that he can run away like that. Certainly. And I mean, the amount of effort that gets put into that team, you know that he's uh, going to be looking for a, for a championship here again. It's a national challenge championship. It's not official national championship yet, but it's uh, another another championship belt in the uh, the, the woodworks Absolutely. of uh, the Seller home. Nice to see uh, Mr. Seller down here as well. Great to see Sheridan showing support for a man. Yep. Canute is through by those things. Yes, he's managed to hang in and stay there, and he's got through now on Dave Ringer. So a bit of a change up there. And in fact, he's actually got through on Montagunung too. So Piers has made himself into a possibility of a top eight finisher. That's an incredible ride from him. That's brilliant. They're really just behind Graham, essentially. Uh, a little way down the road, but certainly in, in, in a place just behind Graham. Who I, I expected Graham to, to move up the field as the race went. Yeah. I see the lap times are not bad. He's, he's, he's making small inroads. But I think probably Jason got a bit too much of a gap on him. So Stella heading towards the line in his second now. Shouldn't be too far away. Here we go. He's, of course, heading through to... Uh, Try and sort things out here overall. Another solid ride from Intercott though. Yeah. Good ride from him. But he, 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 you kind of expect that here at his home track. Absolutely. He, he is very good here. And in fact, if you if you recall, I think it was uh, two seasons ago. Yes. Um, him and Westman yep. had an absolute ding dong for yep. the win. And I think he put in a new lap record then. Fair enough, I've never seen him put together two solid races. He generally has one good race and one brilliant race. So if this is his good one, and next one's his brilliant one. I suspect we'll see him in the top one. three. Here yeah, we go. Here exactly. We go. That's uh, that's what we're hoping for. Seller hangs on for now. He's got Alan John Fetch, who's made, made his way just slightly ahead there of uh, Trevor Westman for third. Enterprise has received a small. Ian McMahon sitting in the five spot at the moment. Jason Lamb in six ahead of Graham Van Bernard. That'll be a major coup for him. He, if there's anybody out on circuit that Jason Lamb wants to beat first, it's the number one. Schemes, of course, I've still got to get used to. Yeah, he seems to love changing the colour schemes. It yeah. was black and on. Westman trying to use the traffic to his advantage coming through, but uh, not quite getting it right. And they'll be coming down into the breaking point. They've got through on those back markers now. We'll age off Westman and possibly finish up on that second step of the podium. That is the plan. If we can get it all right now into uh, the closing stages. Seller shouldn't be too far away from uh, heading towards... So it's AJ and second AJ. and Westman yeah. third. Yeah, very close, but, but AJ pipped him. 
for a little fight um, there as well. Intercut. Yeah, they're yeah, intercut. Ahead of McMahon. Yeah. They were actually just about to get into it there. Uh, I think sixth place on track. Seller's happy with the win as he should be. Yeah, He's absolutely. Worked hard for that. So uh, congratulations there, Clint Seller. Clint Mutton, thank you so much for joining me, buddy. Thank I you very much for having me. It was uh, awesome. For race two, but later on. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome stuff. Great, thank you. Thanks, Clint. So from Clint Mutton on uh, Mark's side to Clint Seller standing up on the pegs and enjoying the spoils of the victory there for the first heat of the ZX10R Masters Cup here at Kalani International Raceway. It's round one of the second place for Lacquer Racing. That's Trevor Westman on the way with Kawasaki who comes through for third. And that is your top three in class A as well. So A's are one, two and three. Seller certainly loving life being back here in Cape Town and uh, all of his fans I think are enjoying the fact that he's back at the helm of what is certainly the premier class in motorcycle racing in this country at this stage. Enticott finished up in fourth, Han McMahon in fifth, Jason Lamb is in sixth place that will put him in uh, the win for class C if I'm not mistaken. It'll be, in fact I can check that out quickly, let's go to the classes and go back to the results and we can give you Seller, Alan John, Westman, Enticott, McMahon, your top five in A. Van Bredar, Piers Canute, Dave Varinga, Aubrey Marais, and Dieter Heisman, top five in Class B. Class C is one like Jason Lamb, your Hunter Roo, Brian Bontekun, and Hank Scaling, and Ian Harwood, your top five in Class C. That's how it wrapped up for the first heat of ZX-10 R Masters Cup. Not a bad way to uh, start your uh, maneuvering into this championship there is Kinsella. Two wins at the Red Star Race where he makes it three out of three here for um, the race action at Kalani. And then uh, just moving through, let's just pick up on uh, put that uh, next bit of information I'm looking for. It is here somewhere. <laughs> I've got to just find it. Hang tight. Let's go there. There you go. And uh, up next, we're going into Investcam Formula 1600s and the Formula Ford Kent category combined. And then we've got Astron Energy Polo Cup and Kazoo Racing SA Cup up after that. We'll be back shortly here from Kilani International Raceway. Investcam Formula 1600s, a brand new season and uh, a couple of brand new faces to the series, starting with you Mark in the middle, coming from karting, stepping up into single seaters, is this the route that you're looking to go? Yeah, definitely the route I want to go, um, obviously going to single seaters, it's a big jump, it's a, I think, good place to go, you learn a lot from the cars. Today, but a massive amount of experience in all forms of motorsport so far, what made you change your mind and come to uh, Formula 1600? Yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't been that big of a jump, you know, with Racing Legends being an open wheeler car as well. It's definitely something to get used to, but it was a new challenge, a new experience, and something I hadn't taken on before. So we decided why not, and let's give it a chance. Single seaters is going to be a big open, I think, for you, but, but I think you might just be right up there as well. How's it been so far? Actually, very good. We've been P2 first practice and second practice. We're about 0.1 behind uh, first and second practice, so I'm very happy with it. I think we'll, we'll make the needed changes and we'll, we'll get to the top. Brent, what does it take to get to the top? Right? A lot of practice and a lot of babies and a lot of courage. 
sea time is important in these cars, and uh, you don't get a lot of it. So uh, I'm going to jump into a weekend like this. First time out from the car and get it ready. I think taking your time to learn and uh, watching other people, watching their lines and using their points, I think you learn a lot and um, it will help you eventually get to that point with practice in due time. What's the goal for the year? Uh, hopefully at least getting, obviously the more learning time, the more practice to get a high experience and then hopefully go again next year and try and, try and get something. between uh, one rookie and three seasoned campaigners in this class. Carabo Malamela, Zorabera and Michael Grid. Schofield and Foss are the front row of the Formula 1600 Kents. So here we go for first heat of single seater action down towards turn one. Jagger would probably never have started one of these in anger so that's why he got caught out on the start ever so slightly and he drops down to fourth place into turn one. So Jagger Robertson, the pole man, just dropping ever so slightly back there. Shrin Naidu, Casey Enzo Smith and Jason could see it all getting through on him with uh, slightly better starts. But I think that's only because they had the better starts. Um, and because they've done a couple more starts in these cars than Jagger has. He goes around the outside of Cashel Corner though, trying to find a way through there on the Mint Coachworks machine of uh, Jason Kutsia. Kutsia is staying ahead of him there ever so slightly and only just squeezing through. Siobongo Monkokwana also with a good start there. He's made his way up ahead of Storm Lanfear. So Mungaguana making up one place there on the start as they come through onto the back straight for the first time. Watching for the uh, push through coming out of Nicholas Van Wheelie as well. Expected to see him slightly higher up. And then we see the battle back. So as we go in, basically heading straight down towards the uh, start finish line and some huge pressure being applied onto the back end of uh, Jagger Robertson. Robertson with some operandi. And it's gone to saloon cars as opposed to single seaters. Big step up for him, slightly different there. Fastest lap on the last pass, once again out of Jagger Robertson in eighth place. Trying to make up the ground, he uh, has to after going off here at Sorrel Sweep. He's got Foss up ahead of him, he'll have his eyes set on Van Wheelie as well. He's through on Julian Holzhausen, so he's already made that maneuver and made it stick. So let's see what he can do now about Foss and Van Wheelie. They come down into uh, Cape Town corner. Fast try and turn their bank corner for uh, those of you who've never seen the uh, Kilani International Raceway before. It's the final corner before a slight little left hand kink. It's not really a corner there. But, uh, sometimes they call it turn six. Turn five is the famous Cape Town corner sponsored by Fastron. And it's a 180 degree right hander with a banking on it, which uh, puts something quite unique into motorsport from a South African racetrack point of view. Karabo Malamela is all over the back end of Jason Kutsia looking for a way past. Kutsia is defending for his life there for third place. It looks like he just didn't, wasn't able to engage that uh, reverse gear. Now Jagger Robertson all over Foss and Van Wheelie, the rookie in the category, still looking for a chance to be in the top five despite the small mistake earlier on, or I'm not quite sure if it was a mistake. We only saw the, uh, the closing part of that uh, off that Jagger had coming out of Malmesbury or Sorrel Sweep where they're heading to right now. Jagger dives inside. He knows he possibly can't get through on Alex Foss through Sorrel Sweep, but if he sets it up right here, there's a good chance of overtaking down the straight. He's got Foss on his inside, who's placed that car perfectly. Jagger's going to have to back out and maybe try and get the late apex to get the drive onto the, the uh, front straight. Karabo Molamela has got out of the car. It looks like that's his day, his number now, and over, unfortunately, for Molamela. Here comes Jagger. Jagger inside a pass. This time, perfectly placed. Jagger Robertson down in towards turn one. He's going to have to try the yellow flags. So it's just putting a whole other ball game and strategy into what's happening here for race one, unfortunately, for some of these drivers, because uh, the, uh, the prime overtaking opportunity for a single-seater, particularly in 1600s, is turn one. And that's not an option right now. 
two cars in the kitty litter, one parked on the exit road, which means there's actually three cars stricken down at turn one. It just makes uh, your life a little bit more difficult. So Jagger will have to set things up here once again, out of damps, into Sorrel Sweep, and get as close to the back end of Alex Foss's car as he can to try and squeeze past for a potential victory in this little battle, which will move him up into uh, the top five. Here he comes. Once again, Foss using his experience, putting his car on the inside line for Cape Town Corner. Jagger going to try and use the banking into the mix. Not too far behind comes Ewan Holtzhausen back up onto the tailpiece and uh, gearbox of uh, that uh, car of Jagger Robertson's just out in front. Jagger now goes inside, but he knows he's going to have to back out of it again into turn one. So despite trying every option he can, he knows there's no way to overtake into turn one. Jagger hangs on to the back end there of Foss, trying to apply a bit of pressure, force a mistake out of Alex Foss. Not always an easy thing to do. Very seasoned campaigner when it comes to this category is Alex Foss, but uh, you never know. A bit of pressure from the rookie, someone that you've never diced with before, never raced with before, might just have a slightly different manoeuvre and something that you haven't thought of and uh, might be able to squeeze his way past. He's now looking inside, now goes outside. What for the cutback there? Here comes Holtzhausen. Holtzhausen going to try and squeeze on his inside as that door opens up, as we see Jagger going left and right, getting quite frustrated, I'm sure, on trying to find a way through there on uh, the man just ahead of him, Alex Foss. So we're on the final lap. It's uh, closing stages time there for the top two, but uh, the battle is raging here for who is going to finish up in the top five. Nicholas Van Wheelie should still be able to cement fourth place as they come to the line. It is going to be Srinadu. He got off the line and hole shot it, and that hole shot paid off. He gets the victory over Casey Ensel Smith. Coming through there and just on one of the back markers there, I think that might be uh, Rick Morris. Yes, it is. They've gone through on Rick Morris, but uh, a great drive nonetheless there from Jason Katsia for third. Van Wheelie hangs on for fourth, Foss, fourth, fifth place, and Jagger Robertson probably quite frustrated and sitting in what is sixth place. He had a potential of victory in his hands, but unfortunately just didn't get the start right. It's something that the rookie will have to learn. He'll need to learn how to start these cars off the line to stay in front of the big pack of very, very hotly contested, uh, hotly contesting drivers in this Investcam Formula 1600. Of course, it is the hugest prize purse in South African motorsport they are fighting for with uh, the money that gets paid out to these drivers at the end of the season. 200,000 Rand up for grabs for the winner. A potential test in a South African touring car and also a potential seat in that touring car team should you show the prowess to be in that um, maneuver. So down to the line, we've got the Formula Fords. It should be no none other than our good friend Ian Schofield. Or is it? I don't see Schofield on the timing monitor. So it's going to actually be Duncan Foss. Duncan Foss for the win. I think Schofield's actually gone into pit lane. We might have missed that at uh, some point in the race, but uh, yeah, Foss certainly first to the Formula Fords. Rick Morris has already crossed the line, so he'll be second. He's ahead of Ronald Van Wheelie and Alan Mayer. So there must have been some kind of an issue there for Scoff in the closing stages that sent him back into pit lane. Up next, we're going into Astron Energy Volkswagen Polo Cup. Daniel Rowe will be joining me for commentary in that one. And we'll be back shortly here from Kalani International Raceway, just waiting for a few cars to be extricated in, back into pit lane from turn one.
So making it onto the circuit right now is the Astron Energy Polo Cup. And just before we get into race commentary for the first heat of the day, let's go and catch up with some of the young guns that are going to be contending in this season's championship. Volkswagen Polo Cup has got a brand new look and feel to it with Astron Energy joining us as our new associate sponsor. Tyler, have been involved now for a couple of seasons. Things have gone well with the Universal Motorsport. Looks like it's going to be a good season for you. But there are a couple of new guns that are out there that you haven't had to play with just yet. How's it gone so far? Um, we've been doing okay. I think we can still improve, so we'll just have a look at practice three and then hopefully we can get into Super Bowl for qualifying. Super Bowl yeah, is very important, Ethan. Uh, a couple of times you've been there, a couple of times you've just missed it. It is so vital to get that uh, clean lap in that final uh, qualifying session, isn't it? Yeah, well, in Polo Cup, uh, everyone's so close to mistake and uh, you just have to stay smooth. What's the, what's the uh, best bet to get that smooth lap in you? Yeah? Well, I think just focusing on your braking and uh, not getting too early on the throttle because the track's very bumpy, so you have to try to keep the car as settled as possible. You've got a little bit of a home ground advantage, car. I know that, and uh, having spent some time in a couple of cars here, and maybe following suit to what your brother did, are you looking forward to the challenge as the, as the rookie in this cup? No, I'm definitely looking forward, but I still have a few things to learn, a few things from my brother, a few things from Uncle Graham, but I'll pick up where I left off and see how that brings me along. Well, a massive welcome to everybody here from uh, our little commentary booth in the uh, upstairs lounge opposite uh, the, the uh, start-finish line and uh, above the new pits. There we go, Daniel Sun. You're on TV now, bud. It's the first time we're getting Daniel Sun to actually come and sit next to me. Daniel Rowe, great to have you on commentary alongside me, buddy. Um, and some exciting times for the Volkswagen brand. Mm, yeah, thank you very much for, for inviting me. Yeah, it's exciting times for, for Polo Cup. A new sponsor on board, Astron Energy. Obviously, they still have Dunlop on board. So it's fantastic uh, to have a new sponsor, fresh for the series. The cars look fantastic as, as usual, mm. and I think everyone's excited. Uh, listen, I've got to tell you, the, the qualifying session yesterday was, was split by, uh, I think it came down to 0 0.06 of a second between the top two. Um, just talk us through the, the, the ruling on that, because I, I see that despite um, Nathan getting the Super Pole victory, the point for pole position still went to uh, Jason Newsmore. Yeah, I think it's obviously, you know, the first the first run is the main run. So, I mean, if you get pole in that session, that's official qualifying. I mean, Super Bowl is just something to make it a bit more spicy. So, I think it's fair to give the point to the person who gets pole first because you kind of have a second run at it in the Super Bowl. So. And it can go pretty much haywire there. So, you, exactly. then you lose the opportunity of getting that point. Exactly. Nice, nice, nicely done. Uh, of course, a couple of new drivers involved. Uh, outgoing champion's brother has joined us. We just chatted there to... To Carl Fisser, I think he's quite excited. He's part of parcel of uh, the whole Nathan's Motorsport setup that's down in Proto Cup. Um, his brother running, of course, in uh, Super Cup and now getting a chance to prove himself and maybe continue on the, the winning ways that we've seen in the past from the two brothers. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, he is only 16 years old. I think there are a lot of other youngsters in, in the group. So, but I mean, he's 16 years old. He's done Rookie Cup. He's now in Polo Cup, first season in Polo Cup. So, he's doing a good, a good job so far. Just needs to rack up the experience, um, and I'm sure it will improve as, as as he goes on in the rest of the season. Well, when you talk about experience, you come from a lot of experience, but you've, you've won the championship, you've won the, the Super Cup championship, you've won a, a global touring car championship before the change up to SATC. But um, 
you're also involved big time here with the rookie cup that we saw go out only a couple of uh, minutes ago so uh, there's some there's some huge maneuvering being done by the Volkswagen brand to ensure that there's a stepping stone for youngsters coming out of karting yeah for sure I mean obviously karting is completely different to, to main circuit racing so you know they pick up some bad habits in karting although it teaches them a lot and you know to drive around other other, other carts but when you get into a car spatial awareness is completely different mm. um, and yeah we need to try and get rid of those bad habits that you get in the car <laughs> and uh, a, lot, like a, lot, a lot of them a lot of them are, are improving really quickly so the the, the program works and uh, i mean carl's seventh in in polar cup already exactly shows you that uh, the, the, the stepping stones are working yeah it's kind of what we saw a few seasons ago with uh, the, the fact that um, motorcycle racing didn't have a, a stepping stone and they brought in that KTM 390 class and all of a sudden we started to see some youngsters coming through that didn't have a chance to go from any five to a 600 that's a massive jump and I think it's a similar vein here you know to go from a cart to the one liter polo to the GTI is probably the way to go yeah definitely for sure and um, I think I think a lot of the parents are already excited to get them up into the Polar Cup class. So, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll have a few more cars in Polar Cup next year. Well, Dan, they're on their way around the circuit right now getting warmed up. Uh, you know what this is all about. You know this feeling. Back from that, a couple of guys who've done it probably a little bit more than most. It's great to have the Masters Championship back in Polar Cup. 100%. And also what's nice is they've got the experience. So all the youngsters get to drive around them. You know, they can learn a thing or two. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Wayne Masters put it on P5 overall yesterday. Um, the old man can still drive. He's can only you four, imagine four tenths off pole. No, exactly. Can you imagine if that if they counted? You know, I know that they they score separately, so it means they don't get uh, officially scored on the on the grid positions. But if they had an opportunity of of getting it free for all, I think we might have had two or three guys within the top ten there. Very possible. I know. I know they spent a lot of time with the with the data and and. Uh, he was on uh, Scarp or whatever you want to call it with, with Keegan Masters teaching his dad how to drive a Pollock Up car. <laughs> so we should have got that on film. <laughs> it, it, it worked. It worked. Yeah, no, he's, he's right up there in the mix. I think there's a couple of guys who are doing that. Uh, we'll see it later on in the SA Touring, uh, touring Cars GDCs. David and, and Roberto working together. It's uh, first round of the championship. Astron Energy on board. Great to have a fuel sponsor yeah. back in South African motorsport again. I mean, there's been a long period where there's been no major input other than previously from Engine and of course what was originally Caltex. They were involved in quite a heavy way. But with Astron coming in now, I think there's, uh, there's certainly potential for, for other big sponsors to show. If I'm not mistaken, that will now put them into uh, either, s I think it's into second place other than the V8 supercars in terms of the longevity of a series running back to back and not changing in terms of the format. ZX10s are still quite a f far way behind. I think they're into their 17th or 18th season. But uh, 28 seasons of Polar Cup, and we're about to go racing here at Kalani International Raceway. This is where the nerves get to you. This is where things could possibly change up. Now, you've got that, you got that shaking pedal. But <laughs> exactly. And they start to get <laughs> that, that little... That shaking. <laughs> Sometimes they put it in reverse gear. Ask yeah. Justin Oates, he'll tell you. <laughs> okay, here we go, Dan. Down towards turn one. Great start in the background. It looks like coming out of Jean-Dre Marie, trying to get through the field pretty rapidly. But it looks like Nathan Victor has been able to hang on for now and possibly going to be uh, the man into turn one first. Jason Newsmalls around his outside. Watch out for Roshan Goodman. There's another man. I don't know if you were watching the whole of last year. But last year, sitting 15th, 16th, 17th place, really battling. But all of a sudden, the National and Zanzi Motorsport and Universal man has now stepped up and was in top six yesterday for the shootout. Yeah, for sure. And no, made a huge improvement. A few drivers making big improvements this season, so nice to see. And of course, we'll see more, more of that as they get through the season now. A couple more drivers that haven't made it down to Cape Town may be joining us at the next round as well. So make sure that you stick around to see how this Polar Cup pans out. In the background, the Masters have started as well. There's a slight gap in proceedings there from the Masters' point of view, just to give these guys a chance to uh, get away and hopefully not get too much in the mix at the front end. They're trying to, trying to split the two championships, but still give them a chance to have a fight of their own. New livery on the cars there, as you can see on a lot of these cars. And uh, of course, the, the new windscreen decals there for our official sponsor. Ferrodo have jumped on as always, Dunlop tyres supplying us the rubber to go racing with and that's just something pretty spectacular to watch out for as well is how quickly, particularly down here, those tyres come into their own. Yeah for sure, um, looks like Team Universal are in the mix there, some battling going on with the Spielberger yeah. family, it's 
Well, remember, they're all out of the Team Universal stable there. The Small Burger family are out of Universal as well. They just run Sabertech colors on their cars. So Team Red are uh, in the house here. And, of course, uh, in that top six shootout yesterday, four of the six came out of the, out of the Universal Racing stable. So they certainly are showing that they've got what it takes to prep a couple of cars and put them into the front end of the battles, even at the front end of the Masters Championship. Yeah, they've so, obviously been in the series for quite a bit now. So they've, they've, I think they've stamped their name now. Um, Universal, they've been yeah. there for a long time, they're showing what they're made of and uh, doing a superb job. And in the last six seasons, bar one, all came out of Team Universal in terms of the champions. So, oh, a spinner. Well, I think that might have been one of the uh, masters who spun out there in turn two. We'll try and get a, uh, a look as to who it was, but definitely a car the wrong way on our camera positions. There it is, Roshan. Might have given the commentators curse there, but that was my fault, not yours. No problem. <laughs> I'll, no I'll problem. give you. I'm for him. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you the rookie option there that uh, you're not giving that. But that's a huge disappointment for him because he was up in for a potential top five, no doubt about it, making it into the top six shootout for Super Bowl yesterday. Yeah. Top two getting away slightly. We kind of expected that. Yeah. Uh, Nathan and Nussmo yesterday's practice sessions were kind of the class of the field and had a little bit extra. But take nothing away from the man in third place as well. We haven't mentioned him yet, but Mocha Rodia. Uh, was on the podium at the final race of the season last year and has already taken two victories in the other category he races in this year. So his confidence is right up there for Fast Five Motorsport. Looks like it, yeah. I think he had a pole last season yep. in a Super Bowl. Yes. So he's, you know, he's, he's, showing, he's showing some class this season already in third place within with a shot for the title. And uh, one for the ladies out there, Tyler Robinson in the AF Fans and uh, Team Red Racing Machine up into what is now fifth place. Just been outgunned by Charles Smallberger on that last pass across the line. But fighting in amongst her teammates and stable mates, Carl Fisser just behind her. And then uh, Ethan could see her batting a little bit uh, there as well. I like the way you picked up on the fact that they used to date and were sitting next to each other in the interview. Quite a nice one there. That's the kind of insight I like you to bring to the party, Danny. <laughs> yeah, a little bit awkward when you're on track and fighting, eh? Yeah, exactly. But Make of course, things a bit spicy. That's, that's, what, that's what we want in Polo Cup. <laughs> Inside line there coming as well from Small Burger trying to find a way through there. Another man we haven't mentioned, but of course is in that pack. Uh, just at the back end there is uh, Nirav Singh, and it looks like uh, just behind Nirav, I think that was Bjorn Bertolt. Yeah, it was Bjorn Bertolt. He's changed allegiance. Last year running in the uh, Gazoo Racing Cup now, jumping into polos, deciding that that might be the better option for him. His brother Judd out earlier on, having a superb run. Yeah. Unfortunately, he made a small mistake into turn one, and it dropped him to the back of the pack, but needed to say he's got some potential. But also in that little mid-pack there, just at the back end of this front end of the field, is uh, Dr. Hannes Skippers. Uh, multiple champion and of course outright champion as well in Volkswagen Challenge at one yeah. point. Yeah, Class B champion there. Um, from, from what I've heard, two or three time champion. He's won it a few times. Yeah. Doing a superb job as yeah, I, I hear he drives really smooth. He's a good driver. I don't know him personally, but uh, doing a good job today. Right in there. I mean, these cars aren't, difficult, uh, aren't easy to drive. They are quite difficult to drive and quite difficult to master. So I think once he learns how to master these cars, he's going to be and they back up the front there fighting with the front and, guys. And, and also, I heard yesterday via some of the masters that in the, in the, in the banter that was happening between them, um, Class A of Volkswagen Challenge is kind of going to go to a similar style format to this with the turbocharged cars, uh, slightly quicker machinery that they haven't had before. So, so a learning curve for them to have uh, the experience in Polo Cup as well as in Challenge, and uh, they can use it to the advantage in both, which is a, a, a good thing, I would say, in motorsport. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if they're getting they're getting some experience now. They're going to have the step ahead of the rest, for sure. And the the rest is not an easy thing to step up. Oh, Nirav Singh, he had a big moment yesterday, just in the qualifying session. He unfortunately ended up in turn one. That's out of turn three, damn step and. I think he might have dropped right to the back. Yeah, he's dropping right to the back. And Roshan is not going to be the last man on track now anymore. He's going to be able to just squeeze through there. Just ahead of Roshan, we actually just saw the, the back end of the Masters going through. They're watching this little battle. Oh, Carl trying to get past his ex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Get it side by side and get onto the circuit. But there we go. He's it just... like we got the run on Charles, yeah? Yeah, good possibility. Good Charles possibility. Charles got an issue, maybe. He did pull to the left, and if you pull to the left, it kind of means that you might not have to drive down the straightaway. Yeah, it looks and like I, yeah, I think he's got a problem there. Even Ethan Goodsey is going to get through on him. So Carl Fisser now onto the back end of Tyler Robinson. Tyler Robinson feeling the pressure there big time as they head towards turn two. They're okay, trying to close that gap down on Mo Carodio. Mo Carodio has hung on for third place. No issues there at all for Mo. In fact, he's got a, about a second margin, which is an, maybe enough breathing room. 
Kyle is on form at the moment, really showing great pace at this point of the race. He certainly is, yeah. And of course, this is his first time out in anger in a race for Polo Cup. So it's uh, nice to see that he's not going to hold back here, going to go on a similar vein, as I said to his brother. Um, the livery of the car in front of him is what his brother ran it's last got the year. Run, got the run, got the, the run, got the run. Yep, yeah, could he go up the inside? I think he's going to get through there into. Uh, nah. Yeah, he's got, done. It. got it. He's got it. Yeah, you were saying that. No, no, that's uh, that's Cape Town. That's Cape Town knowledge right there, mate. <laughs> yeah. That's an inside line out of uh, Dam's tip and just hold the inside line and do not come off the throttle until the very last second that you have yeah. to. And you'll squeeze through up through Sorrel Sweep. So, yeah, perfectly done there. I was going to say, yeah, the livery of, of, of Tyler's car, of course, is the same livery that um, his brother Charles ran last year with the yellow, the yellow uh, detailing. So, he, if, he, if he was looking at his rearview mirror now, he must be thinking to himself, hang on a second. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know my foot was racing. <laughs> my foot. Charles, Charles actually mentioned it uh, yesterday. Ah, he sees Tyler's running the colours he ran. So uh, he was saying he hopes it he hopes it brings us some luck, but not enough luck to beat his, beat his brother. So. Another lap completed. So we're... Oh! oh! Big bang with Tyler. Tyler, Tyler into the kitty litter at turn one and uh, trying to get it out. She's dug the wheels in and I don't think that car's moving. Trying to get it going. No, it's stuck in its... That's very thick kitty litter at there, turn one. Stranded there. I wonder what happened there. Who, who well, maybe Paul, you can give us a, a little action replay of that shot if we can, Paul, just to have a, a squiz. I know we only caught the tail end of it, but maybe we can work it out here between Daniel and myself as to what might have happened there with Tyler Robinson into turn one. You think it's here now, going to have some problems of his own in the form of Jean-Dre Marais. All right, so we haven't got that replay, unfortunately, Danny, but uh, if you... If we want to, we can possibly look at it over here. <laughs> That's the cool thing about having the live stream option is... Uh, no, yeah, I can't even get it there. They just switched to it when it happened. So right, I wonder... Just caught, caught the tail end. We'll probably have it. Mm. We'll probably definitely have it for the for the TV production. But yeah. uh, just missed out on the, the option there. So Tyler out the car. Doesn't look like it's too badly damaged. There's a bit of front-end uh, bumper stuff and uh, some plastics here and there. But that can all be sorted out with some bright yellow duct tape and zip ties. That's normally the standard option for a polo team. If you don't have that in your toolbox, don't come racing. Yeah, for sure. One to watch those. Kyle at the moment. I think he, now that he's cleared Tyler, he might have the pace to catch uh, Mohammed. Well, this is pushing to try and do that. There's no doubt about it. He wants to certainly uh, be in contention for a potential victory here, but at also in contention for a top five. Yeah, and that's sure. uh, that's where he's uh, he's made his way into right now. So top five is arguably where he wanted to be. I would say as a as a rookie driver in the class in your first race at your home track, top five is a good finish. Podium would be a great finish. And uh, has he got enough time to catch Mo? Well, we'll wait and see. At this point, Carodia is uh, about a second and a half up the road from him. So he may have uh, his work cut out for him here in these next couple of laps. Yeah, I think we got a close battle for third, but also for, for the lead. I see Jason four tenths up on Nathan the last lap. Yeah, he's That's turned the wick up slightly. Mm. Just turned it up ever so slightly. They're putting a bit more pressure onto to, uh, Nathan Victor. Nathan Victor, of course, a, a seasoned campaigner at this circuit, mm. based here locally. But uh, Jason Newsmore, his, uh, his prowess is actually um, his main form of motorsport where he's had uh, the majority of success has been on the oval track. And uh, coming to circuit racing only three seasons ago, he's now learned to turn left and right and uh, has a chance now for a contender for this championship. Yeah, for sure. Driving really, really well. At the moment, Nathan has got the fastest lap, so that would put him on pole for the next race. So uh, should Jason fight for this win or should he maybe hang back and try and get fastest lap? Yeah, that's not a bad plan. Be on the front rows where he wants to be. He said to me yesterday when we did the interview, got the point. Um, I didn't quite get super pole, but I didn't drop off the front row. And in Cape Town, I think that front row is a vital aspect in Polo Cup. Yeah, for sure. So as they head down towards turn one, this is Mo Karodia. Can he be put under a little bit of late race pressure here, potentially from Carl Fisser there in the uh, Volkswagen Motorsport entry. Behind them, it's Ethan Kutsia. He's got just a bit of bit of breathing room there on Kutsia at this point. Looking as well to see whether Dr. Hannes Skierpus can maybe close down on Jean-Dre Marais. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that gap might be a little bit too big. It's about one and a half seconds between them. Um, but then Wayne Masters, we haven't mentioned the, uh, the the Masters category too much. Wayne Masters has basically led from start to uh, where we are right now. But a big improvement came out of John Kruger. Kruger steps up in the second place ahead of Derek Smallberger. Yeah, well, obviously, I think, uh, I think John got a penalty in qualifying being underweight. So he had to start at the back of the grid. 
and he's made his way to second right behind Wayne, so nice run so far. I think he was also on the phone last night to, to uh, <laughs> Jeff saying, what do we do about this? And Jeff already said to him, listen, you should have had about uh, two liters of Coke and just drunk it, put yeah. that extra two kilos in. <laughs> <laughs> I think they, the story, you know, people make mistakes, but, he's, okay. made, he, but he's made up for it. He's right up there, second in class, Nicely doing a great done. job. And uh, top 10 for both of them as well. Eh? We said they get into the top 10. Yeah. Both of the Masters, in fact, all three Masters, Derek Smallberger joins them as the second of the Sabertech cars and up there into the top 10. That is Elna Cruiser, second of our ladies on class and our only Masters lady. She's doing a super job just there behind Derek Smallberger. Uh, fighting at this point in time there with Bjorn Bertold. Bertold, not quite up to scratch just yet in these polos, but he, he, did, he did chat to me yesterday in pit lane saying, it's a completely different animal to learn how to drive these things. And a lot of the drivers have been sort of speaking about, you know, um, Elna was one of them, actually, who spoke to me about it yesterday, is how to to um, benefit and create uh, as, as little uh, distraction from the turbo lag that you get at the coast. And if you can do that, you're going to be fast. Yeah, for sure. There's, a, there's definitely a way to drive these cars and to bring the, bring the turbo in, bring the boost in. Um, so yeah, you just got to drive smooth. You can push these cars quite hard, but you now there's a fine line to where you have to be smooth with that pedal on the exit of the corners. So, uh, I mean, Elna's also doing a fantastic job. Just ahead of Braun Bertold at the moment. Yeah. And not too far behind Derek Smallberger. So. And it's top five for her in the Masters too. But listen, Elna's been fighting a long time in Volkswagen branded cars. Uh, I think she's been involved literally since the inception of what was uh, Volkswagen Challenge. Her and of course her husband Philip is, is one of the main contenders in terms of the organizational skills that go into running that series. So knows how to fight in amongst guys like this and maybe not youngsters, maybe not the Polo Cup contenders too much, but certainly amongst us she's, she's at home. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, she's got a lot of experience under her belt and she looks quite comfortable in this car at the moment. Um, yeah, really, really close to, to Derek within a second now. Mm. So, um, yeah, and I'm well, a big, big, big fan of her livery. That ATE brakes livery looks, looks good, eh? That blue car, I love it. Yeah, it looks really good. But here we go into the final oh. stages, and Nathan's under pressure. Nathan Victor's under massive pressure here. Jason Newsmore is applying it in a big way. He's soaking it up, but by soaking it up, he's starting to slip and slide as they head down towards Cape Town for the final time. Inside line is going to be the option there for the Cape Town man. He's going to know he may not open up that door, but it might compromise his drive slightly, and we might have a sort of a, a drag race to the line between these two here for race one victory in the Astron Energy Volkswagen Polo Cup. Race one under new uh, livery and under the Astron banner has been pretty spectacular, and I'm sure that the people involved in uh, wrapping up that sponsorship deal are exceptionally happy with the action that has been provided. It is the local man. Cape Town's Nathan Victor, Rooster as we like to call him, he's got the victory. Mo Karodi is going to come through for third, beating out Carl Fisser, only just. Very tight there between the two of them, that's a nice little finish up there between Karodia and Fisser. Fisser in the top four, you must be pretty happy with that. Your uh, your team man is uh, up there into fourth place, beating out Ethan Katsia. jean Joe Marie in the top six as well, so the man from PE having a good run there in his uh, Cyrovix and uh, Team Red Racing Polo. Beats out Dr. Hannes Skippers. The, the Dane Fern Dental Services Machine, DDS. That's Dr. Hannes Skippers. Yeah, he's a dentist by trade, but uh, certainly knows how to get a race car around a track. And then it looks like John Kruger just snuck through for the victory. Yeah, the Masters. Looks like it. Wayne's not going to be happy with that. No, I don't think <laughs> no. so. Might be a couple of words there. Yeah. So let's see what happens in race yeah, two. I'm coming for you in race two. Daniel Sun, thank you so much for joining me, bud. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure you got some, some work to do down in pit lane to go and see how the cars have all performed. Do the little trickery that you know how to do mm. to make them go a bit faster. Go and have a check to Kyle and say to him, yeah, getting off the line might be a, an option earlier on than what he did there. Yeah, just to wrap things up there, Nathan Victor, Lusmore, and Mo Karodia are your top three in Polo Cup. John Kruger, Wayne Masters, and Derek Smallberger, the top three in the Masters. And Daniel Rowe, thank you so much for your time, buddy. Thank you. It. Check you later. There we go. So Daniel Sun just giving us a little bit of insight there that, of course, not many other people have got, uh, having had the experience he's had in the past with uh, multiple championships that he's won in polos and touring cars. Up next, we head into the Gazoo Racing SA Cup, and that goes from Volkswagen to Toyota brand. And we'll see Daniel a little bit later on for race two for the Polo Cup. We'll be back shortly as soon as we sort of clear those cars at turn one, and race action resumes here from round one of the Extreme Festival.
So we are going into the next race of the day coming from Toyota Gazoo Racing SA Cup. It's our uh, junior category and media supported category that's on the track at the moment. And we managed to catch up with the, uh, or some of the top guns in the Gazoo Racing 86 League for the first heat for today. It's a whole new looking feel to the GR86 League this year. And uh, Nico, looks like it's going to be a bit of a tough one out there. Things going according to plan and uh, what you want to be doing on the weekend so far? Um, so far, yeah, uh, besides 
practice two, obviously trying different things with the gearbox, but uh, practice one, we were all pretty close, and I think the field separated by 0.4 between all of us, so it's pretty good. Race. That's how you want it, isn't it? Yeah. It's so listen, where have you come from? Where's the, where's the background from racing before you got into the GR? So I started karting lockdown, and uh, I've raced quite a lot in DD2, and then had my fair share in rock, and raced some races in Europe, but other than that, it's just a good opportunity to race here instead. Get into a saloon car for the first yeah. time, nothing wrong. Ken, your side, a little bit of background before we get into how things have gone so far? Uh, my background is all karting. I've done about 10 years of karting, uh, and I've never done anything else. So this year is my uh, first year in the big cars. It is a big class to jump into, and a completely different machine to play with as well. How's it been? Uh, yeah, so far I'm loving it. Eh? It's, uh, the car feels good, it's a good circuit to race at, uh, loving the circuit. So yeah, it's good. Looking forward to the challenge? Yeah, looking forward. Very, very from your side also, brand new. What's it all about? How's the, how's the transition been from where you've come to to where you are today? Uh, I started in saloon class in Zimbabwe and I've had the rough idea so it's just been coming here and learning the new tracks and getting to learn the car. Lots of learning to do. Yes. You've literally got two tracks to play with up there, and that's yes. it. <laughs> and it's quite a big distance between them. Yes, a big is. distance here as well. And uh, are you flying in and out, or are you, are you staying here for the year? I'll be flying in and out throughout the year. We well, wish you all the very best, guys, and uh, let's see if the uh, best man can win tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. On track at the moment, we're going to be moving into the Gazoo Racing SA Cup after qualifying. It was an incredible run there from uh, Darby Funamava, who put it on pole position ahead of Sean Nurse. And uh, a little bit of a change up there, of course, is how they'll be lining up because it's the 86 League that'll be out front, and then our Yaris machines behind that. And uh, Rion's going to join me in commentary for uh, some insight as to uh, the changes on how things have looked from uh, Toyota Gazoo Cup for 2024. It's a, a completely different look, as you can see. New uh, livery on the cars there. But uh, needless to say, we're still going to be in for some fantastic race action that's always provided by these uh, youngsters and our media contingent. And it uh, looks like the, the, uh, the change up there, Rion. T talk us through um, the, the, the reason for switching out the 86s and the, and the Yaris's. Well, Greg, the keen eye will actually spot that uh, we've changed to the GR Corollas oh, yeah. for it's 2024. Also true. My, my bad. It's, it's, it's all new. It's all new. So that's right. Of, of course, that's the latest GR product that we've mm -hmm. launched to the market, and therefore that is our marketing focal point. And it's just a fantastic platform. It really is a hot hatch installed with all the, the goodness of GR Yaris and in a slightly more grown up body shape. Yeah, I know. Certainly it looks good. The other cool thing, of course, is that uh, what's happened is the uh, the youngsters are now in rear wheel drives. Is, is that a good option or is it a bad option? What do you think? <laughs> so the strategy there is in the thinking behind the switch to the GR86s for the, the development side of GR Cup is to give them sports car training. So yes. of course rear wheel drive is the predominant uh, yep. formula out there mm -hmm. uh, and the GR86 is the perfect platform that's kind of the stepping stones and to hone your craft. Um, it's a very precise platform, you need to drive it with momentum. Yep. Um, it's very rewarding when you get it right, but it does teach you excellent race craft. <laughs> You'll know. <laughs> Indeed. You were in one last year. <laughs> yeah, so it's, 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 it's also quite a nice thing to see because, I mean, you know, you guys sort of started the trend with, with the, the development process coming from the carters and giving them a platform to get into uh, saloon car racing if that's their preferred way of going to motorsport. Uh, and then, of course, uh, with the media backing behind the the other category, and I'm talking about when it was last year, the other way around, um, the media support that gets given by the, the guys in those cars is just uh, unmatched and, and just bodes well to what we do here on the live stream and brings you a package that you can then go and sell off. 
Hundred percent. So, of course, this is now year three of of the GR Cup, and it's really done well for the brand. The brand recognition has really benefited from it, mm-hmm. um, and as you said, it ties in with our Gazoo Racing South Africa development program, starting from karting and progressing into saloon car racing, all the way up to touring cars, off road rally, and ultimately Dakar. Yeah, Dakar. I was about to say, but here we go down towards turn one. They head for the first time, and it's going to be uh, another bit of. Uh, predominantly action coming from the front end with the 86 league as you can see already getting up onto the dirt and getting rep real up close and personal there Ryan Naka was the man to uh, try and outgun but uh, great to see Dylan Praji as well all the way from Zimbabwe getting up there and uh, getting to pace with this car pretty rapidly too he'll be looking for a chance to maybe just squeeze himself slightly higher up but you have a multiple champion in Darby van Amava who's sitting there in uh, the lead of the race at the moment Nico Zavirus on his tail that leads uh, the the, uh, the 86 league and then by the looks of things, Sean Nurse may have just got the uh, advantage, and he has. So Nurse leads out in the Coronas. Excellent start to the race. Um, I think this field is definitely going to become increasingly competitive considering this is round one, and there are a lot of both on the media and on the GR86 side, a lot of new drivers, new talent that have come out of karting or single seaters. Mm-hmm. The Chaba is going to have a good season ahead of him. Yeah, just running wide there. I think that was the 98 car. So uh, was it was it Ryan Naka? I think it might have been 93 Ryan Naka who ran wide there. Yeah, Ryan Naka running wide. Or it might have been Alex Shaini as well. Possibly. Possibly one of the two of them just running wide. They've got to still get used to the livery there. Uh, as you can see, the only difference in the livery, of course, is the uh, the detailing. Uh, some running pink, some running orange, some running red, some running yellow, green, etc., etc. That's the detailing on those cars. And similar here at the front end. Although there are some differentiating uh, factors on these cars that were a bit easier to spot. So Chaba still staying with his uh, famous 777 number there for third place. Closing in now on Nico Safiris. So uh, the young Carter could potentially be in a bit of a threat there from uh, the champion. See if he's able to do anything about it. But uh, also watching in the background, uh, Sechaba being caught by Praji and by Ryan Nika. So a bit of pressure there for the third place battle. And then, Greg, maybe then just to segue there to the livery you mentioned, of course, we've Mm. adopted the new global matte black GR livery on the GR Cup Corollas for this year. Um, which emulates what has been done in WRC, WEC, and of course debuted in 2024 on our Dakar Hilux. Yeah, for the sure. GR black and that, livery. that was a huge platform for you guys because I mean I think there were about uh, 15 or 16 cars all coming out of South African teams, but majority coming out of the Gazoo Racing stable, and did phenomenally well. That's uh, that's a good thing. But I said it last year, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you about it as we sit together like now in commentary. But it's 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 testament to what Gazoo Racing is doing worldwide in any category they get involved in, whether it be sports cars, whether it be saloon cars, or whether it be off road or, uh, or rally raids or uh, the likes of the Dakar. Performance wise, uh, your teams are at the front end. World Rally Championship, you know, they're all putting in and uh, being the the top contenders in each of those big classes. I think it's testament to having um, from Akio Toyota's from a kind of a top-down approach of him being a motorsport lover and really instilling those values into the brand Mm -hmm. and not only competing in motorsport on a global platform but excellence in doing so. So it's really paid dividends for us um, and and thank you for the compliment. The, The platforms are all doing exceptionally well and it's instilled a real motorsport ethos into the company that is even uh, coming through to the road cars of course us having yeah. five GR models of on course. the road. Yeah, and I mean, they, they, they're becoming popular options in terms of uh, the people wanting to be either in the Dakar GR model or in the, the Corolla GR model. They don't want just the standard option. You know, South Africans are are uh, performance-driven uh, motor, motor vehicle drivers in their own right. And, and when you buy your first car, the first thing you want to do is try and find something you can modify it with. If it comes as a standard option, even better. And that's what happens with your, your road-going vehicles. Yeah, the, the GR brand, even on the production car side, there's definitely an appetite for it. As you mentioned, South Africans love performance and, and sporting looking vehicles. Um, and therefore, we've introduced it across most of our most popular product lines. There's either a GR or a GR Sport version thereof um, that brings that, that GR DNA into the road car. So I'm going to just say, I'll drive a Toyota Rumi on. Is there a GR option on that? <laughs> and uh, maybe on my, on my, on my 1995 Chrissy, uh, um, Camry as well. But here we go. Speaking of uh, battles, 
this is what we want to see. This is exactly what it's all about when it comes to the Junior Cup, the GR Cup, and running wide there slightly because of the pressure being put on. Four cars fighting hard. They're not going to catch Darby. I think Darby's experience over these drivers is possibly going to give him the slight advantage. On a similar vein to Saad last year, his experience was also very good. But the second, third, and fourth place battles in this Junior GR Cup were epic battles. And once again, we're seeing it here right from the word go in race one, a huge battle for second place between four cars. That's the advantage of having, of course, all these GR Cup cars run with minimal modifications. Hmm. Um, it's as close to a standard road car bar and exhaust and the necessary safety equipment. And the likes of OMPC, racing seat harnesses, yeah. a roll cage, etc. And, and really it's testament to how competitive and close the cars are in performance. You also have got a whole bunch of uh, subsidiary sponsors that are involved. I mean, it's driven by Netstar. You've got Dunlop Tires that are helping you out with the assistance there. But there's, there's, there's an option to sort of show your OEM partners another platform that they can get some coverage out on as well. Indeed, and we, we're very thankful for the sponsors and partners that have made GR Cup a success. Um, you mentioned most of them there. So definitely Netstar is the title sponsor, Dunlop Rubber. Uh, looks after the cars on the track. Um, OMP together with Dunlop ATS on the uh, safety equipment side. And we also have Garmin on board. So, of course, Garmin provides the Catalyst product that they use for uh, telematics, well, not really for telematics, but, but racetrack metrics, uh, times, delta times, a race driver training. So, the Catalyst is a fantastic device to really serve as a coaching tool for the drivers and it, it works well it certainly does i mean you you're chatting about how quickly these drivers learned last year with me uh, off track and saying you know using that technology that comes through from garmin showing them the data to prove that they th they're saying to you no but i was i was quick through turn one but meanwhile you were off the brakes here too early and you weren't on the throttle in time enough to get the maximum performance out of that corner it goes out the next session bangs it on time and there you go you've made up that half a second that you needed to make up to to move yourself through the field indeed and then of course the other sponsor that you'll find on the cars that's very important in track racing a lot of people think about going fast but when you need to slow down brakes become critically <laughs> brakes, important brakes are very important so big thanks to Ferodo for supporting us with these cars yeah. in terms of the braking department there's a, there's a nice there's a nice sort of synergy amongst all of the competitors that race out there and those those brands particularly have shown that synergy um, Dunlop has to have a, take a hat off to them I mean they're literally involved in almost every single saloon car class and single seater class in the country so whoa here we go have they been have they had the right act read to them already <laughs> I think that was a partial lapse in judgment there yeah, a little bit of maneuvering on the outside, and unfortunately, it uh, looks like Kanis Fissa has not been able to find a way through just yet. Sean Nurse is keeping him honest, but Nurse and Fissa going at it for the front end for a potential win here in uh, the Corolla uh, GR Cup. And those Corolla GRs, oh man, just, they, they, they just look so good. I mean, I saw you guys put it out quite early uh, at the beginning of the year, the, the sort of new look and feel on how the cars were going to be uh, turned out. And then, of course, uh, we'll see it in a few moments' time. Uh, that beautiful starlet that's been uh, put into the, the, the SA Touring Cars uh, Championship as well. So it is definitely showing that uh, the Toyota Motorsport brand is, is painting its way through all of the classes involved, which is what we want to be seeing. So yes, so the starlet is a new addition for 2024. And, and that really is a bridging category between GR Cup mm -hmm. and then the full-fledged SA Touring Cars. So that's the strategy behind that to give our development drivers that bridging option between GR Cup, which is still road car based, as we've discussed. And then, of course, SA Touring Cars, the newly rebranded series, which are Pucker Race Machines. And the Super Starlet is the stepping stone in the middle to really give the candidates a taste of a true race car. Mm. So as the 86 League make their way down towards turn five, faster on corner, that's Nurse. Quite easy to pick up on the uh, the green colours there. Maybe that's the option to be on for this weekend, considering tomorrow's St. Paddy's Day. So maybe the green one is the is the car to be in. It certainly is the way that Sean Nurse is driving it right now. So he looks like he might be the man in contention for the win here for the first time out in the uh, media challenge. And uh, he's pulled a bit of a margin now, but there was a big fight on just behind there between Fissa and Shaheeni. So I think the two of them were sort of slowing each other down slightly. Did have a little bit of argy-bargy between them as well. We saw that as one of them ran wide out of turn three. 
86 league though, Derby continues on his merry way at the front end. No problems at all here for him. Not really been troubled at all by anybody. Nico was there for a little while, but he's kind of dropped back into Sachaba Mashigo's uh, clutches. And Dylan Praji from Zimbabwe right there on his tail. So really nice little battle there between three top drivers. And I think that could potentially be the, uh, the championship battle we're going to see at uh, every single round. Uh, Derby's experience, as I said, in terms of him coming from Polo Cup and having learnt all the circuits over a period of time, he will have a slight advantage over the younger carters behind him. Uh, Dylan Praji, to, to, to be honest with you, has, has to learn a huge amount because he only races on two tracks at all. That's all foreign uh, to him. Yeah, Falls Road and, and uh, Harari Donnybrook. That's it. They've only got the two tracks up there. And then, Greg, just to add to that, then in terms of our media challenge on the GR Corollas, four of our participants this year have never set foot on track in a competitive environment. Wow. So those are also, it's a steep learning curve. A huge one. And, and a, a big adjustment. And so far, they've taken to the challenge excellently. It, well, well it's, it's kind of what we saw as well with the ones as the flag comes out. Sorry to interrupt myself there. Darby will take the victory. He comes across Nico Severus in second, Sachaba for third, and Dylan Praji. And then he'll be happy with that top five. I tell you, that that's a good run there from him. Ryan Naka in fifth place. Naka's already come through for a victory in another category he races in this year. So I thought his, his confidence might be slightly higher than what it was. Sean Nurse is going to get the victory in the Corollas, but looks like probably his stage is unfortunately there for the car with the red livery and I just want to that is the citizen machine of Yaku might be a left front puncture by the by my cameraman and uh, director looks like he might have picked that up but he was he was off track down in Cape Town corner we actually saw him come back onto the circuit um, and uh, finish the race but he's going to be a couple of laps down so just to run through finally the results Up next, we're heading to the Big Bang as it is extreme supercars driven by Dunlop making their way onto the circuit for the first time today. Let's go and catch up with some top contenders in this category before we get into race action. Extreme supercars driven by Dunlop tyres down in Cape Town for the first time. It's not the first round of this championship, 
But uh, nice to see you here and uh, getting an opportunity to go to a circuit that uh, these cars absolutely love. Starting things out there with uh, my man on the left hand side from Ghost Corp. Listen, you were jumping in and out of cars the whole of uh, the swap course, but you quite finish up. Have we got a car full time this time and are we going to see you out there for a full race? What are we in? Uh, we in the GT3 class with the, the Audi R8. And, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty great. It's all red and black with the uh, huge on the side. So it looks really good. Yeah. Something completely different. That's nice to see. Stu, you've had a uh, magnificent time down here so far. This morning session is looking good. Um, but uh, this circuit is particularly one that you enjoy driving at, having set the outright lap record here only a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, it's like Cape Town has always been good to me um, already. It's from from the karting days always. So far it's been good. We've been having just a few small issues, but overall it's been very good. And I think it brings us a bit of luck. And obviously, um, late Salsio Scribanti, so running a little bit of a tribute for him this weekend. So I'm racing in tribute of him as it was his birthday yesterday. So I think it's something very special for us as a team and for the Scribantis. Um, so yeah, we'll just try to give our best and try to keep the car front. So far looks good. John, you've got a little bit of work to do to try and find that little bit of a gap. It's not a huge one, but uh, of course there's a long season to come. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm running in GD3 this year, so we've got restrictors in. Uh, so I won't be chasing the front with Frank Jones too. But uh, yeah, I mean, Ari's here now and uh, yeah, I mean, he's a lot younger than me, so uh, I'm going to have to give it my all. Uh, so far, practice has been going. So driven by Dunlop. I uh, know my good friend Hans Bazay is going to be coming to join me in the studio in a few moments time. He's not yet just yet. I think he's probably getting a couple of shots from uh, the pit wall downstairs below me. And uh, as you can hear here yeah, in the the uh, the club upstairs, we got a little bit of background noise, and uh, the background noise basically is all our fans that are watching how we do things from the background and uh, how things get done slightly differently from a, a live stream point of view. So uh, lining up now with an incredible lap time coming out of Stuart White there in the Hurricane, setting a 107.895 for his qualifying time. That puts him about half a second off the outright lap record, which he, of course, owns. Now, I mentioned that in the interview with him up front and showed that, uh, you know, the potential of these cars is certainly getting better and better every time these cars come to Cape Town, and particularly at Cape Town, how well these extreme supercars work. Possibility of a clear lap. If he gets that clear lap in, what is he going to be able to do to see if he can make a, a maneuver and possibly break his own outright lap record? That was set, remember, in a LMP2 sports car. Him and Craig Jarvis shared that car in the original Endurance Series Championship. And it was a 1066 that saw him take the victory. Problems here for the Wild Rose Gin Lotus of Dobby. By the looks of things, Dobby Jabeir pulling off the circuit. And uh, that's not what we want to be seeing right from the word go. That is for sure. So certainly some issues there for Dobby Jablap. That will take them into the race start. And as they roll off the line, it's two Lamborghini Hurricanes alongside each other at the front end. Remember, it's uh, Stuart White running in A-plus category. That's the unlimited category. Jonathan Detoy alongside him will be running in the GT3 class with Dane Angel, Arnie Nebel and Silvio Scribanti behind them, also in the GT3 category. Zolila Letlaka and uh, Aldo Scribanti are in A-plus. They're down at the moment in 6th and 7th place on the grid. Andrew Colbert, another GT3 contender there in the black Mercedes-Benz, will be in 8th just ahead of Chris Budnick. And he, of course, is the first of the Class A competitors there in that bucket is racing uh, Dodge Viper. Franco Scribanti certainly didn't have a go his way yesterday in qualifying. He's down in 12th place in the 997. That's an A-plus Porsche that's sitting in the mid-pack of this race. 23 cars in total. 12th place puts him at halfway. Means he's got a lot of work to try and get through this pack and see if he can outgun those top 11 cars ahead of him. Behind him is Gianni Giannacaro in the big Nissan R34. And then you've got uh, Sun Moodley in the second of those uh, Mercedes-Benz AMGs. Jason Ibbotson, second of the Ferraris, is down in 13th ahead. Uh, I beg your pardon, in 14th, just behind number 13. That's uh, Sun Moodley. R Ricky Giannacaro. 
there in 15th place in the Lamborghini. And then it's a Mike Veria ahead of Marco Retta, Renzo Torrente. You got Darby Jaber, unfortunately, he's pulled out there. He won't be there. Oliver Hintonis is there as well. Uli Sana and Blunden and Jimmy Giannacaro at the back of the pack as they come round into Cape Town Corner now for the warm up lap. The official pace car there looks like it's been supplied, I think, by Omada today to Kilani International Raceway. That will peel off onto the right hand side and hand the duties over to Stuart White who will be looking to try and take on this big pack of cars and his own lap record, potentially, as uh, he wants to try and outgun that lap record in a GT3 spec car. It's an unlimited GT3 spec car, but it is nonetheless a GT3 styled car as they head towards turn one for the first start. Stuart White holds that inside line. Coming through on the inside as well is Silvio Scribanti trying to find a way through there on Angel. Angel hangs on though. Just stays ahead, only just ahead there of the hard charge coming from Silvio Scribanti. Scribanti wanted to try and force his way past, but Angel shut the door on him. So we got Stuart White getting away from Jonathan Detoy. Great start coming out of Dane Angel and then Arnie Neveling. Neveling could start there from him in the red and black Gosco car out of Stradale Motorsport. He's up to third place by the looks of things. Yes, he is. That Audi R8 just staying ahead of the Ferrari of Angel. Angel now under pressure from Silvio Scribanti as they come through there. Franco's made up about three or four places. He's got up ahead of uh, at least Chris Budnick and possibly uh, Aldo, I think, is just in his sights. No, he's not ahead of uh, Budnick. Uh, he's, ahead, he's got ahead of Budnick, but he's not ahead yet of Colbert. He's got Colbert in his sights now as they go onto that back straightaway for the first time. Watch for that 997 to give it a little bit of extra squirt down that back straightaway to get through there on the Mercedes-Benz, and that's exactly what happens in the background. So Lila Nathaka on the tailpiece there of Silvio Scribanti coming out of Turn 5, Fostron Corner. This is, so lots of race action to come our way here for these guys. Beg your pardon. The first one's a 10 lap, so 10 lap here for them in the extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. Non-stop action right the way through now as they go down towards Turn 2 again. Bit of pressure coming on the tail end of the Ferrari. Here comes the Porsche of Franco Scaranti. Franco Scaranti absolutely lighting up that field. He's made up four places within the space of that first lap. So Franco Scaranti is not going to hold back here whatsoever as he tries to get through there on his cousin Aldo. Aldo just ahead, also an A-plus category competitor, remember. So he's not going to give it up without a fight. He realizes that uh, if he can keep Frank behind him, there's a possibility that he can still end up in the top three for A-plus. That's not going to happen. It's a really good past on the short straight there between Damps and Sorrel Sweep. Now, that Porsche closes down on Zalila Letlaka. Letlaka trying to find a way through there on Silvio. Silvio is behind Dane Angel at this point in time as they go through the Ferrari now in about fourth place on the road. And uh, Scribanti racing machine pushing hard in that Lamborghini. But the Lambos now the class of the field. The Audi in second place at the moment, Jonathan Detoy. Watching the lap times, 109-1 on the first couple of passes there. There's the fastest that Stuart White can get to, but he's got clear track ahead of him now. There is a bit of a breeze, which might be hindering him slightly, but we have ideal track conditions in terms of temperature on the track. And by the second or third lap, those Dunlops will come into their own, and he'll have optimum traction to try and break his very own outright lap record here in a slightly different car. Heading up through Sorrel Sweep. Jonathan Detroit in second place, leading the GT3 class. GT3 battle on at the moment. Oli Neveling into uh, second place in that GT3 class battle. Dane Angel is in third. Bigfoot Express Freight Mercedes-Benz off circuit. Looks like that was Colbert. Colbert running wide out of turn three and onto the grass. So Andrew Colbert with some problems of his own, unfortunately. Down on the brakes comes Budnick. Budnick under pressure there, as you can see. And the pressure is coming on the back end of Chris Budnick from the likes of Charles Larangis. Now, Charles Larangis, of course, is the reigning champion in this category. He makes a welcome return, but he's out in a uh, Lamborghini Trofeo. So uh, a slightly lesser-powered car that Charles would love to be in has got up to Jonathan. So Franco Scaranti up to Jonathan Detoy. That's where he's been able to progress to for now. That's third place on the road, second place in Class A+. Plus. Jono will be his next uh, car in sight and on target for an overtaking maneuver if he can find one. 
Let's see if he's able to do anything about the Trans Africa Racing and Stradale sponsored car there of uh, Jonathan de Toy. Detroit currently lapping in the 1.10.9s. We're getting 1.9.3s out of uh, the Porsche. So that's why it's so easy for Frank to make that kind of maneuver. Finding a way through and up to second place. So up into second place goes Franco Sgramanti. And he's still got uh, half a lap to go. Oh, sorry, half a race to go to try and catch Stuart White up front. Into Africa Mining, Lamborghini taking on the Semza machine of Silvio Scrivanti. Two Lamborghinis fighting for honours in their respective classes, but also fighting for honours on track. And of course, Silvio and Zolile, GT3 and A, respectively. Flying through Dampstrip and up the short straight towards Sorrel Sweep. Franco Scribanti now trying to get the, the head down on that Porsche. Concentrate on getting his lap times down. We've just seen a 1087 from Stuart White, so his lap time starting to come down. It is in the latter part of the race that these tyres come into their own, and that's when you get maximum traction from them. But the problem that you have at that point is that you start to get some traffic, and they've already gone through on some of, some of the slower traffic. So some of the slower traffic coming in the form of Gianni Giannacaro, uh, uh, Jimo Giannacaro, Nili Sana, and Blunden and Oliver spoiled the potential there of the number 27. Good number on that car. Stewie White, 1087, with traffic down to 1104. So you can see just how vital it is to try and get those hot laps in if you are looking to try and break lap records before you catch the traffic. So it's Stuart White, Franco Scribanti, Jonathan Detoy, Arnie Nierveling, Dan Angel, your top five. Running Lamborghini Hurricane. A plus is followed by GT3s, and uh, the top three in GT3 are Detoy, Nierveling, Sudale, Audi R8. Butnik still hanging on for the win in Class A ahead of Arangis and Ricardo Giannacaro. Ricky Giannacaro down in 12th place. So it looks like that Lamborghini of his not quite firing as, as he'd like it to be. Dane Angel starting to up the pace ever so slightly there as you can see in the Autohaus Angel Ferrari. That 488 is starting to put a bit more pressure onto the back end of the R8 of Arnie Nierveling. Nierveling will be soaking that pressure up, loving it. Having uh, Goscore, Bobcat, and uh, Stradale Motorsport on uh, the new livery on that Audi R8. So a nice run there from him to stay ahead of that 488 Ferrari. Running wide there's Angel putting a wheel on the dirt. That's how hard he's trying. Blue flags waving there for the BMW. Just warning that the quicker cars are coming through rapidly. I don't think Franco's going to have an answer here to Stuart White's pace. Stuart White has already completed the eight of ten laps. The rest of them now coming to do the same thing there with Franco in second. Jonathan Detoy in third. Arnie Nierveling and Dane Angel. Angel 488 on its tail. And now traffic for Franco to negotiate. He gets through easily. Jonathan Detoy might be slowed slightly. Dane Angel goes inside, but uh, Arnie saw him coming and shut the door. So Lila Leclerc has now closed onto the tailpiece of that little battle as well for what is going to be fourth place on the road. And Leclerc is uh, feeling like he could have a little, bit, a little bit of that. Possibly going to be joining that fight. Beam in the way slightly coming out of first Sorrel Sweep. So it's slowed on his run down slightly into the Malmesbury Sorrel Sweep. That might give Dane Angel a slightly better run down the back straight towards turn five. Uh, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it. I think he also had to come out of the, uh, the throttle there slightly. So even though he was trying hard to get uh, to use the back marker to his advantage, it didn't quite work out. Victory coming across the line with a 1087. So about two seconds off his uh, outright lap record in the LMP2 car. Franco for second, Jonathan Detoy wins out the GD3 class.
And he'll get third place overall ahead of Oli Nebeling and Dane Angel. Zalila Latlaka will come through into sixth place. And that should put him second overall in a plus. Silvio Scribanti and Aldo Scribanti seven and eight. And third place for a plus for Aldo Scribanti. Budnick hangs on ahead of Varangis for the win in class A. So nice run there from them to make up the top 10 across the line. As Gianni Giannacoro comes through there just outside of the top 10. He won't be happy with that. Down in 11th, they'll definitely need to do some changes to that car to sort it all out to get it ready for race two. We have a small break before we get into, of course, the next race. And then after the next race, we've got a slightly longer break. So just giving you a heads up that uh, it is South African Touring Cars up next with the South African Touring Car Super Cup class all combined. And that'll be our final first heat of the morning into this afternoon. And uh, then we are ready to go for a bit of a, a, a break in the track to give our marshals and medics a chance to get something into their stomachs and uh, ready to go for the second day's proceedings. And also a chance for all the fans here at Kilani to get up close and personal with a couple of the cars as they'll do the fan walk on the main straight and on the back straightaway as well. But uh, in a few moments' time, we'll be back here from Kilani International Raceway and round one of the Extreme Festival for SA Touring Cars, including the Super Cup.
So cars rolling out now for the first heat of the newly branded South African Touring Car Championship with the Super Cup class combined with them. A couple of new cars going to be rolling out, some new livery on these cars as well. So looking forward to seeing a big, big uh, fight to the front end as we always have in both the, the Touring Cars and in the Super Cup class. One big factor, of course, there, we spoke about it just before this uh, two races ago with Rion Esterhazen from Toyota Gazoo Racing is the Toyota Starlet that the new champion is in. So a new car to the grid, Toyota Starlet GR, that uh, Sa Saud Variawa will be piloting uh, this season after he's been crowned a couple of weeks ago um, uh, after sorting out all the, the bits and pieces that went down to uh, wrap up this championship for 2023. New look and feel, as I said, it's South African Touring Cars and not no longer Global Touring Cars GDCs. So SATC is the new look and feel. And there is the new car that we're speaking about right now, that Toyota Starlet of uh, Saud Variawa. Another new car to the grid is the second BMW, this time piloted by Andy. Great to have you involved in the series. Nice to see the sapphire colors coming through and uh, take us through the car and what the development's been like. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise for me a month ago when I got told I'm going to take a step up into this. Um, great surprise, a big learning curve. Uh, it's great to have Safair along for the ride. So I think the car looks amazing. Um, but yeah, for me, it's a lot of difference to a single seater, a lot more power, a little bit heavier. Um, so yeah, I'm just, every time I get on the car, learning as much as I can and keep chipping away. That's all I can do for now. How ironic is that? I mean, he flies jumbo jets and he's worried about weight. I don't even really understand that. We're going to go to the Desert Master now, stepping out of this. I think there's still a little bit of that uh, Saudi sand coming out of the ears there, but congratulations on a magnificent effort, first of all. Thank you. But uh, the championship has now been crowned. The number one's on the car, target's on the back. What's the plan? I mean, obviously it's a whole new look and feel, like you said. Um, we have the limited slip diff in the rear, so it's a lot of uh, work and a big challenge to get um, up to speed. And uh, I think it's showing you uh, where we slightly not where we want to be, but um, we push forward and uh, we have one more session and yeah, we hope to be fighting again for the top step of the podium uh, this weekend and the rest of the season. And big shoes to fill, buddy. Getting into this category, it's, uh, it's uh, sorting out the men from the boys once again, but uh, you seem to have done that in every single category that you've joined, every single class you've joined. It takes you a couple of races and then in the mix. Is that kind of the plan or are you looking to go guns blazing from the word go? Uh, hopefully we can uh, start off to the season a bit stronger than we have in the past, but obviously it's a big difference to anything else I've driven before, so we're going to learn what, from what we've done and try and move forward and be at the front. That's what we like to see, but of course it's not always easy when you've got uh, a seasoned competitor alongside you, but the cool thing is at least there's a couple of rookies in the class as well. Yeah, no, it's... The, the guys in this series obviously have a lot of experience, but we'll try what we can and see what we can do. So there you have it, that's our uh, new contenders. Their point of view on how things are going to turn out for the season. Saud Variawa, as you heard, uh, maybe with a couple of little niggles still to be sorted out on that starlet of his. But uh, he's up in a, a relatively well-known position for him in that top five. Fifth place exactly for him. Uh, his teammate Michael van Rooyen just outgunning him slightly. And uh, Nati and Samunga actually being the top of the Gazoo Racing stable cars. They're in third place. But the front row is all about the two um, usual contenders out of uh, WCT Racing. And that's Robert Volk and Julian van der Watt. So expect to see a nice little fight between them. And uh, joined, I'm sure, shortly by the uh, three Toyotas. Anthony Pretorius there for Bucketers Racing and Fast Development Toyota. He's up into sixth place ahead of Schofield in the second of the Beamers for uh, Saf Air. And then uh, in the Super Cup class, we'll get to chat to some of the drivers in the Super Cup class later on in race one. But uh, it was Keegan Campos who put it on pole position ahead of Schal Fisser. Schal Fisser only... Uh, what are you at? 0.3 of a second off Campos's pace though. So, a contender at one point in his career. But due to the fact that he had to go on to, uh, of course, um, get married to Tasman Pepper, he missed out. Had the start he wanted though. Down in 13th place. Lucky for some, but not for Brad this time out. But of course, 13th place also puts him into about 7th place on the grid for the Super Cup class. Tate Bishop, local man is alongside Jonathan Mahotzi for the second row of Super Cup. It's Davide Franco and Brad Liebenberg, Dean Fenter and Cara Hill 
Corey Hill. Michael van Rooyen, slightly different colours on that car, so the slightly different delivery, as you heard, running with the, the points that are required to take championships by the time we wrap things up at the end of the year. Tate Bishop for Angry Racing. I see some where's the all racing uh, stable on the side of that as well. And won't drop back into the clutches there of Saud Vario, his teammate. But they're now both tailing onto the back end of the GTI. Julian van der in third place. The pressure coming from Michael van Rooyen as they head down on the breaking point. Down into turn one. He goes around the outside as van Rooyen. Can he make it stick on that outside line though? That's the important thing. The outside line there of Toh. Is that Variawa? Yes, it is. Saud Variawa using some Dakar skills there as he get onto the dirt coming out of turn number two, or the exit of turn one. It's a long left hand to turn one, so it could even be two turns at some point. But here we go. He's been able to keep it on, on track, and Marco van Rooyen made it stick around the outside. So van Rooyen under a bit of pressure. Got a little bit squirrely going down in towards turn three, damn step. So maybe he was at, uh, under a bit more pressure than what he expected. Front end, Fissa from Campos. Campos from Machotzi. Two teammates sandwiching Keegan Campos. Bishop behind that. Davide Franco follows on suit. Had a nice run there from him just ahead of Brad Liebenberg. Liebenberg trying to close the gap down there. And bringing that championship winning car slightly higher up than what it is right now. That's certainly not where Brad wants to be. That is for sure. Down into turn five. Goes three, four and five. One and two across the line. Still Volk from Mtsamanga. Volk hangs on for now. Mtsamanga's applying the pressure. Bit of pressure coming from Marco van Rooyen. Saw him move ahead of Julian van der Vaart on the last pass, but now he's having to stay behind him. So big, big pressure there from him. Big, big pressure coming through there from uh, Nati Mtsamanga on the back end of Robert Volk. Volk and Msumanga, the league of South African Touring Car class. Lead of the Super Cup class is headed towards turn two. Here they are, Fisser out front looking for his debut victory. Schalfus, of course, knows this circuit like the back of his hand. He really knows it well. Having won Polar Cup Championship here last year in the final round, he's certainly a man, or in the penultimate round, I should say. He is the man to beat here at this track. And Keegan Campos, although he's very good in Cape Town, is having uh, to work even harder to stay with... Uh, the local top contender here in this category his teammate behind that doing the teammates role applying the pressure on the campus making him watch those rear view mirrors possibly giving him some work to do so to allow for Schalfus to get away Volk hangs on inside line Imsamunga looking to try and find a way past he goes high and wide for turn one Van Rooyen shot back into the clutches of Variawa so Volk in the BMW out front but it's that Corolla all over the back of him there of Natsim Samanga looking for a way past if they can find one. Not there just yet though. Inside to outside for turn two. Pack of GDCs going through there. The Super Cup of... So I want to say GDCs. Super Cup class, I beg your pardon. I'm going to try and remember that it's now so they begin touring cars. Been calling them the GDCs for a long time now, so it's still stuck in the memory banks there, but we'll get it out eventually. Here comes Campos, slightly different line into turns, giving Fisser just a little advantage to try and get away and bridge a small gap over his rival. 19-8 from Charles Fisser, 19-8 from Shaul Fisser's closest rival, Keegan Campos, and a 19-8 from Machotzi. Now, if you want to have a look in the, uh, the breakdown after the eights, <laughs> it's an 8-9-6 from Fisser, an 8-9-8 from Campos, and an 8 9 six at the front end of Super Cup. 16-0-1-3 for Robert Volk. 16-3-1-1 for Natium Samanga. 16-2-2-5 for Julian Van der closing that gap down. And it's 16-5s and 16-9s from Fariawa and from Van Rooyen. Haven't mentioned really much of Anthony Pretorius, but he's just in the background. You can see that OMP livery on his bonnet heading towards turn two there. The bucketless racing man is up in seventh place, or sixth place now, I beg your pardon. But about five seconds off the pace of uh, the front end. So uh, inside line. Oh, here we go. Sawad Variawa trying to get the starlet up the inside. Try and find a way through there. Can he? No, I think Michael Van Rooyen is going to have him matched as they head into towards Sorrel. Oh, the two teammates touch. Massive moment there as the two teammates touch coming out of Sorrel Sweep. 
And a big moment there for Variawa as he just tagged his teammate and sent him sideways. Van Rooyen caught it, got back on track, but Variawa, certainly the uh, more aggressive of the two drivers, into uh, Sorrel Sweep and sending him wide. So uh, that's how it turns out and uh, usually ends up in tears at some point. There's no team orders other than trying to take each other out, but uh, I don't think that was necessary uh, trying to take out manoeuvre. It was just a race incident between the two boys that were pushing as hard as possible. Let's have a quick replay of that, that manoeuvre going into uh, Sorrel Sweep as we're watching the uh, Super Cup class. Yeah, you can see Sawood trying to get that inside line. Michael let the door shut and he just gets sent sideways. So there's possibly going to be a little chat between the two teammates after this. That was a little aggressive from Sawood Variawa's point of view, in my opinion. But, uh, of course, uh, that's how you got to try and make manoeuvres stick here. You've got to find a way through. And if it's uh, to try and push, push and make it work, and if that's how it's going to work and you get through, you might get away with it. Right now, Keegan Campos has not found a way through. Neither has Mahotsi. Fissa hangs on to the lead of the Super Cup class. Vox pulled away slightly from Natim Samanga. Julian van der in the GTI 8 is still there in third place. So it's Volk and Samanga and van der for your SATC debut race underneath the new livery and branding. Looks like Anthony Pretorius now may have moved his way up into fourth. He has. That's due to the incident there between Saad Variawa and Schofield. Uh, and Van Royen. And then... Actually, Varial has made up a lot of ground. He's been able to get back at Andrew Schofield in the Fly Safir BMW. So, uh, some maneuvering happening there in that mid pack. Couple of chop chopping and changing due to an incident that sent two cars off the circuit. So, Volk to try and hang on now for another six laps of action. Six of six done, six to go. And uh, I think we're in for a. Oh, I was going to say we're in for an epic finish, but uh, there's Schofield off on the side of the circuit, just uh, maybe running wide out of turn three. If you put a wheel onto the dirt or onto the rumble strip there, it can send the car into a spin. He wasn't really fighting with anybody at any stage or at that stage. So, Andrew Schofield possibly making a mistake there through turn three. That's put him out of contention. Here come the first four in Super Cup. Down onto the breaking point. Late breaking from Keegan Campos. That's to keep out Mahotzi's attack. Tate Bishop has now joined the party. So, the angry racing man has joined the party now. We've got two Volkswagen Motorsport entry Polo Super Cup category cars taking on the Campos Transport and Angry Racing Boys at the front end. Big gap down to uh, fifth place, Davide Franco. He's got a small margin over Brad Liebenberg, who leads a second pack of cars there with Dean Fenter and Cara Hill in it. So uh, some work to, still to be done there for the second pack just in the background. We'll watch out for that. Here comes Campos, slightly different line into turn two, keeping Mokotsi out. Mokotsi runs wide, tries to cut back, looking for that inside line for turn number three. Not close enough to pull it this time though. So Mokotsi behind Campos. Another lap down there for Robert Volk, completing lap number eight of 12, four to go. Four laps to go, and the final third of this race is about to be completed. Volk from Nsamunga, no changes there between the two of them. And in fact, Nsamunga's only change is that he's dropped back a lot further than what he'd like to, I'm sure, in that Corolla. Julian van der Vat, I wouldn't say equidistant apart, but uh, just a bit further back in third place in the Golf 8 GTI. And then it's Anthony Pretorius all on his own some. With a bit of pressure, possibly by the end of the race, 
from Saud Variawa if Variawa can keep up the race pace that he's on at the moment. 16 fives out of Variawa, 16 sevens coming out of Anthony Pretoria. So with two tenths difference, there's a possibility that Variawa could catch and pass Pretorius by the end of this one. Mahotzi certainly looking for a 1-2 finish here for Team Volkswagen. The Volkswagen Motor Squad and Driving Academy colours on those cars. Would love to see a 1-2 here for their boys. But Keegan Campos is looking to spoil their day. Charles Fisser has literally taken to the Super Cup car like a duck to water. He really is enjoying all aspects of it. That's nice to see the Safir car back on track, but uh, about to be lapped now by Saud Variawa. He lost a couple of laps already when he was on the sideline, but it looks like Scoth was able to get it going again. He has dropped right to the back of the pack, of course, even behind the Super Cup class. But uh, needless to say, he's back on track and circulating for uh, whatever points he can salvage at this point in time. First shot there of the OMP and bucketless racing car of Anthony Pretorius in fourth place. Bishop putting pressure onto him some onto Bishop. Onto Machotzi, I beg your pardon. So Bishop on Machotzi, Machotzi on Campos. Campos now trying something around the outside of turn two. That might open up the door there for Machotzi. Machotzi's going to hold that outside line and he'll, he'll have the inside line. No, he won't if Campos forces him that wide. Campos with a little bit of a aggressive exit of the little kink between turn two and three. And that forced Machotzi ever so slightly wide and just spoiled his chances of trying to run up the inside into turn three to get past on Keegan Campos. But Campos is, is really a wily old driver when it comes to those kind of maneuvers. He would have seen Machotzi lining that up and would have possibly done some uh, slightly more aggressive exit speed to force his car wide and force Machotzi into an evasive maneuver. Back down across the line, another lap completed. So we're into the final two laps there for the South African Touring Cars and GDC uh, and Super Cup combined. Super Cup class, heated battle for first, second and third. Not over yet. Fisser hangs on, holds that inside line. And with that inside line he's... Oh, oh hello! There we go. A little tap from Mahotzi. Maybe a bit of frustration being shown now by Jonathan Mahotzi. Mahotzi starting to uh, feel that he's got the pace and maybe Keegan's holding him up. If you look at the lap times, 20.05 as opposed to 20.2. So yeah, he is slightly quicker. And maybe that's just the pressure there starting to be felt. Franco. In that mid-pack about to be caught now by the leading car. So Davide, uh, big upon Roberto, about to be caught by Robert Volk in the Chemical Logistics WCT BMW. He heads into Sorrel Sweep with a almost three-second gap over second place Natiam Samanga. So um, Samanga is going to have to settle for second place in this one. Robert Volk starts off his attempt to win back that number one plate and possibly remove the four off it by the end of the season. For Chemical Logistics WCT in the BMW, it's Robert Volk for race one victory in the newly branded South African Touring Car Championship. Natiam Samanga will be second for Toyota Gazoo Racing in the Corolla and third place in the Golf GTI 8 it's Julian van der Watt. waiting now to see who's going to have the possible victory here is it going to stay in Fisser's hands it certainly looks that way Charles Fisser coming from his championship winning race to take the Polo Cup championship last year climbs into the Super Cup car for the first time on his home track and at round one it looks like it's going to be a victory for the local man so running out of Volkswagen Motorsport 
Astron Energy and Nathan's Motorsport prepping that car. Fisser debuts and takes the victory. Second place could be... No, not quite. I thought we saw... We might see a late dive there from Mahotzi, but he wasn't able to get on the inside of Campos. So Campos hangs on for second place and Mahotzi finishes up in third with Tate Bishop just behind him. So as we wrap things up here for the first part of the day's proceedings, that's all of race heat ones done now. Robert Volk, Natim Samanga, Julian Fanavat, Anthony Pretorius and Saud Variawa are your top five in the South African touring car class. And then we go a little bit further down. Seventh place overall, but first in the Super Cup class, Charles Fisser for Astron Energy, Volkswagen Motorsport and Nathan's Motorsport. Beating out the Campos Transport car there of Keegan Campos. Fisser's teammate Jonathan Mahotzi in third ahead of the angry racing car of Tate Bishop and GWR's Davide Franco running out of the Universal Motorsport team and uh, Team Red Racing. So congratulations there to the top five in each class. We've got a small break now in proceedings as we will probably give you some footage of uh, the grid walks and the fan walks and get to see the guys and girls getting up close and personal with cars on track as we're now into the break for lunch and for the grid walks. We'll be back here from Kilani International Raceway, I would say possibly in about the next half an hour to 40 minutes. Uh, and we'll be starting things off as we started the day with the Volkswagen Rookie Cup.
Well, you can see the clear, the uh, grid clearing as uh, we've now, now had our lunch break. Had a chance for the fans to get up close and personal with a couple of their favourite riders and drivers. And uh, part two of the day's proceedings about to kick off here at Kalani International Raceway. Round one of the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. And it's race two of the Volkswagen Rookie Cup that are uh, making their way round from the back straight where they were lined up to uh, introduce Rookie Cup to the people on the back straight here at Kalani. Let's go and get you to introduce to you some of the uh, top contenders in Rookie Cup for 2024. So it's Volkswagen Rookie Cup's first attempt at the Kalani International Raceway. And I tell you, this is a circuit that uh, really brings out the, uh, the men from the boys. But you're all boys here, so I can't really say that. But uh, Judd, from your side, give us a little bit of insight where you've come from and uh, what you're looking to do with uh, Rookie Cup. So I've come from, I'm born here in South Africa, in Joburg, so we had to fly down here. I'm really hoping to win this weekend, practicing hard, trying, pushing the car as much as I can, doing everything I can really to win this weekend. And experience in motorsport, what have you had? So I've been karting and I've been driving a bit of rally, unfortunately I couldn't race because of my age, but yeah, just karting. Jaden, you've been in carts for a while now. It has to, at one stage, have a step up into something a bit bigger and better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the reason to go into Rookie Cup? Uh, just for the experience, to learn everything, know how the car works, how, how front wheel drive works, all that little thing. Is that the, the route you want to go in the future? Yes. So, saloon cars is your option. That's what you yes. want to be aiming for. Possibly touring cars and then uh, international. Yeah. Well, I know that we've seen some international stuff from you already. Divian. It's good to have you as well, buddy. But uh, also, straight from karting into a, a front-wheel drive, um, take us through what the learning curve has been like. Yeah, sure. I did this last year as well. So, yeah, this was a huge jump from karting because front-wheel drive, rear wheel drive, two completely different things. So, yeah, it's good. The Rookie Cup is a, an amazing opportunity to learn because you have Jonathan, Matt, and Daniel there teaching you all the way. So, it's, yeah, it's amazing. If I was you, listen to Matt, don't listen to Daniel, okay? Because he's got a kind of like a... No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Azir, how's things gone so far? Pretty good. Um, the jump from cars to cars, uh, I would say it's going pretty well. There's uh, no gears in karting. There's lots of gears in this car. So uh, what's it like learning to uh, get the gears right, get the braking markers right? Um, I mean, in that term, it's, pretty, it's been tough, but uh, it's a good learning step for me. And you also looking to go the saloon car route, or is this just a stepping stone for something bigger and better uh, somewhere else? For the experience, I would say. Okay, well, that's good. Josh, shortest man out there, probably the smallest man in motorsport at the moment in terms of national championship level, but uh, that doesn't take it away from any of the uh, big experiences you've had in karting as well. Yes, um, it's an extremely great experience driving cars compared to karting. Um, I'm just figuring out the car and learning all the different stuff with like the front wheel drive compared to the rear wheel drive and I'm just having fun this weekend getting to learn more and having a good experience. Who's your favourite coach? Uh, all of them are good. I like all of them. Okay, there you go. Very politically correct. Well done. Gentlemen, have, good, have a good time and uh, all the very best for the season. We'll speak to you again soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
Rolling to the line now for their second heat of the day is the Volkswagen Rookie Cup competitors who've just spoken to the five contenders for this year. Devin Nadu already taken race one victory earlier on, but Jaden Hurson, Judd Berthold, Zia Khan, and Josh Moore, I think, will be looking at maybe just up their pace ever so slightly. Coach Dan and Coach Matt at the back there, Matt Merton and uh, Daniel Rowe, will be uh, just uh, putting the pressure onto the back end of the field. Just to give them an ins the experience of what it would feel like in a real race when they step up, possibly from uh, their rookie year here in the Rookie Cup into Volkswagen Polo Cup. The Astron Energy Volkswagen Polo Cup is uh, the next stepping stone for a lot of these youngsters. You can see that Astron Energy Polo is already at the front end. Of course, he's the, the official safety car and pace car of Rookie Cup and uh, the Polo Cup. And from there, we will be heading into race two action. Just a final check on all of the uh, wheels there. You can see some of the guys just tightening those wheel nuts, making sure that they're all tight, everything good to go. Divya Naidu will be certainly looking to go again, as well as he did in the first one, having taken the victory in that first heat. He'll be a tough man to beat, though, because uh, he opened up a little bit of a margin over everybody. There was a couple of incidents. Judd Berthold, of course, going off the circuit, having to come back from the uh, back of the field. And we're now looking to make up grounds and hopefully give himself a chance of a at least a podium for the second one and potentially maybe even higher up on the steps of the podium for a race win. Looks like a couple of guys just adjusting positions there. Somebody not in the correct grid position by the looks of it. Not quite sure what went on there. These are all carters, so they should all know how to line up on the grid, but it uh, looks like they've just adjusted something slightly there for whatever reason. Unfortunately, we don't have communication to the COC, so I'm not 100% sure why we've had a, a grid adjustment. Maybe just taking up the wrong position on the grid there. But uh, now they get ready to go, and they'll still have one more lap 
to uh, do their warm up, get some heat into the rubber, get those Dunlops ready to fire off the line for race two of Volkswagen Rookie Cup. Naidu Khusen, Ozil Khan, Judd Berthold, Daniel Rowe, Josh Moore, and Matty Merton is how the first one ended up earlier today. Looks like they've moved the coach up as well. As I said, Divian Nadu is the man that they've got to try and catch, if possible. He's kind of started his Rookie Cup career the same way we saw a certain Saad Variawa, Saad Variawa do in his rookie year in the Gazoo Racing Stable. So plenty of options here for youngsters that come out of karting to make their way into saloon car racing full-time. This is certainly... Uh, a big battle that's going to be fought all year long between these five drivers. Possibly more drivers joining as we get into the season. Seeing the value that uh, Volkswagen have brought along from the Rookie Cup point of view. To ensure that they can uh, sow their seeds here and hopefully reap the benefits of it in their motorsport careers later on. In whichever format they decide to go into. Most of these kids have decided that the saloon car route might be the way to go. And what we've seen in the past from previous champions out of Polo Cup, it certainly seems to be the way to go. From Polo Cup to the SA Touring Car Championship or possibly even straight across to some international prospects that have been opened up by the likes of the Funderlinders and the Peppers of the world. And uh, chances there for our drivers, if they've got the same kind of prowess, to be picked up by those teams and continue the... Uh, special treatment our South African drivers get because of the skills that we have um, in these cars and in the cars all around the country, particularly here on the Extreme Festival. So we've got a uh, couple of comments that have been thrown out there, of course. Yes, we are aware of the slightly slower internet speed that's been provided. That's not uh, anything to do with us, unfortunately. It seems to be a country-wide issue with uh, some problems with the lines coming into the country. Um, so we do apologize there is a slight delay and a little bit of lag every now and again but we certainly uh, are still providing you all this action and uh, a lot of this action of course will also go out on a television post-production show in about two weeks time on Ignition TV so uh, if you missed some of the stuff today you can always rewind the live stream feed and go and watch it again but uh, do us a big favor please and pass on to all your friends and fans and family all around the world the uh, race action here from round one of the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. So Naidu lines up along Jaden Kursen, alongside Jaden Kursen, and it's uh, Judd Berthold and Azir Khan who are on the second row. Josh Moore and Daniel Rowe are the third row. Joshy there in the number 17 car. It's got the sort of turquoise blue livery on it. They've all got some lipstick and... Uh, some wing mirrors that are painted slightly differently. That's the, the one differentiating factor of the cars if you're looking at them head on. And then some of them also running some of their own personal sponsors. They've given, been given a, a small side so sponsors, a bit of uh, exposure. Stand by now as we get into race two of Volkswagen Rookie Cup. Five second board goes up. The lollipop man moves his way off the circuit. The lights are about to go on. They're off and we're racing down towards turn one. It looks like it's a good start there from Divian Naidu again. Getting off the line is exactly what you need to do and stay in front if you're on in the hole shot, but didn't quite work out for him. Certainly a much better start though, coming from uh, the back of the pack there. And a couple of drivers that were just not up to pace off the start line. And looking for a chance now to run in towards turn number two. As they get up into turn two, there comes the 27 machine. And Judd Bertolt starting to put his way through. It's Azir Khan who got the drive off the line and leads in towards turn two and now leads into three as well with Jaden Kursen on his tail. Divian Naidu, I think, might have moved up though into. No, he's still third. So he hangs on to third place at the moment. So Kursen second. 
behind Khan. Nadu losing some ground. Maybe just not getting the gear shift right off the line. But he definitely dropped off that whole shot position and dropped by the wayside. Car on the sideline there. And uh, coming into the back straight for the first time. We'll try and pick up on who that car is. It uh, doesn't look like it's... It's a Zia Khan. It was the leader. The Zia Khan making a mistake into turn two into Castrol. And unfortunately got it all wrong. <coughs> and he's now dropped out of the race completely. That's allowed Divian Nadu to sneak up the inside once again of Jaden Kursen into Fostron Corner and finds a way past getting into the lead of the race as they come to complete the first lap. So uh, fights on there of note as we kind of expected with this category. And these young carters of course have been involved and in racing with each other for uh, a long period of time. Some of them up close and personal, some of them in different classes but now all combined into one big Exciting new category with Volkswagen Rookie Cup. Nairu Berthold and Daniel Rowe. Daniel Sun and Manny Merton are three and four. Josh Moore in five. Khan in six. Jaden Hurston looks like he's also gone off track. Maybe at the same incident. Maybe there was a touch there between the two leading cars. Because Hurston was really close to the lead car. So I would assume there must have been some kind of argy-bargy or a, a small incident that uh, took place there between uh, Uzia Khan and Hurston but now they oh, I think it might have just, it actually might have just been a transponder issue there so apologies there to Jaden he's still in fourth place I did see him drop right to the bottom of the of the uh, timing monitor so I think it might have been just a, a signal issue there from our timing as well so not only affecting us in terms of what we can bring you on the live stream but uh, affecting the timing as well it's become a bit of a nightmare this uh, this uh, logistical issue with our internet provision providers anyway we go down towards turn five with uh, the lead car in the hands of Divian Nadu as it was all race one long he was literally at the front from the start he has been at the front now from the second lap so he didn't lead the first lap he's led everything else so far and Judd Bertolt in second place trying to close him down there's about a second gap between them as they cross the line so let's see if there's any changes there here they come. No, Bertolt still about a second off there. 0.855 to be exact between himself and the lead car. But uh, right behind him is Daniel Rowe applying a little bit of pressure. And it looks like uh, Matty Merton wants through as well. So Merton and Rowe onto the back end now of the second place car there. Judd Bertolt applying the pressure so that the Bertolt can get used to the fact that when he's in a bigger pack of cars, that's the kind of pressure that usually comes. And it can come from not only two cars in the form of the two coaches out there, Daniel Rowe and Matt Merton, but it can also come in the form of about six to eight cars if you look at what happened in the first heat of Polo Cup. Running wide slightly there is uh, Bertold. I want to do that too often. He did that in race number one and ended up in the kitty litter, and dropped him right to the back. And unfortunately, that only allowed him to finish up in fifth place overall. So he's got to be weary can't push too much otherwise he will be losing out but if he doesn't push hard enough you can see the gap that Divian Nadu is able to open up and now he's got Jaden Hurston up close and personal for some uh, possibilities of a change up there so Hurston into the mix Daniel Rowe drops out of it Matt Merton goes hunting for Josh Moore I'm gonna try and help Josh get up to uh, pace with these guys at the front end there's the exact battle I was just talking about there is Joshy at the back of the pack with Matty Merton on his on his uh, 12 o'clock high, but uh, just waiting for him to join him and get into the mix and fight it out. Naidu, Bertold, and Kirsten, your top three. Five lapper now, and we've done three of them. Uh, eight lap a bigger bottom we've done three of them so five still to go so five more laps of this to go inside line possibly there from Daniel Sun trying to uh, put Kirsten under a bit of pressure Jaden soaking that pressure up nicely he's got a bit of liquid molly sponsorship by the looks of things that he's picked up there to help him through this season as they head up towards turn number four Sorrel Sweep of Walmsbury as it was previously known. 
in these front wheel drive polos and of course these are just the one litre polos that they run in this category not the GTIs that run in the Polo Cup Championship but a little one litre turbo still also an awesome car to drive and also what it's going to teach these uh, youngsters is uh, how to maneuver through uh, what would be turbo lag on uh, the coast and then the additional power that comes in uh, up on the high felt when we go to the tracks like Swatkops. So it's teaching them all the vital skills on uh, how to handle themselves on a race car and part and parcel of what we do here or what Rookie Cup does is also teach them how to handle themselves off track as well. So there's media training, there is uh, sports and fitness training as well that goes into this Rookie Cup package. Giving the chance to these guys to learn how to handle themselves as racing drivers at a top-notch professional level at the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. So in this national round of the Extreme Festival Championship, we've got two rookie classes providing us with the potential future stars of the motorsport world. We have the premier single-seater premier motorcycle and two premier saloon car category classes in the country. And we have the premier all one make series category as well. So showing you what Extreme Festival is doing to ensure that we provide you with uh, SA's top-notch motorsport action at all times. Nairu from Bertold, no change there. But uh, Gursen's just not able to bridge that gap onto Bertold. These cars are very evenly matched. Chatted to Daniel about it during the Polar Cup race and he said they are literally almost exactly the same. They, they can't get them 100% identical. Of course, that will be a miracle if you can get that right on every single race car. But they are as close as you can want them to be. And it comes down to your driver skill to ensure victories like Divya Nadu is looking for here in race number two. So we're past the halfway stage. We've completed five. And we're now into the last three laps of Volkswagen Rookie Club. At this point in time, Divian Nido looks like he's going to be the man who is not going to be bettered in this category, which is uh, an awesome achievement on his first time and uh, first outing. Um, looking at lap times as well, just to pick, pick up. If we look at how things went in race number one, Nido was quickest, if I'm not mistaken. No, he wasn't. He was second quickest. 34 sevens. He's doing 34 eights at the moment. Uh, Judd Bertolt doing 34 sevens. That's close to the time that we saw out of Divian Naidu in the first heat. But uh, quickest of them all was Jaden Kursen. He actually got down to a 34 seven dead. Uh, 35s, 38s, and uh, no. And if I look at how that turned out, Judd Bertolt actually in the closing stages of race number one threw in a very, very hot lap of a 34 six seven nine to be the fastest man on track so we're getting down into those 34s but they're all in the 8s, 7s and 8s uh, so possibilities that we might see the times dropping even more it's like they might, as I said we uh, we keep having a small issue there on Jaden Hurston's pickup on his transponder he uh, picks up every now and again and sometimes he doesn't go across the line and get picked up he has to be then manually entered in to bring him back up to where he sits in 3rd place on track and on the last pass is 35-1, 35-1, 35-2. So that's as evenly matched a car as you'd possibly want in a championship of this nature. They're on lap number seven, the penultimate lap at the moment. Naidu pulling away from Bertold. Bertold from Gerson. Daniel Rowe and Matty Merton, of course, they get DN DQ'd after the race. They're just out there to put in extra cars in amongst these drivers so that they learn how to deal with traffic they learn how to deal with pressure all around them either from the back and from behind or both 
Josh Moore, 38 nines. He's still got a little bit of learning to do there, the young Carter. One of the smallest drivers that we've got on the Extreme Festival Tour for 2024. Tiny little guy out of karting, but uh, certainly a massive heart and someone that's going to be a force to be reckoned with once he gets to grips with these cars, as he was in karting. So, Tivien hangs on for now. He's got about just under a second over Berthold. 34 9, 34 7, 34 35 1 from Jaden Hurson. Naidu is the man to catch though in these last couple of hundred meters. They're onto the final lap, and Bertold is trying. He was quickest on that last pass, or a personal best for him, I should say, wasn't the quickest driver out there. That was Daniel Rowe, but he doesn't count. Berthold on a 34.776. That's the fastest lap out of this race. So not quite as quick as the 34.6 as we saw out of him in the first one. But once again, he'll be looking to take that mantle of the fastest driver on track, even though he might not get the victory. The lap times are always a great indicator as to how you've got to grips with cars and if you're able to drive them at the, the pace that's needed. And it certainly looks like the first three on track have done just that. Bit of work to be done there, I think, for Azir Khan and for Josh Moore. But uh, we saw potential out of Azir leading things out initially in the second heat and unfortunately making a small error into turn two that uh, took him off track completely. They're onto the final lap, they're onto the final straight, and the chequered flag is on standby for the second race of Volkswagen Rookie Cup. Or 2024. Divya Naidu with two wins out of two starts. Judd Bertol, second place, upping his game as he said he would into second place and beating Jaden Hurston to the line. Daniel will come through for fourth, but of course he will be DQ'd and not put into the classification. And is this a change up? Yes, it is. Josh Moore getting through there on Matty Merton, but Merton applying the pressure as he's supposed to do as the coach to show him that pressure comes all the way to the checkered flag and you cannot keep give up concentration until you see that black and white checkered flag come out. So Merton pushing Josh Moore to the line and Moore will come through for a top five finish in Volkswagen Rookie Cup race number two at round one of the Extreme Festival. We move on to Sunbed ZX and our Masters Cup. They are going to be on circuit pretty shortly and we'll get some... Uh, Action from our two wheelers, the premier motorcycle racing championship in the country in a few moments' time.
Alrighty, so we are into race two now of the Sunbed ZX and our Masters Cup. Clint Munton is joining me in commentary again for race number two. Clint, if we look at the results from race one. Yes. Uh, looks like there's going to be some uh, fun again. Oh, there you go. You got your own little commentary booth. There we go. It's cool. Guys. Nicely done. But yeah, uh, Seller, Fenter and Westman were your top three in class A. Class B, it was Van Bredaar beating out Piers Knut for second and David Veringa for third. In class C, JLR beat out Jason Lamb ahead of Brian Bontekunik. So on their warm-up lap now, getting their final bit of uh, heat into the Bridgestone rubber that is provided for these motorcycles to race on. All ZX-10s of various makes and uh, marks, but um, the Kawasaki is the brand. ZX-10 is the, uh, the make, but uh, there's a whole different variety of ZX-10s out there from uh, different uh, age groups in terms of the years and categories that, uh, or years and times that these bikes were uh, on screen and of course uh, on time to have some fun now on track so um seller basically on a new bike i would say he would have to a be absolutely yes. and, and a couple of riders behind there possibly on the the newer machinery i know definitely one of them would be westman but there is a couple of elderly type of machinery out there as well one particularly is uh, that man there on 63 i'm 63's um uh Savisa Temba saying to me that uh, he unfortunately he didn't get his bike ready in time so he had to borrow some machinery right so uh, on a borrowed bike with his uh, plastics on is uh, not the most ideal thing to do but he's out there and will at least score some points absolutely i, I think some of the older model bikes at uh, kalani in particular um fairly competitive Hein heinz mcmahon's on one uh, the gen 4 i think that's like a 2011 model which is part of the reason this series is so successful is all the bikes in the Kawasaki right from 2011 to 2016 have their strengths and weaknesses and at different circuits some of those strengths and weaknesses play into the riders hands and I think Hein is making the best of the 20, 2011 bike it's really good around the circuit a little bit down on horsepower but I think the chassis on that bike's really good and at, at Kalani today in particular second heat really windy I think the extra horsepower of the newer mm. models is going to make it quite a handful for the guys well just as you're saying there Graham Van is actually on a brand spanker 24 so uh, he's battling to get it to work so uh, it might not be the ideal machine to be on you kind of want to have sort of a, a machine that you that you kind of used to so he was probably saying to himself I should have brought the old bike down in case of emergencies they've battled a lot to get it to work 100% right so let's see if he's able to get a little bit higher up that's possibly why he dropped back so far in that first heat and wasn't in contention at the front end where we expected him to be I think you're right and I think some of it's also the newer bikes a little bit more of a handful um, and hmm. the older guys struggle with the extra power well lights up we go down to turn one again this time it is Seller looking to try and get the whole shot but he gets eaten up by about six bikes into turn one I think Seller might be just looking to have a little bit of fun here in the second heat he was all on his own some in the first one so maybe he's just dropping back into that pack going to play with the boys for a little bit and then decide to go uh, it doesn't look like there's any, any worries at all there for uh, the 39 bike of Alan John Fenter who was leading into turn two until Seller snuck up the inside and then was followed through by uh, the killer Westman so Trevor Westman up into second AJ into third um, resume positions from race one absolutely and Hein McMahon in there as well hmm. Which, on four uh, in four <laughs> absolutely yeah and as I said I think his bike is the right bike to have um, today uh, with the wind in the second heat uh, a lot of the guys are complaining it's really windy in Cape Town I said no it's just Cape Town that's how it is we always race in the wind in the second heat I was going to say yeah at, at this stage of the day it's certainly going to be uh, the wind that plays a big factor even the car guys were, were talking about it I got some information coming to me via the online uh, formats that we're using and social media that we use people chatting on all sorts of formats that's the, the nice thing about what we do at Clint as well is it's interactive the uh, the commentary because we've got comments flying on our Facebook page we've got comments on our YouTube YouTube page okay. and you've got guys sending you information via whatsapp etc telling you stuff that you might not see on the screen right. and allowing us to interact with them the whole time and tiny spit box which is a, uh, a local man here that does some uh, t tells us all about uh, what's happening in terms of the wind for the SA touring cars right so if it's affecting the cars it'll certainly be affecting the bikes a absolutely and I think the guys are really struggling coming out of turn three uh, everybody running wide there, front end becoming very light. So I think you've got to have your have your wits about you in this heat. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. But you can see them all sorting themselves out now in that mid pack to the back end of the field. Nice little fight that sort of started to rage there, led out by Van Bredaar. 
Oh, Entercott up the inside of Brian Bontekun. And Bontekun getting caught out there ever so slightly by opening up the door. So Entercott is on the move. Martin Petzold's in the house as well with us here as well. Good to see him here. I'm sure he's prepping somebody's suspension at some yeah, point wonder, in time. I wonder who's. Yeah, I wonder whose suspension he's sorting out there in the front end of that field. But anyway, let's take nothing away from that. Second place, kind of what we expected to see again, but this third place battle, a bit better. Jason Nam up the inside and now into what is going to be the four spot on the road ahead of Hein McMahon. So McMahon and Lamb fighting hard. That's the Class C leader fighting with uh, fourth place in Class A. Not and a, then a bit of a gap to Graham. Not a great start from uh, Indicott. I see he's behind Graham. Uh, expected more from him in this heat. Uh, he obviously didn't get off the start line very well, so he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, Dave Venter got certainly not where he wants to be, that is for sure. Seventh place is not a position he's used to running in. Uh, and we mentioned it in the first uh, heat of commentary as well, but in the second heat, just a reminder that Enter got has taken double victories here in this category in the past. So he knows this track well. Being a Cape Town rider, he should be able to get up there slightly higher than where he is right now. So whatever they did to maybe make some changes to get him to go forward, it's literally done the opposite. It's made him go backwards, unfortunately, there for Dave. Piers Knut, another one, top 10 again for him, Absolutely just behind amazing. Varinga. That's brilliant. And then the second pack there, LaRue, Christian Cavallo. We didn't mention him in the first one. Nice to see him up there too with Adrian, Adrian van Dalen. And Lubavala and Sana was in the top 10 initially. He's not quite there yet, but he's in that pack that's fighting for those final uh, double digits before we get into the single ones. Another guy that's impressed as well as Christian. Uh, yeah, I also thought he's he's doing well here, considering he's not written here. Yeah, Caravello is a, is a man to watch out for, that is for sure. And sitting in 12th place just behind JLR, that's not a bad man to be behind. There's a lot of experience there. Absolutely, and he's really quick for his age. Impressive around a circuit like this. It's hard work, mm. and it's really physical. You've got to be fit, and you've got to be really spending time in the gym if you want to wrestle a ZX-10 around this track in the wind. Yeah, JLR, of course, is the oldest man out there on the track, if I'm not mistaken, in the current crop of riders. But one man that is notably missing, other than yourself sitting next to me on the track, is is uh, Peter. Not here. Absolutely. So, uh, unfortunately, not making it out here for this first one. Maybe just a, a budgetary thing. But the Jongon Josie Kawasaki, I'm sure, will be back by the time we get to Kyle Army and into uh, round number two. Maybe he doesn't have the budget to do the, the, the away rounds. I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to him, but I'd be keen to find out why he's not here today. Hmm. I kind of thought he'd be here because uh, after finishing up so high in the standings and taking, I think he took the overall victory at the final round, if I'm not mistaken, at Swatkops last year. Right. He's, uh, he's certainly a man that is sorely missed here on that John Gonjozi Kawasaki. But hopefully, as I said, it might just be the away rounds that he doesn't want to do and just going to concentrate on Swatkops, Kyle Army and uh, potentially any of the other up uh, north tracks that we race at, Red Star being one of them. There's your man, our friend, King, Kawas King Price Kawasaki. Uh, seller already up to, uh, what is it? Just waiting for the lap timer to come through there, but it's it's going to be a good eight eight or so seconds ahead of uh, the big charge from Trevor Westman and Alan, Alan John Fenter. Six and a half, there we go. That's Confirmation on that. I know, I know Trevor was making some changes to the bike for mm -hmm. the second heat, and obviously with the wind coming up, not sure whether he's done the right thing. Oh, here we go. We'll Here's see, a uh, mid-pack battle. Safisa getting a bit better there, so they must have tweaked that slightly. But he's fighting hard, as you can see there, in that mix, Dieter Hazeman. Hazeman fighting at the moment there as well. We With go a little Aubrey bit there. Aubrey there, and then uh, Jonathan Schwerin in there too. Yeah, now Aubrey, I don't think, has been here for many years, so quite impressive from him too. Hmm. Also, a rider to watch out for, because last season on a few occasions was uh, in the mix for uh, podiums in the classes, so certainly a man who uh, can, uh, can pedal a motorcycle he around can some put tracks. It together, yes. Yeah. This is a nice little five way fight here, though. Schwerin now currently down on Aubrey. Golgotchi in there as well. Sivo, we mentioned him in the first one, finishing up nicely and, and uh, a third overall in the, in the class there for him, so certainly knows what to do. Uh, on that machine of his, uh, MTech Racing, of course, some of the guys that are prepping that bike for him. Now we come a bit higher up in the pack and into a man you mentioned in the first one there. Um, nice to see, of course, the changes all the way through the field there. But Byron Rothkull just yeah. behind Gerard Frey and Apana. We didn't see him at all in the first one. No, and uh, Apana as well. I don't think has ridden here for many years. So I think Apana's also taken a while to, to settle into the circuit. Mm. And he says he was a bit concerned about the win for the second heat. But yeah, looks like a good showing from Apana. 
Oh, nice run there from Apanaganapati here. Here we go, a little bit higher up as well. Once again, picking up on a couple of the riders that have started to get into those famous little packs that uh, are in the mix for zx 10 Masters Cup. And it's exactly what we expected to see. Lubavala and Sana there fighting with Vandalen. And it's JLR that leads them out. Cristiano Caravello there just behind as well. So a uh, nice little uh, four-way fight. And that's for just outside the top ten. And then just squeeze a little bit more to catch Canute. They're going to be in that top ten mix and possibly looking for single digits. Yeah. I know um, after heat one, uh, Luba Barlow said to me he was struggling with arm pump. Yeah. Literally trying to fight the bike around the circuit with the wind. I think he's going to suffer a little arm more. Arm pump in Cape year. Town? I've never heard of that in my life. No I, ways. No wind in Cape Town now there, is it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I think even uh, eight laps on an old 750 of uh, the late great Craven Ramsey's around here, and I felt that arm pump. It's a very bumpy circuit, particularly on a motorcycle, so you're going to feel it a lot more, because um, even with gurus like the man alongside us here, that suspension uh, can only do so much to stop that bike from wiggling around and uh, you having to hang on to it, Absolutely. particularly in the windy conditions. Yeah, I see a change up near the front there. AJ Fenter got ahead of Trevor. Yeah. And, and it looks uh, like Hines that, got away from Jason Lamb as well. Yes, he has. Yeah. Th those are pretty good lap times from Hines, considering he's on a 2011 motorbike. Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about There's that. There's a lot of consistency there, as I said to you. I think that bike's a little easier to ride in the wind and over the bumps. Apana Ganapathy starting to close that gap down as well, once again, as we, as we mentioned. But as you see, just out of the turn two, into turn three, that's where the wind just, just picks the motorcycle up. There's nothing you can do about it. I actually felt it uh, over the last four days. I was out on a on a DL uh, adventure bike, and uh, on numerous occasions in the passes, we got uh, picked up by the wind, and it's just there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You got to hang on and just try and correct the motorcycle. Absolutely. Coming up on Harwood now, the leader once again lapping into the uh, the tail end of the field, and Seller goes through Arnie and Harwood. Hats off to that man. He continues his relationship with the series with TRP and uh, the boys from Bridgestone Tires helping us out. And, of course, putting his money where his mouth is as well as climbing on the motorcycle and having some fun with us, too. Uh, absolutely. He loves his racing and, and, and doesn't matter where he finishes, he's at every race. Yeah, that's the way. Aubrey's moved to the front end of this little pack now as well. So Aubrey Marais starting to up his uh, pace ever so slightly. And uh, getting away now from Dita and Steve Golgotchi. They're not done yet, I don't think. Golgotchi trying to close that gap now. Bringing along Schwerin and not too far behind that is Temba. So Savisa Temba, Schwerin, Golgotchi and Hazeman. Uh, that could still be a bit of a fight that has to happen. Here we go a bit, bit further back there. Once again picking up on the 21 bike. And uh, just behind him there. Uh, pushing hard on that mad magic Kawasaki. It's, uh, oh man, just battles all through uh, the field as we see at almost every single round of zx 10 Masters Cup. N nice to have a fairly big field here. Although ZX-10, there are a lot more riders that compete in the, in the Gauteng rounds. Yeah. Would be nice to see more of them here, but definitely a good showing today. 23, 20, Yeah, I think it's 26 20, in total. 26 we, in we, total. We lost one in the first heat, yeah. Okay. So 26 bikes on the grid, that's really good. Back up to second place is Alan John. Westman got through for a little while there, but I think the traffic is now uh, a big factor. This is uh, blue flags waving all the way around the field. Coming up on the 7-4. Oh, and that's on Harwood. Sorry, that was on Harwood again. So uh, now coming up a little bit further up that pack and getting through. I think this see. is going all the way to the line. Yeah. Those two are not done yet. They're certainly not done at all in any form of uh, racing. Current Frey also having a good run, as I said, ahead of Byron Rothwell. But Frey under a bit of pressure now. Yeah. Looks like Rothwell's turned the pace up to maybe uh, finish up strong here in the closing stages. A lot of guys do that, uh, particularly in these windy conditions. Yeah. They'll set the bike up so that it's got later race pace than earlier race pace. I think it's also a little bit about conserving your energy, yeah. not getting too tense on the bike, relaxing so that you've got something left for the end. Uh, it's tw 12 reps around the circuit. Oh, oh. Van Bredo, out of shape! Oh, and yeah. that's a huge one. Oh, great. Graham Van Bredo oh, down at turn five. Crash. Uh, we mentioned he was battling with that bike at the start yeah. of the race, and you can see that's how hard he is battling. Yeah. He's a little shaken there, but uh, fortunately he stood straight up. Just checking that everything's working. You can see him just walking away and despondent. He was under a bit of pressure to get through there on Jason Lamb. The uh, championship battle from last year, uh, I think, might have caught him out there on the new bike. Absolutely. I don't think that new bike was set up perfect for today. He had a long way to go to get it set up right, and I think that's... Enticott. Enticott with a problem, a problem as well. Problem as well, yeah. So uh, 
that must have been right from the get go because he just wasn't he just wasn't in it right. Yeah, from have the, a look at right this. Just beginning. out of shape. Oh, yeah. And the problem is at this point, I mean, Martin Petzl will speak uh, from experience. I don't know if you've gone down yet, Clint. So I don't know if you haven't. Wanna, no. F- and that's not a place you want to go down. Not a place you want to go because, down. Because no. uh, on on numerous occasions, uh, Martin I think was involved just behind the big one that we had there with Russell Wood yeah. and uh, uh, Trevor Crooks, yeah. where the two of them went over the bars and nearly ended up on the wall. Yeah. Um, the, the issue is that when you do get out of shape at turn five, you've got that little lip. Yeah. And that lip. Just, just kicks you and throws you. you. Yep. There's nothing you can do about it. And that's yep. exactly what happened with Graham there, unfortunately. Not a nice place to come off. Yeah. Happy to see him up and walking away. Yeah, he's not going to be happy about that, though. Brand not new Kawasaki down the road. Yep. He's not what you want. Golgotchi closing on Hazelman. As the leader goes through there, Kinsella, he is on lap, what's it? He's on lap 10, I think. Yeah, he's on lap 10 of 12. So he's got two more to go. Yeah. And lapping up now, up into sort of sort of 15, 16, 17th place that is bike, where Seller's got that to. That bike looks like it's on rails. Seller's got yeah. that bike really well set up. So there's uh, back of the pack there. Coming through with the old Lorenzo Moon Helmet on there. <laughs> <laughs> when he was going to go and block the flag somewhere afterwards. The, the wheelie king. Down into the breaking point. Varinga now starting to close things down and having a bit of a fight of his own. And also into that pack comes Caravello and Renatus Vinikak. They haven't been able to do anything about Pierce Knut. He's got away. He's literally all on his own from there in seventh place. Yeah, he's a, he's a hell of a fit guy. So I don't suspect him backing down off that mm. those times. So I think he's away from them. Look at the body language. You can see he's not done yet. No, he's, he's still not trying done. to hunt down Varinga and Bontekunen. Absolutely. So Varinga and Bontekunen's days could be numbered if that uh, body language has got anything to do by uh, Knut's side of things. Whoa. Big lift up from the wind there. For uh, That was the fallback of... of um, Hein McMahon, Slucky had a huge moment there coming out of turn five. As he lifted the bike up, you can see that we yep. just picked him up, just kept him in a bit of a, a flag wave, you would say. Absolutely. If you look at Piers' times, I think he's he's in the hunt for, for seventh year. Mm. Uh, sorry, for six. Yeah, look, he's a second quicker. quicker absolutely. At yep. least a second quicker than the two guys ahead of him. So Varinga and Bontekunen could be in trouble. Bontekunen are going to have to pull something out of the hat. Howard, here we go. This is the one we just be talking about right now. There's Bonte, there's Varinga, there's Knut. Into turn one they go. So the juggernaut trying to close down there on that Jag Power Products machine. Oh, Brian Bonte and yellow flags waving. That's just the, the, the down rider here. That's Graham Van Bredaar. Uh, your champion has gone down in race two of his championship year. And that is certainly not what Graham Van Bredaar wanted at this point in his racing season. Second race of it. The flag is ready and out for Seller. He makes it two out of two. He'll be happy with that. But of course, he's kind of all on his own some there. There's not really an answer coming out yet yeah, no. from Alan John or yep. Trevor. And it looks like Wesley's got Trevor second. Yeah. Second, yep. AJ comes looking down on the left-hand side. Hmm. I wonder what that could issue could have been. He had a big look down the left-hand side like of the bike yeah, eh? yep. as he went across the line. Yeah. So I know that uh, on a few occasions it's another nice race for Hein. Yeah, for sure. Hein McMahon getting through there and wrapping things up there for fourth place. Jason Lamb had the pressure initially, but uh, it all went away in the end yeah. when we lost uh, Graham Van Bredaar. Yeah, and, uh, and then it's uh, Bonte who's going to yeah, come through for second place in Class C. Varinga, very good. Yeah, nicely done. Varinga from Piers Knut, Lubavalo and Sana. And Christian Caravello, top 10. Nice run from Caravello for a top 10 finish there. Absolutely. That's the way I think it another lap or two, Varinga was, was looking strong. I yeah. think Brian would have been in trouble. So double one on that bike, multiple SA champion, and now looking to wrap up a ZX-10 R Masters Championship as well. As we come to the closing stages here, a couple more riders coming across there. I've got to say a massive thanks once again for joining me in commentary. It's a, it's a huge honor to have you here, Clinton. Of course, the knowledge that you've got of this track is uh, invaluable when we do this kind of commentary. So thank you for the input. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you back on track by the time we get the Kyle Army, bud. Absolute pleasure. I will ride again. I'm not sure whether it'll be Kyle Army. Um, if not, Kyle Army will definitely be back for next year. Fantastic. To do some races. Yeah, well, good luck with the youngsters as well. I know you've got all your youngsters racing. They must be uh, lo- loving life, having uh, a bit of prep from Dad and uh, some... some uh, Father and son time on yeah. a motorcycle around a racetrack. You yeah. don't get better than that. No, no you don't. I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying that, but missing this. So, oh, yeah, no, we'll I'm sure. see. No, I'm sure. But Th- thank you. Thanks for having me. I thank really you so much it. for the input there, Clint Mutton, joining me for commentary for Sunbed ZX and our Masters Cup. Up next, we move into the extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. We'll be back shortly.
So it's extreme supercars driven by Dunlop that are making their way around to the circuit for the second race of the day. We chatted to uh, Ari, we chatted to Jonathan Detoy, and we chatted to Stuart White in uh, the start of race number one. And uh, I was supposed to be joined by Heinz Berza in the first one, but uh, he didn't quite make it. Uh, he had to go and deal with a couple of uh, uh, youngsters downstairs that were complaining about bits and pieces that were out on circuit. But uh, all that sorted out now. He has joined me for race two. Heinz, uh, driven by Dunlop, you guys are now backing the series as well as backing, I think, every saloon car category in the, in the country right now. Yeah, we're in quite a few categories, obviously. So we've expanded our range a lot. So it's helped us to get into other categories because... It's a very good tyre and it's very cost effective, so we've just moved along and uh, partnered with a lot of the a lot of the different series, so especially with Extreme, it's been Extreme Supercars, it's been quite a, a feather in our cap, I would say, because these cars are demanding drivers, demanding cars, and it really, product, uh, really tests the, the Dunlop product to its maximum. We saw that in the first race, and of course uh, I mentioned it in the qualifying time that Stewart was able to put in. 107 is a is a very hot lap. He was only, I think, uh, 0.6 of his outright lap record um, ever in a race car. That was in that LMP2 Janetta that uh, him and Craig Jarvis piloted in the extreme uh, in the uh, endurance championship. So uh, now, windy conditions, maybe not ideal for lap records. No, definitely not. They're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna get to that time. I saw already in the first heat the wind. Actually, with these GT cars, the wind's messing them around, so the influences they're braking a lot. So the one way they're good, and the other when they come back down the straight, they actually lose a bit of time. Yeah. So we'll see what happens in the race. But the the race was good. I think it was exciting. It's brought the field closer, which is what we wanted. It's, it's exactly. It's getting the show going, and we've got we had over 20 cars in the grid. It hasn't been like that, I think, for many many years. Unfortunately, we lost Darby. Have you have you heard anything downstairs? Has he been able to sort out that uh, Wild Rose Gin uh, Lotus? Uh, I don't think so, no. He's also not pitting here. I think he lost some of his bodywork, which is so unique. It's not going to be easy for him to just yeah, sort make a out. plan. Can't do it with duct tape and zip ties. <laughs> no, not, not, <laughs> that time. not fixable, that one. So, well, we'll wait and see if he's able to roll out. And if he has, then they've done some miracles down at uh, his pit. But also another big factor, of course, not only the wind, um, the breeze across the circuit will uh, just cool the track down ever so slightly. So tire pressures are going to be vital. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be extremely vital. So we'll see what they do. And they're also learning on the tire. I think every time they go out, everybody learns, learns what you do with it. Because it's not like a, it's a Japanese slick, which is a very, very good slick. But they, they get raced in, in Eastern Pacific series. And none of these teams have information on it. So... So it's a, and, and certainly it's a, not information that's going to have track temperatures and, and ambient temperatures Africa, that we deal with. So yeah. it's a big learning curve for all the teams, but they've risen to the challenge, you know, and they've, they, some of them have got it more right than others. So, Well, oh, somebody's got it wrong on the Chris, start is Chris Budnick. Budnick, race one winner from Class A. Unfortunately, I mean, he been pushed off the circuit completely there, so that's a, that's a loss to uh, the field already. Uh, Stuart White and Franco on the front row. That might be a slight change up in our proceedings go now after yes. race one, having, having to come from, from 12th place. So something didn't quite uh, gel with Franco and the Porsche in qualifying this morning. Yeah, they did have a problem. They said for the gear selector, something, uh, the, the pressure tank, something popped off. Simple little thing. He's had, they've really had bad luck this year. At uh, Swartkop's the same problem doing qualifying. It's crazy, but... I think he's doing it for the crowd. He's, he likes coming from, from halfway down and just driving through the field. So. Sure, and he blitzed through the field. I mean, I think it was lap two. He was already up into that second spot. So just not enough uh, laps in hand to catch Stewie. But uh, on the second heat, I think there's a couple more to play with. So he might uh, have a bit of fun and games there. Those two cars basically out of the A-plus category and the GT3 cars lining up behind that. But even so, you know, I mean, I spoke to Jonathan yesterday. He says he, he always throws in the fact, no, I'm in a GT3 car. But a GT3 car is just as good on some circuits as the A-plus cars are. Definitely, yeah. They, they are very, very quick. What I liked about qualifying this morning is that the GT3 cars were within four tenths, five or six of them, which is really, really good to see. And there's, there's going to be some good racing this year in that category. Well, here we go. It's a race two of extreme supercars driven by Dunlop. And as they, as they make their way around Cape Town Corner, you've been in this situation many, many times. Mm. Race face time. The red mist is starting to rise. Uh, how's that goes up? How's that driver? How's that yeah. driver temperature feeling in terms of the heartbeat? Yeah, no, just because they're running on our tires, I get excited. So it's quite, quite interesting to see. So here we go. Yeah, but these cars are next level. So 
really exciting. And, and, and great to see the big field, as, as you mentioned. But here we go. Lights are on. It's up to Stuart White to dictate the pace. He's been in this scenario on numerous occasions, but not necessarily up close and personal with uh, Franco Scribanti as they head towards turn one. He'll have the inside line, but hello. He yeah. doesn't have the straight line speed. <laughs> inside line doesn't count when you've got that much uh, to, to, to play with. And oh, mid-pack goes Dane Angel. So exactly the same spot that uh, his teammate Jason Ibbotson went off in race one. Angel has gone off in race two. That might bring out the safety car, I think. I think he's stuck there. Looks like he might be. Oh, he might be stuck in the kitty there unless they can get him going. Nice new livery there for Ari as well, bringing a new sponsor on board, showing that uh, what you guys have done as uh, a partnership with this category and of course what we're doing on a on a live stream feed shows you that uh, sponsors are starting to show interest in motorsport yeah, again it is we as ATS are obviously also be involved in the series it's helped us together with Dunlop we always try and contribute as well because they're all our customers at the end of the day because we don't only sell tires we sell everything for a race car so it's very exciting for us to be involved as well down on the braking point, you can see Stuart White pulling away now from Jonathan Detroit. Silvio Scribanti, Aldo on the inside of Charlotte Ranges. Ranges in the Trofeo, so not quite the car he'd like to be in, I think. Sure. But uh, good to have him back on track. He missed the first round, so it's uh, important to get back and get as many points yep. as possible. As they go out of turn one, it is the Ranges that I'm keeping an eye on because he's... Uh, slowly but surely going to try and stay there I think with Aldo if he's able to and let Aldo just bridge that gap to uh, Silvio up the road uh, A plus car of course is Aldo's uh, GD3 car is Silvio's and uh, there you go once again just that mix up at the front between the uh, unlimited cars and the GD3 spec cars and showing you that they can kind of run within that half a second gap I don't see Trolila there or am I, am I missing him? Yeah, is not, not there either. either that's very strange because that car's running like clockwork Something must have happened down in uh, pit lane with that car for it not to roll out. So Lula Leclerc, of course, the into Africa mining man who's behind not only uh, Stuart White in second place, but his own car, the Lamborghini. Is that him rolling out now? Sounds like him, yes. Yeah, it is. There he is. Looks like it was a back right tyre issue in my ear coming through, so that's the reason why he's dropped back so badly. He's going to have to go back into pit lane and see if they can get that sorted out. Maybe a, a quick tyre change. He rolls into the pit lane. And just below us here in our commentary booth. Fastest man on track on that pass was Stuart White. Down to a 110 dead. Yeah. How long, how long do the tyres take to come into their own here? They actually, five, six, seven, eight laps. It takes a long time for them to come in. It was... They start in quite low, low tyre pressures and then as the temperatures come in, they, they do quicker and quicker lap times. Uh, the, only, the only issue you're going to have there, of course, is the fact that by that time you're into the traffic. Mm. So uh, it means that it sort of negates the opportunity that you might have to set a lap record if that's, if that's your target. Which I think it was in Stuart White's case once he saw that 107 yeah. in qualifying. Also, it's nice to see that there's some BMs running there from the local series. Yep. I uh, chatted to some of them this morning and they all doing PVs I've never seen before on, on the tyres, so I'm very pleased with that as well. That is fantastic. So Franco leads out, he's got uh, a small margin over Stuart White. Not really getting away, is he? No, but not also, Stewie's not closing him down, maybe Stewie's yeah. waiting. And let's see if he goes into back-to-back -back quick laps there. If he goes back-to-back, -back, then maybe he's turned the wick up slightly. But uh, remember, there's uh, quite a long way to go here, so... What's that? Jonakaro that they just passed it. Yeah. It was. It's Ricky Jonakaro they just passed it. So Ricky just gone out first. Zolila is in the pit lane right okay. now. Okay. So I think Rick's also had some issues there that had to be sorted out having to come into the pit box. I mistakenly thought it was uh, Zolila leaving pit lane because of the back end of that car looking similar in terms of the black livery. But it was actually Ricky Jonakaro and Zolila still down in pit lane now trying to be sorted out by the team. You mentioned the local guys. Also good to see uh, Doc Mark Veria out there too. Yes. Running in the, just outside the top 10. Very interesting car that. Mm. Sounds magnificent. Yeah, Not exactly a BMW car, uh, powered car, but uh, it's got a V8 Chevy or something engine in it. Something like that. And also runs pretty high up in their local GT and sports car category that they run here too. Yeah. Um, uh, those guys, of course, also uh, synonymous in terms of their ability to boost this field when we come down to a race like this. 
will bring 20 odd cars and there'll be another 10 to 15 cars down here already to to add to the spectacle that is extreme supercars it's really a pity that Darby didn't make it out because his car has been super super fast and I don't think he's been running it at full boost since yesterday so it would have been interesting what he could have done 109 172 there for Franco Scramanti he's just turned the wick up ever so slightly another another big spectacle to see of course is the return of, of Calvert and Moodley in the Mercedes-Benz those two have been piloting those cars in another championship and uh, decided that this looks like a, a place to make home for the Bigfoot Express Freight team. Yeah, and I think they're enjoying it. They, they, I've spoke to them earlier and especially Andrew, he's really enjoyed it to come back and he says on the tyre budget now this year it will allow him to race more because he, he does not a sponsored driver yeah. anymore. So he's very happy about that. Yeah, the, the relationship there between him and, and Sun Moody has always been a good one. They've uh, got a great friendship on and off the circuit uh, and of course when they're when they are fighting on track it's uh, every man for themselves but also nice to see that uh, you know when we get to east london that'll be a team to be reckoned with because on that uh, on that circuit those amg mercedes benzes have got some real good pace and could potentially be uh, even higher up than what there are right now yeah i've already seen the entry for kalami it looks really really good we've already got over 20 cars entered Three weeks before the race so that's going to be exciting as well that's brilliant stuff a couple of these guys as well particularly Darby the one we were just mentioning in the Lotus using the first couple of race meetings in the extreme supercars to prep their cars for the hill climb too so there's a method in the madness there and uh, yeah. didn't quite work out for Darby this time out but of course he will be looking to try and up his pace by the time we get to Kyle Army and I'm sure he will be there Charles Lorenzi's has certainly upped his pace he stayed with Aldo the whole way through and had not even get away too badly. But he stayed ahead of Andrew Colbert as well, which is an important factor there for him. Because he needs to get as many points as he can today to bring himself back up into at least somewhere near the top end of the championship after missing the first round. Yep. And also, uh, I see uh, Stuart staying with, with the Porsche. Because I think the Porsche, because of the power, I'm sure it, uh, it, it uh, works its tires a bit harder. So maybe Stuart towards the end of the race will have a chance to get back at him. It'll be very interesting to see on their lap times. I, I think what we see there with Stuart and with Franco is Franco will basically just maintain a gap. If he sees Stuart come up, he'll just yeah. up the boost slightly yeah, and awesome. get away from him. Just keep a ma maintenance of that gap and not allow the youngster through. Stuart White, of course, I mean, he's had experiences of note in various makes and marks all around the world, never mind here in South Africa. but. Great to be picked up by that uh, Inter Africa mining team and given a chance to to pilot that car because that little hurricane of his has also got a good turn of pace and if necessary and and if they wanted to they could also turn that into an A plus car they can, uh, that yeah. could be a, a front runner. I think at the moment I think the the GT3 field's looking very very good. I think they all want to race on an equal playing field. So I think that's why they they trying to grow that class as much as possible. Oh. Small mistake from Sun. Yep. Out of turn one, but back on track, putting a little bit of dirt and uh, some uh, some stones onto the circuit, which will be a concern, but uh, shouldn't be too much of a factor, I don't think. Uh, leaders are going to be heading down there now, as we see Jonathan Detoy coming through turn five. We just picked, uh, heard that Porsche in, in full flight. Oh, one of the BMs out of shape. Yeah, that's a big pity there for them. Renzo. Renzo, yeah. Renzo, unfortunately, making a mistake coming out of turn number five that's literally putting a wheel on the outside and looping the car out. i'm sure that's exactly what happened there with him but he's back on track so survived that one the two scrubanti boys or in fact all three scrubanti boys have been with me all week on the cape 1000 and uh, they were itching to get out of the, the prize giving as, as soon as possible i think there might just be a small issue there on the porsche because mm -hmm. that's a little bit closer than what he'd like to want to be I see Stuart's doing very consistent times. He's within point one of his quickest lap time and just keeping it consistent. So Stuart in the 109s, Franco's in the 109s and 110s, but a 110.9 is definitely not going to outgun a 195. 0.7 of a second there between the two cars. But as I, I say that, there you the go. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's that little boost button he's got. It's like a the, ha the happy button on his steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that button that uh, Michael Knight used to push <laughs> to get away from everybody. Super pursuit mode. And the, the sheriff pulls away from Stuart White. Uh, 189, quickest lap down. Wow. So, yeah, pressure gets put on and 
He answers with a hot lap. <laughs> yes, he does. That's the way to do it. Coming up. Various cars. Yeah, Veria. Long time Veria was, of course, um, running a, a V8 powered um, Shelby Can Am for, uh, for a couple of seasons as well. On a similar vein to what Roy Campos did. Took out the old V6, chuck the V8s in it, had lots of fun in it in the sports car days. But now changing up to that BM that's, uh, I think, as you go, I think you're 100% right, a Chevy powered BM. Yes. Yeah. But a beautifully built car as well. Inside line here for Franco. Going to try and put a little less pressure on himself by just putting a back marker between himself and and uh, Stewie. Stewie was hindered slightly there. And now it comes through to complete okay. lap number nine. It was interesting yesterday in practice, Stuart could do eight fours quite easily all day long, almost every single session. Yeah. I see now they're doing nine fours to show you how much these cars get affected by the wind. Yeah, the wind factor is a huge factor there. Yeah. I've got, I got information actually from Tiny as well uh, during the um, Super Cup race on Tate's car. He was on the radio back to the pit lane saying this car is just a nightmare in the wind. Uh, the understeer is bad, it's not turning. Yeah. The, the wing is uh, affecting the ability to go on a straight line. So, yeah, big, big factor with this uh, wind pumping across the circuit there, Hans, for sure. So one and two, Franco Scribanti, A plus, Stuart White, A plus. Jonathan Dutoy in third place is GD3, ahead of Silvio Scribanti and uh, Arnie Neverling in the Bobcat and uh, Goscor Audi R8. Aldo Scribanti is the fourth A plus car, on, no, third A plus car on track at this stage. So not a bad run there from him. And then we've got to go all the way down to seventh place, but first place in Class A, that's Charles Larangis. Class D being led up by Dr. Mike Maria. And Blunden leads out the Class Bs. Gianni leads out Class Cs. No, Jimbo leads out Class Cs. The other car that's gone missing there off that as I went through it. Oh, no, there is. I missed him, sorry. Gianni's up in ninth place there. Gianni, John Acaro, so Gigi into uh, the ninth spot. And that'll put him into third overall. Fourth overall in the GD3 spec cars as the flag comes out. So it's Franco Scribanti for the second win. Stuart White for the second, second place. And that's a sharing between the two of them. Be interesting to see how the overall goes, depending on how big that gap is between the two of them for that overall win for the day. I think Stuart's still ahead at the moment. So I he's going to have yeah. to, it's going to be a tight one for the, in the third race. Yeah. So it's Scribanti, White, Tatoy, Silvio, and Arnie Neverling with Aldo Scribanti. Ahead of Charles Rungis, Andrew Colbert, Johnny, uh, Johnny Giannacaro, and uh, the Doctor down in 10th place. Hans, once again, massive thanks to you, buddy. Thanks Absolute for the input pleasure. there. Nice, nice to have us. you have you up here. And of course, from a racer's point of view, not only from a, a sponsor's point of view, you know, you've uh, you've had your own experiences out there and multiple championships won in your own day. So to bring in the racer's aspect is always a big thing for us. And uh, that's kind of where we want to try and go with this commentary. You know, we don't want to just be sitting here with yours truly just uh, rambling <laughs> on. Because sometimes I normally get it wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> and then no. I get then I get into much. huge trouble. <laughs> but there you have it. That is Extreme Supercars power, uh, driven by Dunlop Tires courtesy of uh, the man next to me and of course ATS helping out with that sponsorship great to have him here on the, in the commentary as well we'll be back shortly on track with action coming from Polo Cup I think it is, we'll see you soon
once again at CEM Best Camp Formula 1600s that are making their way around the circuit to, to uh, get some heat into that rubber before we go to race action from the second heat of their uh, championship opening round here at round one of the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. We're at Kalani International Raceway in the Mother City, Cape Town. And a big surprise at the front end of the field in his rookie year is Jagger Robertson. He was on pole position for the first one. Didn't quite work out for him in that first one with a big moment heading up into Malmesbury and Sorrel Sweep. He eventually ended down in sixth place to Jagger Robertson, but he may have learned from that mistake and might be uh, up for a possible podium finish at least in the second one. Couldn't quite find a way through there on Alex Foss in the closing stages to get up onto the battle for the podium with Van Wheelie. Top three in race one were Shrin Naidu, Casey Ensel Smith, and uh, Jason Kutsia. And those four will be looking to resume action here in the second heat as well. Further back, nice little battle between Duncan Foss and Ian Schofield. Schofield eventually having to pull out of race one, handing the victory to Duncan Foss with Rick Morris in second and Ron Van Wheelie in third place in the Formula Fords, beating out uh, Alan Mayer. Karabo Malamela also had some problems. He unfortunately ran wide on the braking into turn one and ended up on the uh, exit road, but couldn't get the car fired up and re into reverse to get him back on track and had to eventually climb out the car. So hasn't worked out for him. Looks like it hasn't worked out for Zio Bongo Monconquana either, as Monconquana now is being pushed back into the new pit side of uh, Kilani Racetrack's main straightaway. And Sia's day looks like it might be done. They've removed him from the grid completely. If he can get it fired up, there's a possibility that he can maybe have a go and uh, start from the back of the pack, but that's not ideal for Monconquana, who in the first heat also had some issues. So it hasn't quite got according to plan there for Sia's first outing. Let's see if Jagger gets a better start this time. Lights go on. And we drop the hammer for lights out for race two. Once again, Jagger slow off the line. Hasn't quite worked out how that uh, race car gets off the line fast. But he goes uh, down into about sixth place into turn one alongside Alex Foss as they go through turn one. Whole shot goes to Casey Ensel Smith by the looks of it. So Ensel Smith hitting the front end ahead of Jason Kutsia who's right on his tail and now looking for a, a Cape Town line into turn two at Castrol. See if they can find a way past, but uh, not yet. He's got some work to do. Fly Sapphire car of Ewan Holzhausen runs wide and high out of turn two. Not ideal for him, that's for sure. But as they come down into turn three now, sorting things out there as they come into turn three, it's Casey Ensel Smith. Srinaidu is third. So man who won the first heat has dropped down to third place. So he's got a little bit of work to do to try and find a way through there on Ensel Smith and on Kutsia, his two rivals in this championship. Heading down into turn three is our uh, <laughs> recovery vehicle as uh, the lead cars head towards turn five. Late on the brakes is what you need to be done here as they get onto the brakes. Casey Ensel Smith is the latest and hangs onto that inside line. We see Jagger moving up one place and getting through there on Alex Foss and pulling slightly away from Foss. He's got Storm Lanfear up close and personal. So here we go. Inside line from Casey Ensel Smith. Perfectly positioned there. Watch out for a similar manoeuvre coming out of Jagger Robertson as they head towards turn one. Here we go. Okay, Robertson wasn't close enough. Van Wheely wasn't either. He was looking to try and sneak on the inside there. In the uh, inside of turn one, trying to get through there on Foss. Didn't quite make it stick. Could see a hangs onto the lead. Ensel Smith stuck in for second. Third place is Naidu. Robertson up into fourth. Mike Albusade note also a new man to the series there. He's not too far off the front pack, but not quite on the pace just yet is the youngster certainly a man to watch out for as will Renzo Ribeiro be in the ne very near future he's a uh, young uh, contenders coming into this category usually learn uh, the the ways of the the west when it comes to uh, Formula Ford and Formula 1600 racing pretty quickly and once they've got that uh, knowledge dialed in they can start doing things like we're seeing from Shrin Naidu like we're seeing from Jagger Robertson Naidu goes inside line, forces Jagger to take the high line and try to come on the comeback, but it'll put him on the outside, which is not the ideal line to be on heading into the sweep and onto the main straightaway. Shrin trying to close down there and get into the slipstream of uh, Casey Ensel Smith. 
Enzo Smith comes across and shuts the door. Shrin Naidu with Jagger Robertson right on his tail. On the outside, there's some magic little run here. And uh, I'll tell you something, these three drivers are all itching for potentially a championship this season because remember with this class how it works is the champion elect or the champion crowned has to now move on to bigger and better pastures cannot stay in this championship once you've won it you've got to move on to something else and of course what Troy Dolinchik has decided to do this year is a little bit of uh, concentration on his studies to finish up his matric and then just do a couple of the local races here at Kilon International Raceway just to keep his eye in but not uh, put the pressure on for a national championship for 2024. He'll be back in 2025, I'm sure, in some format of uh, racing. Jagger now trying to find a different line. He goes late into turn five, foster on corner, and now looks to try and come out for an outside line, because that's where he needs to be. And then slot across to the left-hand side of the track on the back end of Shun Naidu, right in the final part of the braking. To see if he can squeeze up the inside and uh, spoil the day there for third. Schofield leads out in the forwards. He's got a good margin over Alex Voss. And at this point in time, doesn't look like there's an answer there from anybody on Schofield's pace, unless something goes wrong. Little wheel on the dirt there for Jagger again. Still learning the uh, spatial awareness on that car. Maybe he's used to coming from saloon cars where he battled in a BMW in the BMW M Performance Racing Series for a long, long time. He's also been a multiple champion in the NX Legends, and they, of course, are a lot smaller car to play in, but also a single-seater. He actually represented South Africa as his uh, fellow family member did in Devon Robertson, who actually went on to win the World Finals in the NX Legends. So Jagger looking to do the same thing now. But uh, Jagger looking to go a slightly different direction in his motorsport career with his first outing here in single-seaters, having been a a seasoned campaigner in saloon cars. Enzo Smith now right up the uh, gearbox there. Looking for a chance to get through on Kutsia. Kutsia, of course, he's looking for his first victory ever. He missed out on in 2023. And he's now looking for a final one here. And his first one in 2024 in the last race of the day for our single-seater category. Is there a chance that we'll see that happen? Ron Van Wheely and uh, LT having a go here. Alan Mayer and Van Wheely looking for potentially fourth and fifth place in the Formula Fords. Ansel Smith was quickest on that last pass down to a 13... Oh, sorry, a 15-9. 15-9-5-4 for Casey Ansel Smith. That's the fastest lap of the race. We had a 15.977 from Jason Gutierrez, your leader. So it looks like Ensel Smith is now starting to just turn that wick up slightly, getting to the halfway stage of this race. So he realizes that he's got to apply a bit more pressure onto Jason Gutierrez and see if he can find here some kind of a way to break his spirit and get ahead of him. They're out of Fostron. Banked right-hander at the famous Cape Town corner. And across the line and heading towards turn one, Jagger Robertson pulls out on Shrin Naidu, trying to drive around the outside of Shrin with a bit of slipstream. Naidu hangs on, places the car perfectly, not giving any room there to Jagger to find a way past. They come out of turn number one, and once again, somebody putting a wheel on the dirt there. I think that might have been Naidu this time. Just tapping that outside line, just bringing up a ball of dust straight into the face of Nick Van Wheelie and Alex Foss. Storm Lanfia, there's a change up. Inside line from Carabo Malamela. Finding a way through there on Mikel Besaid note. Mikel Besaid note, of course, stepping into this category for the first time this season as well. So uh, another future prospect in terms of single seaters. Just behind there, also picking up on Renzo Ribeiro. And uh, he's just up ahead of the Formula Ford battle, which is led out at this point in time by uh, Ian Schofield. Jason Kutsia goes defensive. Casey Ensel Smith tries to go around his outside. Watch him try and cut back and get the drive. He'll try and squeeze out to the left-hand side to be on the inside line there on Jason Kutsia. But Kutsia is well aware of what his intentions are and comes across on him almost instantaneously. They all follow suit. 
down the left hand side of the main straightaway. So no room being given there at all from uh, the race leader Jason Kutsia to anybody in that uh, lineup. He went defensive literally out of the little kink onto the main straight and kept them all behind him. This four way fight might become a five way one. They have slowed each other down ever so slightly. Van Wheelie's times are in the 16 ones. So if they continue to fight, they might slow each other down enough to allow Van Wheelie to join the party. No one's going to party with Schofield. He's disappeared. Look at that. He's got the entire front straight ahead of second place, Alex Foss. I beg, I, I beg your pardon. I was about to say that, y'all. Alex Foss's dad, Duncan. <laughs> Apologies on that one there, Dunks. So Duncan Foss in second place behind Schofield Morris in third and Van Wheelie is four as they go down into the right-hander at Fostron. Cape Town Corner has uh, had its fair share of action today including a big crash from Go Graham Van Breda. Hope he's okay. Just waiting for information to be brought back to me but I think uh, I would have got a message by now from Clint had there been any problems. Problems are for Casey Ensel Smith and the problem is he cannot find a way through on Jason Kutsia. He's tried now for the last six laps to find a way past on the leader and has been found wanting. And the same thing applies there to Jagger Robertson on Shrin Naidu. Storm Lanfia hangs on ahead of Jörn Holzhausen. Karabo Malamela now got through and leaving Mikhail Besaid note behind him. Foss battling, really having a tough time of it here in the second heat of the Formula 1600. So Alex Foss at this point in time in 10th place overall. That's a man who was winning races last year into the closing stages. So a tough time of it for today for Alex Foss, that is for sure. Jason Kutsia, those doing it all right. And he's going to try and hang on for a victory here. That's Morris from Van Wheelie. Van Wheelie from LT. So Alan Mayer just behind Van Wheelie. As the first four come out of Fostron, heading to complete another lap. We're going to complete lap number eight. Two to go. Eight done and two to go for Formula 1600s. Are oh, we going to see a little bit more of an attack now from Casey Ensel Smith, Shrin Naidu, and possibly Jagger Robertson on the leader? Four of them are so evenly matched. Have a look at those lap times. Wow. 15s out of uh, second, third, and fourth place. 16 dead out of Jason Kutsia. 15-8, 15-5, 15-5. That's your first four cars on track. That's the lap times they're doing around the Kalani International Raceway here at round one of the Extreme Festival. Can you believe how close these... Oh, Ensel Smith's got a problem. Casey Ensel Smith's got a problem, and it had to be evasive action being taken, I think, by Shrin Naidu. Shrin Naidu had to get out of it as uh, Ensel Smith, I think, either missed a gear or went into some kind of false neutral, but he had no drive coming out of turn three. Now Jason Kutsia has got it clean and clear out front. A little mistake there from Casey Hensel Smith has dropped him back, but he's got going again. He either missed a gear or went into some kind of false neutral. They just had no drive whatsoever coming out of turn three. And it meant that both Shrin Naidu and Jagger Robertson had to take evasive action not to hit into the back end of him. So now we've got about a one and a half second gap there. And that's one of the Formula Fords running wide there by the looks of it. Is that LT? Yeah, Alan Mayer. Alan Mayer ran wide on a turn, turn one. Could see a 1.5 seconds to Robertson. 3.6 seconds back to Shrin Naidu. So one and two I think are done and dusted. There shouldn't be too many issues for those two to try and finish up uh, the top end of this field. But I think if Jagger Robertson can smell some blood in the water, even though it's on the final lap, he won't give up without a fight. He's going to still push all the way to the line and keep Jason Kutsia very, very honest. Jason Kutsia, though, is going to be hard-pressed not to make a mistake now because this will mean he'll be seeing the top step of the podium for the first time. And it's at his home circuit, so it's ideal for him to be there. So the Mint Coachworks car out of turn five for the last time. Coming up on a back marker. 
Looks like it might be uh, Ron Van Wheelie. Yes, it is. He'll get outgunned as he comes across and takes the chicken flag. And first victory in Formula 1600s for the Cape Town base driver, Jason Gutsia. Jagger Robertson on the podium for the first time as well, ahead of Shrin Naidu. And that's only in his second race ever in a single-seater. So Robertson showing a huge amount of prowess as to uh, his potential in a single-seater. Naidu in third. Casey Ensel Smith recovered after that little incident out of turn three to fourth. And a good run from Storm Lanfear for a top five. Van Wheelie in sixth. Ewan Holtzhausen fly Safir car there in seventh. PT out Karaba Malamela, race driver SA. And Mikel Besaid note beats out Alex Foss for your top 10. In the Formula Fords, it was Schofield from Duncan Foss, Rick Morris ahead of Ron Van Wheely, and Alan Mayer in 16th overall, but fifth place in the Formula Fords. Up next is Astron Energy Polo Cup Race 2. We'll be back shortly.
So cars rolling out onto the grid, on, oh, onto the grid now for uh, race two. But before we get into race commentary, let's pick up on, of course, the return of the slightly elderly statesman and uh, a couple of our top masters contenders we had a chat to yesterday. Polo Cup has a, has a brand new look and feel with Astron Energy coming to join us for the first time as the associates as the. Uh, let's do it again, sorry. Polo Cup has a brand new look and feel with Astron Energy and uh, a brand new look and feel with the return of the Masters and a couple of uh, seasoned contenders out there from other Volkswagen branded type vehicles but uh, Michael Baglia, take us through the step up from, from Challenge to Polo Cup. Well, uh, turbo motor definitely helps a lot. The push to pass is a great uh, way to go even though we are going turbo in uh, Challenge. So I think it's very, very equal. It's a good scene to be at Cape Town today with the mountain in the background and uh, for our first race, so Polo, Polo Cup is, is the way to go. Yeah. I like to hear that, I like to hear that. Luigi, you had a tough one and a couple of uh, really good dices with the likes of Mike, a couple with John on a few occasions, but there's been some, some sort of some epic battles in the challenge side of things. I think we're looking to see more of the same in the master side of things here too. Yes, well, it's very different being here with um, the Polo Cup, our first time at um, Cape Town. The car is very different to our normal challenge cars, but I will get used to it. It takes a little while, but uh, how have you, you found the circuit itself being here for the first time? It's very different. <laughs> it's um, a bit daunting, it's very bumpy, but I'm starting to get used to it. Are you Let's see how we go. Are you watching for those Cape Town lights? We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> John, you've had a couple of experiences down here in the past, and of course, uh, your two youngsters have gone really well here. Are you looking to fly the Kruger flag high again? Well, I'm going to try and follow in their footsteps, but so far it's proving to be a little bit difficult, especially against these pay bar masters here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're used to driving next to each other and with each other, where I've sort of come from a different pedigree, being Lotus Challenge recently. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, people wish you all the very best and uh, have a great weekend, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, there you have it, a uh, couple of our masters there telling us exactly what their plans are. It kind of worked out for one of them. John Kruger said he might just be able to uh, hold the mantle high there for the Kruger family after both uh, daughter and son, Robin and Jeff, of course, were uh, top contenders in this class in their day. Uh, Robin being one of the top lady category uh, competitors that we had in Polo Cup at one point. And, of course, Jeff went on to win it twice, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, certainly a man to watch out for will be John Kruger in the Masters for the second time out. But he's going to have his fight uh, and work it out for him because I think Wayne Masters... Might have just uh, done a couple of little tweaks here and there to ensure that he can possibly be in the running for a potential win and beat out the rest of this pack, including Johan Goos, who also runs under Universal Motorsports uh, Stable for Team Red Racing. And teammate there to uh, the cheeseburger on his left-hand side or right on the screen, as you can see it right now there. And that, of course, is uh, Derek Smallburger. So we've got a little bit of work to do for a couple of these drivers now. Daniel Sun, you come to join me here. You've got a bit of news from down in uh, pit lane. A couple of guys that uh, had some issues. I know that uh, Tyler Robinson was certainly having lots of issues. Hopefully she's got that car sorted out. It didn't look like there was too much body damage, but uh, looked relatively easy to sort out, unless there might have been damage inside the engine bay. Yeah, hopefully not. I'm not too sure myself, but um, yeah, it looked quite quite more cosmetic so I think it was definitely repairable for race two. Well, we'll definitely look to see if she's back on the grid now we've got a red flag at the back of the main grid that's to sort out the masters grid uh, the masters have joined us once again for the very first time in a long time and uh, joining uh, up with Polo Cup on a new dawn of Polo Cup 28 years into the running of the Polo Cup championship with Astron Energy joining them as their associate and now naming right sponsor for the series so great to have them on board and of course that's a, a, a huge, huge win for the Volkswagen brand to bring a, a fuel sponsor on board. But uh, as we saw in the first one, uh, I think there's going to be a little bit of uh, fun and games there between the top two. They seem to be the class of the field all weekend long there, Nathan Victor and Jason Newsmore, just having a little edge over the rest of them uh, into uh, what is going to be race two now of Astron Energy Polo Cup. Yeah, he definitely had the edge there, uh, all the two of them do, but... Uh I spoke to Nathan before this race, he says in race one he struggled a little bit with the setup issue and they're not sure why the car's behaviour changed but they've made a change for race two and uh, luckily he got fastest lap to get pole for this race because uh, hopefully his car sorted now for him. 
Opposition, of course, is important heading down towards turn one. It's on the inside of turn one that you want to be by the, the time you start any racing here at Kilani International Raceway. And it'll be up to Jason Newsmore to try and find a way around the outside if he can, or at least get around Nathan Victor before they get into uh, the battle royal that's going to rage. Charles Smallberg, I think, will be looking to try and stay with them this time and be in the mix with that. I'm going to throw in Mo Karodia because he wasn't too far off the back of the pack. Eventually ending up in third place overall in race number one. But as they line up now, it is uh, Smallberger and Karodia who are side by side there on the second row. Behind them, of course, is going to be Ethan Kutsia and Tyler Robinson. If she's able to get back out there. And I'm just trying to see uh, the yellow wing mirrors there. I don't know if you picked it up, Daniel. But I don't see those yellow wing mirrors out on track. So uh, the, the, the same livery as what Charles Fisser ran last year to differentiate himself between him. His car and the rest of the team red cars was those bright yellow wing mirrors and the bright mm. yellow lipstick that goes on the car. Um, doesn't look like it's out there. So that's a big pity to lose her because she certainly was in for a chance, possibly of even getting onto the podium. Yeah, I wonder if uh, there wasn't some cra cradle damage and maybe radiator. Not too sure, but uh, obviously it was a little bit more internal damage there. Yeah, than expected. Well, there they go. They come down trying to get some heat into the rubber. Uh, a lot of the guys are sort of chatting about how conditions have changed here. So tire pressure changes have to be brought into account. The track has cooled slightly with this breeze blowing over it. It's not as hot, uh, the tarmac, yeah. as what it was earlier on. Uh, and then, of course, uh, with these cars being front-wheel drive uh, in the wind, understeer can be a major, major factor too. Yeah, definitely. Um, just looking now, see which way the wind's blowing. Um, it's kind of left into turn one, so yeah, for sure, across yeah. the track and then left into turn one. So literally from what would be the north eastern yeah. side of the circuit to the southwestern side of the circuit, yeah, I would looks, say. It looks like I think uh, turn one and dams are going to be a problem in, in this race. It seems yeah. they're going to be causing the car to understeer. Back straight is going to be a problem too because you're literally going to have the wind straight up in your face yeah. and um, yeah. blowing you sort of to the right hand side of the track. Yeah. So if you want to go defensive, that's ideal. But uh, if you want to go on the attack, maybe not so much. Yeah, for sure. So rolling up to take up the position is Roshan Goodman also going to try and turn his luck around, as will Jean-Dre Marais. We actually saw Jean-Dre Marais get a very good start in race number one. He pulled out into the middle of the pack, and by the time they got down into turn one, they kind of eaten him up. But off the line, he was like a rocket. So watch out for Jean-Dre, see if he's able to do anything uh, slightly better than what he was able to do in the first one. Yeah. As we now come under starters' orders for race two of Astron Energy Polo Cup. And as I said, the 28th running of this one make series championship. Arguably one of South Africa's most successful racing championships ever. And I think, at, as I said, in race number one, only second in terms of the longevity of what has been uh, the original modified saloons that became the V8 supercars. So standing by. Lollipop Man puts up that five-second board, Daniel. Who's going to have what it takes here down there towards turn one? It all depends on that pull-off. all depends on that pull-off. But I'm, I'm going to say... Uh, you can't, can't see it now. Can't see yet, but I, <laughs> I reckon Nathan's got it. Yeah, it looks like Nathan has got it. Nathan Victor hanging on. Around the outside goes Deucemore, though. He's going to try and hang on to that outside line because that becomes the inside for turn two. So that's not a bad strategy, and it is going to work for him. He comes around oh. the outside of turn one, and he's in the lead. Has he got the ability to outbreak Nathan into turn two? Yes, he does. And looks like Smallberg is going to go with him, and he gets a tap. Smallberg gets a tap into turn two and sent to the sideline, but not too badly because he's still on the tarmac at that point. So fortunately, Charles Smallberg didn't go too far off circuit. So it's opened up a little bit of a gap there between Newsmore and Victor as Smallberger went up the inside and tried to do the same kind of maneuver that he saw his teammate and stablemate out of Universal Motorsport doing just ahead of him. Yeah, it looked it looked like Nathan was was still wide. There was still enough car, car, you know, space up the inside. It looks like Sean may have just drifted across there, across his nose. Difficult angle to see, but we'll have to see the footage after the race. Yeah, there's a slow mo replay we're going to get now as they head down here. Let's have a look at this. There we go. No, Nathan comes across. Yeah. yeah. Nathan definitely came across on him, and Smallberger was already committed to that inside line. The little tap through Smallberger into the spin, and Nathan continued on his merry way. So, yeah, uh, I think we may have a little job for the stewards after this one, mate. Yeah, that one's going to be a difficult call to make. 
I don't want to call it. It's, it's whenever I see things like that, it's a race incident because it could have gone either way. You know, Nathan could have spun out there because of him having the tap. But uh, there was definitely some argy bargy between the two of them. Further back in the pack, they're trying to sort out that mid pack little battle. Uh, Karodia hangs on to the three spot as he did in race number one. He has got a bit of a charge coming from behind in Ethan Kutsia. And then uh, the 7-7 seven, seven car there of Carl Fisser makes a move on the inside and possibly moves up one place. So the change that we're seeing here is, we've mentioned it already, the wind conditions are slightly different. Further back in the battle of the Masters, looks like it is Kruger out front, yes indeed. Followed very closely there by the looks of it from uh, that point of view. It looked like it was Johan Kroos, no, it's, uh, Smallberger, sorry. Yeah. Smallberger, yeah. Derek Smallberger there. Onto the inside line, and he's been hounded there big time by uh, the hard-charging Mike Barbaglia. He's in there as well, so nice to see that little battle starting to rage there with the Masters side of things too. Yeah, also nice to see that uh, the pack are hanging with the front two for now. Mm. Nice close racing for now. Let's hope they can stay with him. We can have a nice battle on our hands. Well, that's kind of what we want to see. Yeah, you don't sure. want to see two guys get away. You want to try and keep away, that yeah. pack all together, and that's exactly what's happening right now. Because across the line, we're going to get an indication. It should be about at least a second or a second and a half splitting the first nine cars. So uh, let's see if I got that right. Uh, six cars. 1.8 seconds between the first six. Now it goes down to about 1.2 for the first four. And then, uh, oh yeah, that's a nice little one as Masters well. Masters battling there, Masters and Kruger. Yeah. In the, in the Masters class. Someone off. In there is that uh, Nirav Singh, I think it might be again. Yeah, sec uh, second Singh. time. That's actually the second time he's gone off in turn one. He got it wrong in qualifying yesterday. He also got it wrong in turn five in the first race. So having a bit of a baptism of fire there is Nirav Singh. He was in ninth, just behind Hannes Skippers, but now in the uh, Kirillita at turn one. Up onto that back straight away. This is where the slipstream effect comes in. Mokorodia could be feeling that slipstream effect being put into it. And also, we haven't mentioned it, but uh, there are push-to-pass mechanisms that they're allowed to use. Uh, the uh, championship leaders, of course, the top cars won't have all of those push-to-passes by the next round, but they uh, are limited to slightly less because of their championship lead, just to try and even it out a little bit. But I didn't see anybody using that push-to-pass mechanism onto that back straight as they started their run to try and close things down on their rivals. Yeah, I only saw, I saw Nathan Victor using his push to pass in the previous lap on the, on the pit straight. So he has used one already. Let's see if he's able to do anything about that lead that Lusmore's got right now. Victor is in second. Lusmore is at the front end of the race as they come across the line. That'll change up there between them. Looks like we're having a bit of a problem there picking up on Jason Lusmore's uh, transponder because he's not picking up on the, the timing monitor. But he's certainly in the lead of the race. There we go. They go and correct that automatically now for us. Karodia from Kutsia. Kutsia from Fissa. Fissa putting pressure onto Kutsia. He's got Jean-Dre Marais and Roshan Goodman behind him. And then the doctor, Dr. Hannes Skippers in the house there. And uh, this time a top eight for him. Bertold, slightly better run from him too. Yeah, he's managed sure. to stay with the pack of junior drivers and not fall back into the clutches of that battle that's raging for uh, the Masters. Yeah, I'm just looking at Charles Smallberger. Dropped down to 10th, but his, his pace is right Safety there at car. the moment. Safety car, Dan. Sorry, just I saw... Must be seen. Um, no, I saw Ethan could see us slowing up dramatically. And I thought, hang on a second, what's going on here? So, uh, must be Singh's car Singh, that's yeah, in the way. Park, but this gives uh, Charles Smallberger an opportunity to catch up to the pack. Yeah. Obviously, looking at the timing, he is one of the faster guys at the moment. Uh, although he's driving on his own, so that's... 27-9 uh, is going to put him in the sort of hunt for the front there because everybody else is in the 27s except for Bjorn. Yeah. Bjorn doing 29-2, so they're all running Yeah. similar lap times. 26-9 is the fastest, that's Victor. But that was because he's trying to close that gap down to get onto Jason Newsman, which he just did. Now, it's going to give him an opportunity. Uh, one thing here, Danny, from uh, the restart point of view, if they're under safety car, it's line of stern, if I'm not mistaken, eh? Yep. They've got to stay line of stern until they've uh, crossed the finish line, and then they can uh, attack each other as they as they want to. Yeah, only six laps to go. So uh, let's see how, how quickly they can get this car out of the way or get him back on the track so that he can get moving. Well, there's the official pace car, the Astron Energy pace car. 
Polo Cup GTI that will run at the front end of this race now for uh, the next lap or so until nope. they can secure uh, Singh's car into a safe position. Yeah, these guys need to uh, need to try and keep eating to the tyres here. How quickly do they drop off? What's the, the drop off right there? Yeah, I mean, if you're going at this speed, they're going to drop off quickly, very quickly. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and I, and I don't think weaving at this speed is going to going to keep the temperature in them. So, try use the brakes as much as you can to to keep the temperature in the tyres. Um, I don't see any of them doing that at the moment. So. No. <laughs> Not one Take, of them. Taking a break. Not one of them, but uh, I think you uh, you might have to go and get some coaching in the in the Polo Cup side Come of back to too. Rookie Cup. <laughs> Send them back there to get that uh, information. It's important. Uh, not only in the brakes, but um, not only in the, the tyres, you've got to keep heating the brakes as well. So, yeah. important factor there too. Masters will now bridge the gap as well. Now, I, I didn't hear what uh, what Eric Schultz said in terms of that. If there's a safety car on the restart, do they do the same as the uh, Super Cup and Southern Venturing cars? Will they hold a, a small gap between the Masters and them? Is that, uh, the, is that the plan, or is it now every man for himself? I think they're just going to be a pack together and stay together. Okay. Well, we'll soon see whether John backs up, because he was leading uh, the Masters class. I think, yes, still in 11th place there for John Kruger. So if he stays uh, on the back end of Charles Smallberger, he might bring a couple of those masters into the mix. No, he's yeah. backed out. He has Looks backed like out. He has given a gap. He's yeah. backed out a little bit of a gap there. So yeah, I thought that might be the case. I did see were well, those yellow flags being brought back in, and lights are still on. No, lights are still on on that safety car. So not anywhere near recovering this vehicle just yet, by the looks of it. like they're battling to get it out i did mention i, I actually took a walk around the track and uh, they have addressed these uh, kitty litter beds very nicely they've uh, turned them into sort of quite thick which is what you want because you want to of course ensure that you can at least uh, slow the car down before it goes and does big damage against the wall um one thing that you wouldn't have seen earlier on of course is the the uh, arrest bed or kitty litter bed up at turn five uh, Graham Van Bernard had a big crash there in the ZX10 second race and because of the kitty litter also it slowed him down before he got to the wall at the end of the Cape Town circuit so definitely, uh, definitely doing its job yeah I'm and they do sure. that that's that's the idea is uh, the circuit preparation has been pretty good yeah red flag is out as well so we're gonna have to go for a restart here now I think what have that we done was the right call to make otherwise sure. we we counting down the laps Spectators don't get their laps to see, so no, hundred percent. Right call to make. So red flag is out, means coming to the line. Uh, they've completed four of six, so I would say probably a six-lap sprint race going to be uh, on the cards in a few moments' time when the COC makes a call. Um, my understanding is that with four they laps completed, they will roll up in these grid positions. Stop eh? in these grid positions and yeah. start from those grid positions exactly. So they'll roll up onto those grid positions as they are. Might be a couple of guys who don't quite get it right and they may have to just shuffle them on the grid, but uh, it means that we've got, of course, a little bit of a, a break in the proceedings here. And that uh, is due to the fact that they weren't able to get... Was it because of a four-wheel drive versus a two-wheel drive bucky situation oh. then? I think that might be the case. <laughs> Can we get a Datsun to pull it out? Yeah. I think it may have just been... Oh, oh just no, the, the, toe no rope. the toe rope just snapped there, Broken so that didn't rope. work. Has it? I think it just came off the, the hook. Uh, we'll have to get it back on there and uh, see if they can get him out. So cars are rolling around. They'll come and, of course, take up their positions on the grid as they stand right now. So coming down to the back straight away now. Uh, what do they need to do yeah, Dan? You know, you, we're talking about keeping the tires warm. We're talking about keeping the brakes warm. Not always an easy thing to do when you've got breeze blowing across and the cars are not at pace. So it means that there's going to be a small issue that they need to worry about here. And then they're going to sit on the grid for a bit. Yeah, I think so they're going to... Uh, will they send them straight away or will they potentially give them a, a lap to get some heat into the rubber? 
most likely going to get them on the grid and then uh, proceed with a normal restart. So out formation lap, one lap, come to the grid and then go. So okay. I think they will get a formation lap just to get everything to temperature. Get it all back up to temperature, make sure that it's all working. Mm. Something that's not working right now but these moments, is the ability to get this car out of the kitty litter. Yeah, for sure. It's just these moments in the race when there's only six laps to go and a restart, things can get a bit spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, six Speaking laps of sprint. spicy, I mean, do you want anything more than that? That's quite spicy, oh, hey? Yeah. It's AP for the vault here. Just yeah. give me a sell in the commentary. Yeah. It's always good. He'll be back soon. Yeah, un with unfortunately, he had to uh, go and damage his arm. So no, no, you know, sun's out, guns out, eh? Yeah, sun's out, guns sun's out. Sun's out, guns out. JP's uh, <laughs> ripping biceps off. He's so strong. But um, I'm just hoping that he gets back in time to uh, defend his title at the hill climb. And then uh, half halfway through the season, jump back into a, a Super Cup polo and finish yeah. up the season. Because that's a, it's a sad demist driver out there, JP van der Waal, from uh, uh, a, po uh, a spectator point of view. There's a lot of fans out there for him. So coming to the light, take the positions for a full restart. But it'll probably be, well, they've now completed five laps. So will they go to five lap sprint? We'll wait and see. Um, I don't know if you can get hold of somebody that will give us that information. I know that the timing, the timing board was saying, it was still saying laps to go six. So it looks like... Yeah, what uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to look out that window and the other laps. see what they put on the drag strip. Uh, LED board that'll give us a great indication because it'll normally just come up and say right that's what we've got to go and it looks like uh, a couple of cars shuffling around there inclu including uh, Charles Smallberger. they've got Sing Sing's car out of the kitty litter if he can get going again he can start at the back even though there's a couple of laps down is that right yeah I'm sure they I'm not sure that they don't do that do they go lap back now? I don't think they go lap back. It's normally only in the first. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying he was lapped twice while he was in the kitty litter. So even though he was lapped twice, if he can still get to the back of the grid, yeah, I mean, he can start and yeah. just try and salvage I something. I don't think so. Do you think he'll have to come in a bit late? Because they don't go. I don't think they go a lap back at this point in the race. Yeah. I think if it's in the first two laps, they go a lap back, and if if you are lapped down, you you gain that lap back. Yeah. But because of this this time in the race, I don't think he can gain that time. Maybe I'm wrong. I no, think he it's all might, good. I'm, I think he might start the race two laps yeah. down. He can start it two laps down and still be classified if something else goes wrong higher up in the race there. Yeah. So, so uh, being on track is probably the important thing. But it would mean he'd have to start at the back of the Masters as well. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to resume his position at the back of the, the Polo Cup pack. I don't think so. Because if, if he were to be allowed to... To run on the same lap, it's uh, it wouldn't be exactly fair to the rest. Yeah, hundred percent. Because he scores the red flag. So no, no, exactly. Yeah, so I think he must have he must have to come back in. Well, they've sent Cheeseburger back again, so yeah. he's going to have to start at the back where he was. Yeah, Big Max going back. So they back. are shuffling the grid to the way that they had ended this one. Bertolt going to slot in. The Doc slots in there, and I think uh, Shaw will be behind Doctor Hannes Skippers alongside Bertolt. That's how they've yeah. so sorted the Polo Cup pack out. I see that uh, on the live stream. So uh, my pops has just joined us as well as Samantha. So she says hi to Daniel too. So uh, cool. Samantha saying hi to you. Hello, hello. <laughs> Having done some work there before with the two of you, I know. But we're going to be saying how's it there as well. But we're under starters orders in a few moments time. Once they've got those masters sorted out in the background and reshuffled their grid. Just a couple of guys, of course, this is a unique scenario. First race with Masters involved now, and the split grid means they've got to get both those grids right and uh, ensure that the drivers are in the correct positions to restart this uh, second half of race two. I'm still seeing five of five on the timing, but uh, I think we need to actually get out of that and give it a chance to reset, yep. and then we'll be able to see. The timing is saying five laps to go, so yeah. we might be right there. I think with the five done, five to go would be the best option. Um, guys would have to build this into account, I'm sure, when, you, when you're planning your, the weight of your car the, and the standard weight it has to be once it goes over the scales, is that you don't want to have too little fuel in the car and run it to the margin that'll get you through the 10 laps if there's no problems. But if there is problems and you run that fuel and have to do a couple of extra laps behind safety cars, 
doesn't uh, warrant you possibly being at the right weight when you cross those scales. Exactly, yeah. I think some of them might be a little bit concerned. Some guys going to be running up with two litre water bottles or Cokes. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think you can buy those at the Astron Energy Shop, eh? can't you? Probably. <laughs> Yeah, we've had we've had we've had those in, instances before where we we end up doing two or three laps behind safety car, um, you know, and the, the teams don't account for for that possibility. Mm. So then you come over the scale a little bit too light. I mean, one kilo can one one or two kilos can cost you. So yeah, and it costs you a vital points if you're in the the points running. That's for sure. So hopefully that's not the case. Looks like we're almost good to go here. I see Eric Schultz running down the middle. He's kind of like a he always reminds me when he's running in that mode, he's like Mitch Buchanan on Baywatcher. Yeah. Just comes running through there, making sure everything's always, always ready. <laughs> he's got a tough well, the, job with these guys, though. Well, the, the new the new Baywatch man is Dwayne Johnson, so we need to get him some muscles. Yeah, I think so, hey? <laughs> yeah, maybe he needs to get in the gym a bit. <laughs> protein, brew protein. Yeah, get eh? that mass builder in. Yeah. Yeah. Ch what's it? Uh, chicken, uh, chicken breasts and egg whites. Yeah, chicken <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> That's what you need. He doesn't juice. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no juicing <laughs> from his side. Not with that, not with that skinny build. <laughs> oh, we got uh, packets blowing across the circuit as well. That's also a concern. Don't want to get that in the radiator. That'll certainly heat yeah. up your car rapidly. Come on, city of Cape Town. Yeah, I think that was just a, <laughs> one of the, the teams at the sideline there. They might have dropped something. It's, yeah. The wind here is so strong that if you do drop anything, it's going to disappear. So yeah, there we go. Safety car giving them one lap. One lap. To get a bit of heat back into those Dunlops. Heat back into the Ferrodo brakes. So there we go. What it does do, as you said, Dan, and I've got to agree with you 100%, it does bring Charles Smallberger back into the picture. If you can get a good start, you can maybe get back into that top six and salvage some points after uh, an off there. Yeah, quarter pounder's got some work to do. So as he heads down towards... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, he, is, he is the quarter pounder. He's quarter pounder and his dad's Big Mac. Yeah, he's the Big Mac, 100%. Big but 100%. Mac. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, your dad was saying we should call him the Slider Burger. The Slider Burger. Yeah, because it's the small one. <laughs> <laughs> There's one from Woolies. Yeah. Slider Burger from Woolies. Anyways. Okay, let's see what he can do. John Kruger maintains over a hard charging Masters there. And the Masters field have been really good. Yep. Alna Cruz, I think, slowly but surely getting to grips with that car, taking a bit of time to learn. We mentioned about the turbo lag, how to drive the car, how to get the best out of it. Um, that's an important factor. But uh, let's see now if she's able to do anything about uh, the back of the pack in the Masters and maybe moving up slightly there on the restart. Singh is back. There he is. They've allowed him to take his position even though he's two laps down. But would this be deemed a full restart? with a couple of laps or are they going to now do a combination of race one or race two part a and part b i'm not sure probably oh. going to be uh, two separate starts yeah possibly okay i think they will they'll probably do a second start and then add the total times there we go most likely what they're going to do all righty so let's see what happens now as they come to the line <coughs> heading down on the back straight away beg your pardon there as uh, you can see the wind look at the trees on the right hand side pumping straight across into the face into the windscreen of that car and forcing you literally across the circuit from on the screens right to left but on the track left to right uh, into Cape Town Corner it's going to help in Cape Town Corner you're going to get a massive boost coming out of Cape Town Corner that's for sure slingshot you around there so that's also something you need to take into account when you when you've got your braking and your acceleration point I'm sure yeah. you know the the additional power of the wind is going to give you a, maybe a, a later uh, acceleration point than uh, than what you would have had previously. Here we go, getting to the grid now. Get no, I think it's line of stern. It's a it's a rolling start it's though. Rolling they start. Go. Yeah, rolling start line of stern. Oh, uh, there we go. They You're can't up. pass until they go across the line. They form up on the grid, but when they restart, they go line of stern. So there we go. That's why I said it give, give a good possibility to Charles Smallberger to capitalise on that five lapper. You were spot on there, Daniel, son. That's why I've got you in the commentary booth with me. Thanks, bud. Make my life so much easier. I don't have to do all these calculations in my head. <laughs> so five laps to go of the five laps that we've completed. And once again, it's Lou Small, Victor, and Corodia, your top three. Could see her on the tail there. Fissa followed very closely.
by Jean-Dre Marais, then Roshan Goodman and Hannah Skippers. Bjorn Bertold, the man who caused the red flag there with the Kyle Army exhaust car. He is just outside the top 10 in 11th place. So now on the restart, you'll kind of take a lap to sort of maybe have a bit of a feel, eh? See if the grip's still there, see if the brakes are still on where you want to hit them. Um, and when you hit the brakes of these cars, you hit them hard. And uh, that's what you want to be feeling. Sliding is not an option out of Malmesbury, in my opinion. But that uh, is what Mo is doing right now. That might not be uh, because he's got enough heat in the rubber yet. Yeah. yeah I've noticed that uh, Nathan Victor's car tends to rotate quite a bit more in dams and Malmesbury. So uh, definitely running a different setup there. Mm. As uh, I heard that Jason had a little bit better top speed in... in in the quali session and, and in, in practice so you may yeah. be running a, a you know a straighter vehicle with less toe and trying uh, to get the car to get accelerate to keep that straight line speed if necessary exactly so it's going to be difficult if he's still running like that in the race it's going to be difficult for nathan to try and pass him because uh, i think nathan's set his car up more for for the corners so mm. skipper still maintains ahead of goodman goodman ahead of small burger so uh, we've got the Renegade Racing Team Red Man out front. It's Nathan Victor in second place for Summit Racing. And Floor Store on trend. And then it's Mo Carodia for Fast 5 Motorsport. Ethan Kutsia for uh, JRT Racing. Carl Fisser for Volkswagen Motorsport. And uh, the Astron Energy and Racing Academy uh, car. Behind oh. that, yo, running wide, there was, uh, that was Kutsia. Could see her putting wheels on the dirt there, not ideal. Uh, third of the Team Red cars there, Jean-Dre Marais, Hannah Skippers in it's like the... Carl's got the run. Yeah, he's got a good run there actually, hey. You're spot on. Let's see if we can capitalize on that slipstream now on the back end. No, I don't think he's close enough. Not quite close enough. Yeah, but there, there you can see pressure from Victor. Victor in the Summit Racing car is definitely applying huge amounts more onto the back end now of Jason Usmore is going to try and soak it up for another uh, three laps two done three to go it's watching in the background as well there comes Fissa setting that up for a couple of corners back looking to possibly make it stick into turn one John Kruger hangs on ahead of Masters I don't think just trying to think now no I can't recall ever John Kruger and Wayne Masters racing against each other in a category in northern regions or in the, the regional championships in the Extreme Festival. So yeah. this is the first time that those two have sort of locked horns in a race itself. The rest of this pack have sort of all come out of Pay Bar Volkswagen Challenge, so they're used to racing with each other. But John comes out of Lotus Challenge, so he's a, he's a bit of a, a differentiating factor there in the uh, Habot car. So nice to see that. Yeah, something new for both of them. I mean, they're yeah. going to learn. They're going to learn each other the way the way that they drive, the way that they defend everything. It's something new, but they seem to be handling it. Mm. Masters, not, uh, not so good handling through there on that no, car. No, but I mean, Uncle Wayne's trying to put some pressure on there. Heading down towards turn five, looks like there's a little bit of a fight on there with Roshan Goodman. Roshan Goodman was the man who just put two wheels on the inside of Sorrel Sweep. Somebody's run wide out of Sorrel Sweep as well. Was it Corodia? Yeah. I think Nathan Victor might have got a run there on Jason. Yeah, he's yeah, he coming did. side by side with Jay. Here he comes. I think and they, they if might. he's got a push to pass, he might get past him. Yeah, I think there might have been contact on the exit, which gave him the run. Well, Jay's later on the brakes, and he's very late, maybe too late. No, just hangs on. Sure, that was great timing, actually, on the brakes there from Jason Newsmore to maintain the lead. And we're on to the penultimate lap, so it's lap four or five that we're fighting for now. And Nathan Victor oh, is putting huge amounts of pressure. He's trying to go for that sin. Loose ball, feeling that pressure, big time. He needs same, to. Thing, same thing there between those two, I've got to say. But how's that four-way fight just behind? Uh, El Nacruza finding a way through there on Luigi. Ferro drops one position back. Yeah, and John Stall leads uh, Wayne oh. there. No change up between them. Then you've got Smallburger. And uh, behind Smallburger, I think. Just want to check out Mark Barbaglia. Oh, we've got a Barbaglia. Yeah, here we go. Right. You called it. 
Victor on the inside. Leave a gap for Nathan because Nathan will send it. And he's going to do that exactly what he's going to do. So, Jason, loose more. How late can you be on the brakes? Because that's going to be exceptionally late braking required here and not enough. There's Victor to the front. What a run that he got out of Malmesbury. Oh, lovely. Hey? Set that yeah. up perfectly. Set that up perfectly. But here comes Jay. He's going to try and do the same thing now towards uh, the first turn here at Killon International Raceway. He's on the outside. That might not be ideal unless he's got a push to pass left. If he uses that, he'll be able to squeeze through with the additional power. Oh, oh and a touch. Some contact there. And that's forced Victor slightly wide, but he shuts the door instantaneously, not allowing that renegade Team Red car through. This is brilliant racing from both of them. Oh, nice. They're rubbing his racing. Contact small, is good. Small contact. Yeah, contact is good as long as it's like that. You know, you don't want to be knocking the guy off track completely, but a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of nudging is always good. And Victor looks like he might be able to hang on. Yeah, There's only one opportunity to try and overtake, uh, and that'll be down at uh, Cape Town Corner. Definitely looks a lot more comfortable through the corners. There is edges away through the dams. And then cl gets closed up on the straight. <laughs> now we'll see now in the back This is where it's going to count. Out of arms, oh, Jason's putting the pressure back on. Slipstream city time. Can Jason do anything about Nathan Victor now? Look out for Mo Karodia being attacked by uh, Ethan Kutsia in the background as well. And then behind that, Carl the Fisser. The wind is pumping so much down the back straight. If you can get in the slip. Well, he's gone around the oh. outside. And he slides up onto the banking, trying to oh, use the banking to get the pass. Going to cut back. Yes, I thought so. Going to cut back and now try for the drive to the line. Here they are, side by side. Wing mirror to wing mirror. That is exactly what you oh, want to see contact. in Polo Cup. I think Jason Lusmore is going to get it to the line. I think he will. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, he's got it. Oh. I think he's got it. I'm going. Did he get it? Yep. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it here. Let's see. I think it was. On, Victor's we'll... gone through. No, I think Victor's got it. You think he's got Nathan it? Nathan Victor's got it there. Yeah. Amazing stuff there. Nathan Victor and Jason Newsmore across the line. It's got corroded. They didn't pick up Jason's transponder, so they're going to have to just correct that quickly. So let's just see I think when they do correct it. Him. He might have, hey? We're just waiting to see the timing wanted to come through. There go the Masters. John's won it over Masters himself. And John Kruger wins out there. Smallberger in third. Just waiting for the timing monitor to, to refresh for us, but doesn't look like it's going to do that. Yes, he did. He got it. Whoa. Oh, how 5. much? 0 0.095. Wow. Wow. So that's three hundredths that's like of a difference between yesterday's Super Bowl times exactly, between those two. Yeah. A tenth of a second. Man, that's brilliant you stuff. Got him by a tenth. Dan, that's, that's what you want in Polo Cup, is it not? Yeah, for sure. I think Nathan, he did the right thing to try and cover it up in the last corner, but I think he ran a little bit too deep, and it just allowed Jason to get that undercut. Yeah. So Jason Newsmore wins out over Nathan Victor to the tune of 0 0.095. 0 0.095. That's uh, nine hundredths of a second. Yesterday, it was six hundredths of a second to separate those two boys for the Super Bowl. So... Uh, if that's how close it's going to be for the rest of the season, please let it carry on. Yeah. And uh, welcome to the party, Astron Energy. Yeah, this is this is Polo Cup for you. Um, you know, just when we thought Nathan Victor, he got past, we thought he had it covered. And boom, last corner to the flag. Loose more to the flag by the tune of 0 0.095. Well deserved. Karodia in third. Nice run from him. Ethan Kutsia in fourth. And Carl Fisser beats out Jean-Dre Marais for the top six. That could possibly bring... Both of those two boys into the top six overall with the demise there, unfortunately, of uh, Tyler Robinson and uh, the red flag that we had earlier on. So there you have it. That is Astron Energy Polo Cup done for the day. Daniel Sun, thank you so much for your time in the saddle here. We do appreciate it. I know you've got a busy day uh, at a race day, but it's always nice to have you alongside, buddy. You bring a lot of insight, and it's always good to have you on the microphone with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll see you soon. Up next, we're going into some more race action here from round one of the Extreme Festival of Motorsport and of course out of Astron Energy Polo Cup we go into SA Touring Cars and Super Cup combined.
So Super Cup and uh, SA Touring Cars on track, just getting some heat into those Dunlop rubber that uh, they race on. Let's catch up with a couple of the contenders for Super Cup for 2024. It's the same looking cars, they're just as exciting, but a new brand with SA Touring Cars Super Cup now. Um, Brad Liebenberg coming into uh, this season. There's a bit of a target, I think, out there with a couple of these drivers that have joined this series. New ones and old ones, that, and uh, looks like those rivalries are going to kick off right from the word go. Yeah, we always look forward to it. Uh, obviously, a new season, a uh, new car. Um, but yeah, there's, there's always a little bit of bumps in the road. We're ironing them out, and uh, hopefully tomorrow come quali, we, we're up there with a chance. But let's see how it goes. Take us through the new car. Yeah, the, the GR Starlet, uh, lovely to drive. Like I said, there's a few bumps that we, we're still figuring out, but uh, yeah, we've got another practice session to go. Hopefully we can figure it out and we see how Polly goes tomorrow. Coming to you, Nathan. Good to have you back in the series again, buddy. It's been sort of in and out every now and again, but uh, now back full time for the full season, I'm hoping. And uh, we're going to fly that Trinity flag high, I'm sure. But uh, but daunting to come in when there's so many big changes that have happened in the championship. You know, look, there's a lot of changes that's come. And coming back, after a year of not driving is a bit challenging but uh, we're trying our best and I it's just a good weekend to start off with. It's been good for you guys in the past down here so uh, maybe uh, possibilities of just following on with uh, what's happened in the past? Uh, do you mean good by rolling cars? In the That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> it was an ironic trip. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can take the car back to Joburg in one piece. Well, that's the plan, that's for sure. Yes. New man to the series, but new, not, definitely not a new man to the strand. Uh, I think these two on your, uh, what do you go, on the right hand side there are a little bit concerned that you've now stepped up into Super Cup. But uh, Charlie, how's it been? What's the, what's the big difference? Yeah, I mean, um, new team, new car. Um, definitely bad as experience on me, but I'm getting to grips with the car. Certainly, yeah, I love driving a Super Cup car, especially on a nice circuit like this, a nice flowing circuit. Um, we're looking good in practice. Um, it's certainly very tight, but. Um, as Brad says, you know, tomorrow qualifying comes, we'll see where everyone is, but at the moment, uh, we're looking very good. So back on track now for the uh, second time today, SA Touring Cars and Super Cup combined. It's uh, a battle royal that raged in the first one, and a couple of cars that sort of got up close and personal, and even closer than that on a a few occasions so certainly going to be watching to see exactly what happens here in the second heat of race action now from this category newly liveried of course with the SATC taking over from what has been the global touring cars for the last couple of seasons but uh, let's have a look and see who's going to have what it takes to be at the front and possibly spoil each other's days in terms of the racing that's going to happen Saud Variawa of course is in a brand new car for Gazoo Racing he pilots a Gazoo Racing Starlet GR, a uh, new car to, uh, of course, the uh, Toyota Stable. A bit of a, a change up there because uh, originally, it looks like also getting a yellow card uh, there. I think uh, if I heard Dave, uh, Shoal getting a yellow card. Also watching out for uh, action at the front end of the Super Cup category as well. As we saw uh, the new contenders, Schalfisser, get that yellow card and have to now be under the scrutiny of the COC for uh, the next couple of races. Uh, looks like he might have been a little over eager to get through there on Campos and that was because of the, the incident between himself and Campos that saw him uh, slot through to the front. There was some a little bit argy-bargy there but uh, great to see that nonetheless because the, the race action is always good in the South African Touring Car Championship when they, they do start to rub a bit. Uh, Michael van Rooyen on the front row there as well. will also be looking to try and change his luck around. He had a bit of a, a touch between himself and Saud Variawa. So just correction in my ear there. Sorry about that. It's Keegan Campos who's on the yellow card for the touch on Shoal Fissa. And uh, that's why he was able to get through uh, looks like it was uh, in, in, deemed intended, so that's why the yellow card will be passed on to Keegan for uh, the next couple of races, just to be watched in terms of his race tactics and antics and see if he's able to do anything about uh, that and changing up his uh, luck. I'm sure he's looking to try and do that because, of course, he lost the championship due to the fact that he went to get married 
And uh, now we're looking to come back to try and redeem that and ensure he can get a, a Super Cup championship under the belt. Fly Safi BMW at the back is Andrew Schofield. He also had a bit of problems in the first one where he spun off all on his own at turn two, got back on track and was able to finish up. But it cost him a bit of time and it also cost him the chances of uh, a potential podium. It was looking good from his first time out in a saloon car and definitely looking like there's uh, some uh, prowess in his driving when it comes to saloon car racing. Pace car rolls out down towards turn number one. Now looking forward to uh, that pack. Here comes the Super Cup class. Tate Bishop will be looking to improve slightly as well. Maybe stay ahead of Mahotsi if he can. Jonathan Mahotsi, of course, was a, a big contender there in that uh, battle between Fissa and Campos. He was also in that mix. Tate Bishop joined them right in the closing stages. And remember, with this change up here, we're going to see the inverted grid come into play, which puts Mahotsi on that front row with Campos, Fissa, and Bishop behind them. And uh, we'll look to see how that goes in terms of uh, wrapping up the action from SA Touring Cars and uh, action, of course, from the Kalani International Raceway here. Super Cup, always a hotly contested class. Let's see what's going to happen here at the front end. It's Nati, Simanga, Michael van Rooyen. Saud Variawa. Robert Volk, Andrew Schofield, Julian van der Watt, all fighting for honours in the SATC category. Anthony Pretorius has joined that party as well in the third of the Corollas. So uh, in that OMP and bucketless racing car, he'll be third on the grid, just ahead of Julian van der Watt. That's how it's going to line up there. Sawood in a slightly better position there, ahead of the uh, sort of arch rivals from his championship's point of view. As they now come to line up and get into race formation. They get very close in this race formation. On the start, you'll see literally within a couple of meters of each other. And uh, they'll hold that formation. And then Super Cup will do the same thing with Jonathan Mahotsi holding up the pack. And here we go. Lights out down towards turn one, and it's uh, SA Touring Cars and Super Cup on the way to turn one. Van Rooyen leading things out and gets the whole shot over Saud Variawa. Variawa tucks in behind him. Inside comes uh, Pretorius. Anthony Pretorius trying to force the, the Golf GTI of Julian van der Watt wide, and he does that successfully. Van der Watt putting two wheels onto the dirt, but has it been enough to keep him out? Campos around the outside of Mahotsi. Followed by Fissa. Fissa going to try and sneak through there early on and follow his teammate through. As they head towards turn number two, possibilities here of Charles Fissa diving on the inside to get through there on Campos. Campos shuts the door. Around the outside there, coming through for uh, a chance to get into the mix early on is Brad Liebenberg. Liebenberg also changing up into the Gazoo Racing stable cars there and now putting the pressure onto the front end of that Super Cup class. As they head down in towards turn three onto the short straight. They head up onto that back straight away now. The leaders are already heading down towards Cape Town corner, but we're watching this fight for Super Cup because Campos looks like he means business. Inside line, forcing Pretorius wide. And there you see a change up. There's a couple of cars moving through there. One was Fanavat. Fanavat has moved through nicely and uh, got himself up into third place. Marco van Rooyen continues to lead things out exactly where he wants to be. Variawa on his tail. No chance just yet though for Nati to sneak through there. Potentially spoil the day for everybody and make it a Gazoo Racing 
It certainly looks like the two Volkswagen boys want to make it Volkswagen's one and two across the line there from uh, their point of view. Those Astron Energy Volkswagen Super Cup Polos are uh, putting the pressure on and sandwiching the uh, Campos transport car of Keegan Campos. That's how it stands at this point in time. Tate Bishop looking to get into the mix, trying to find a way through, not able to get it just yet though. So Gazoo Racing, one and four at this point are the Corollas. Second place car is the Starlet. So GTI 8 in third place. And problems for Bishop. Bishop slowing. Tate Bishop slows up around the outside of turn three. So the angry car, unfortunately, with some problems there. He was chatting to us on uh, Tiny's Pit Box and telling me that there was a possibility that uh, there was some understeer issues and uh, battling in the wind. That looks like it might be something a little bit more terminal, though. Because for him to pull out of the race means there's something gone wrong in the engine bay. Campos looking to put the pressure on and maintain that pressure onto the back end of Jonathan Lafotzi. First five, six cars very evenly matched. Schofield still getting to grips with his machine. Not quite on the, uh, the steam train at the front here. About two seconds off it at this point. So some work to do there for Scof just to get up to speed on how well that BMW is going to perform in amongst these Toyotas and the uh, GTI of Julian van der Zoo Racing 1 and 2 stays the same. No changes there. Sawood Variawa following his teammate round. Corolla leads Starlet. GTI 8 in the third place. Then another Corolla followed by the BMW of Robert Volk who's now found a way through up into the top five. Starts to apply the pressure onto the back end of Natium Samanga as they head towards turn five. Variawa goes defensive. Keeps out front of Vat. They get onto the banking coming out of that Fostron corner down at Cape Towns. Bottom end of the circuit. Across the line in the lead of this race. Marco van Rooyen trying to control things. It's only to the tune of about 0.3 of a second there between himself and his teammate. And I think Sawad, Sawad Variawa is just up the pace there ever so slightly. 16.8 and a 16.9. 16.8 out of Julian van der Vaart. 16.7 out of Nati and Samanga. 16.1 out of Robert Volk. Fastest car on track on that lap. Robert Volk down in fifth place and starting to turn the wick up. Fisser maintains third, ahead of Brad Liebenberg. And it's Davide, uh, yeah, Davide Franco behind Brad Liebenberg, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, indeed. Then it's uh, Cora Hill, Nathan Hammond, and Dean Fenter. Well, I said, having a little bit of a fun and a bit of tongue-in-cheek joke there with the Trinity man as he comes up now under pressure from Dean Fenter. As they go into turn two. Certainly been a lot better day for him here today in the Super Cup class. Top three, bit of a gap opening up there between them. Charles Fisser, whatever he did in terms of the changes that they might have gone for in race two, seems to have gone backwards slightly. But not ideal there for Charles Fisser. Another lap down. Four down and eight to go. Twelve lap of this one, remember. Robert Volk using those laps timing them to perfection here to get his passes in. Saad Variawa now trying to attack Michael van Rooyen into turn two. Not quite close enough to do it just yet though. Van der Vaart behind him. Van der Vaart will be looking to pick the pieces up if something goes wrong there in the Gazoo Racing Stable. It doesn't look like that's going to be happening. Are we going to see a victory out of Saud Variawa in that Toyota Starlet in its first time of asking? Well, not the first time, that was earlier on in the day, but uh, certainly the first round of asking, we can say. Will that Toyota Starlet possibly be the star of the day here? Late breaking from Saud, he goes on the inside, trying to find a way through on Michael Van Rooyen. Van Rooyen's opened up the door, where the door is shut firmly by Nati Imsamanga to keep out Robert Volk. With that, Pretorius has now been able to just bridge that gap again. And by bridging that gap, puts himself into contention 
for a top five. Van Royen, Variawa, Van der Watt. Front end of Super Cup, it's still Jonathan Mokotzi and Campos. They've pulled away slightly now from Schalfer, so he hasn't had a, an answer there, but he's been able to maintain the gap there between himself and Brad Liebenberg. Campos goes high and wide. Can't quite get through there. Watch Campos heading down towards turn one. Campos on the outside of turn one. Looking for a cutback here. Can he find it? Little slip there coming out of uh, turn three there from Campos' point of view. Dave, you're on channel one. Michael van Rooyen leads things out at the front end. Jonathan Mugotzi leads out the Super Cup class. That's how it stands at the moment. Can Keegan Campos do anything about Jonathan Mugotzi's pace? He seems to have the answer in the, the, the tighter stuff, but mugotzi has got some good straight line speed on that car. Is there a change-up for the lead? Yes, there is. Variawa is at the front. Sawad Variawa hits the front for the first time. The Starlet out front ahead of the Corolla. Michael van Rooyen into second. Julian van der Watt maintains third. He's got his teammate hunting him down, though. Robert Volk is coming rapidly. Volk's fastest lap is a 16-1. He's currently in the 16-6s. Cars ahead of him are doing 16-8s and 17-2s. So he's about half a second up on those uh, cars ahead of him. And you can see why as he pulls alongside. Looking for a chance to now squeeze out and go side by side with his teammate Julian van der Watt down towards turn number five, Cape Town corner. Not able to get past him though. Van der Watt's straight line speed is also good in that GTI. Inside line, little touch between Volk and his team. Ooh, it's getting real there. Volk and van der Watt getting up close and personal coming out of uh, Cape Town corner and through the kink. Mariawa ahead of Michael van Rooyen. Van der Watt, Volt, a Volk I should say, and uh, Nati Msumanga. Msumanga still with a bit of pressure and still being applied there by Anthony Pretorius. Now this little train has been uh, concertinaed slightly into the top six. Pretty much all in the running here. Sixteen nine out of Ariel on the last pass. Seventeen two, seventeen three, seventeen eight, sixteen nine, and seventeen dead. Point three of a second splitting the lap times there for the first six cars on track. Campos on the attack now. Campos looking dangerous around the outside, trying to find an inside line there possibly on. Uh, not uh, on um, Jonathan Mokotzi, I beg your pardon. Mokotzi at this stage maintains, but only just as he gets up into it. So into the closing stages here of the second heat of SA Touring Cars and Super Cup combined onto the breaking point and once again Campos can't find a way through that Volkswagen genuine parts Super Cup polo of Mahotzi stays ahead let's see what we can do now at the front end as, as uh, Marco van Rooyen oh I was about to say do we have a one two three now just picked up on the the black nose of Julian van der Watt's GTI and it looked slightly like uh, Nazi and Samunga's car and I thought we had the Gazoo Racing one two three there but of course, he's too far back right now to influence that. Volk in the slipstream. Can he get out and get past Julian van der Watt as they head towards turn five? Mahotzi goes defensive, keeping Campos out for the lead of the Super Cups. Maintaining. And at this point, not wanting to make any mistakes at all. Can't afford to make any mistakes. They would be costly ones. Oh. 
down towards turn number two, one to go again. And another lap of beats it now. We have got three to go. Oh, someone wide. That must be Nati. Nati, I think, ran wide there. Was it? Yes. Nati and Samanga running wide out of turn one. Just saw the Gazoo Racing GR on the side of the car, so you had to assume it was Nati. And that's moved Pretorius up. So Pretorius up into the top five now. Anthony Pretorius in his first outing. Top five finish. That's not going to be a bad option at all. So we've got Kazoo Racing 1 and 2 flying the flag high. Behind that WCT Racing 1 and 2. They sit 3 and 4 on the track. And then it is the Bucketless Racing SATC and uh, OMP car of Anthony Pretorius in 5th place. The Corolla. A bit further back though. Still in 6th place Schofield. First time out in that BMW. First race in anger. And uh, he said in his interview... Difficult car to learn how to drive compared to the single seaters. A lot heavier, a lot more stuff to do in the car. So you'll be looking to improve every time they get on track around the country. And the next one, of course, is Kyle Army. A multiple championship round at Kyle Army with regional and national championship classes racing on the same weekend. Make sure you've got that date in your diaries. It's certainly one you don't want to miss out on. Michael van Rooyen doesn't want to miss out on a potential top step of the podium and is giving it absolutely everything he can to stay at the front end and possibly spoil the day of a debut victory for that new car. 11, 12, 13 of April, that is the date you want to have for the next round of the National and Regional Extreme Festival at Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. Robert Volk has closed the gap down now on the top two. It's down to 1.4 seconds, which was about seven seconds only a couple of laps ago. Volk currently lapping in the 17 deaths. 16.8 and 16.9 out of the top two, so they've answered the pace of the charge coming from Volk. Campos pulls out, looking for a way past. What he's finding is that uh, with Jonathan Mahotzi, his car placement is perfect. And he is a very difficult man to try and find a little bit of a gap to get through on. Further back, Nathan Hammond continuing the fight there with Dean Fenter. And uh, just behind them, looking for a way past Fenter. Looking good. I'll tell you something. Watch out for Nico, Nicky Vistanis. Vistanis' first outing as well. Also not too bad an outing for him. Learning the ropes when it comes to the sport of SA Touring Cars and the Super Cup category. Variawa with one to go. Half a lap, in fact. <laughs> Possibilities that we're going to see a debut victory here in the Toyota Starlet for the champion. So the Corolla is going to end second by the looks of it. The BM is going to be third. They're coming up on the back marker. That'll be uh, Roberto Franco. I don't think they're going to pass him. They'll probably get to the line and he'll be uh, on his merry way to complete his final lap. But they're on the way to the flag right now and Michael van Rooyen is going to have to settle for second place here because Saud Variawa is going to give Toyota Gazoo Racing's Toyota Starlet its first victory in the second time of asking. Wins out over Michael van Rooyen and Robert Volk. And then into fourth place, Julian van der Watt just getting across the line ahead of Anthony Pretorius. Andrew Schofield comes through for sixth place overall. We'll go back to see what's happening. There they go. Down towards turn five. Nighty and Samanga still leading things out. Uh, Jonathan Mahotzi, I beg your pardon, still leading things out. Mahotzi leading things out at the moment over Campos. And now late on the brakes, can he get through into turn five? A very, very late break in there from Keegan Campos. Mahotzi there just maintaining and positioning, as I said, that car to perfection to keep out the attack on every occasion from Keegan Campos. It's a drag to the line. And it's one out by Jonathan Mahotzi. So Volkswagen Genuine Parts Super Cup Polo takes the victory. Prepped by Nathan's Motorsport ahead of Keegan Campos in the Campos Transport car. The Astron Energy Polo, Polo Super Cup machine comes through for third place with Charles Fisser at the wheel. And followed home by Brad Liebenberg in the Toyota Gazoo Racing Machine ahead of Davide Franco. So that's how we wrap things up here for the South African Touring Car Championship debut. 
and Super Cups combined. Awesome job there from all of the drivers and some spectacular race action. It's kind of what we expect to see every single time that those cars get on track. And more of the same to come now as we're getting into the closing stages. Our final two races of the day come from Gazoo Racing SA Cup. And uh, we've got before them the Extreme Supercars third heat driven by Dunlop. Back on track one more time with the extreme supercars driven by Dunlop and uh, my man Hans Bizet alongside me now just uh, finding out a couple of insights down in pit lane uh, a lot of work being done in between heat, heat uh, two and three try and find that little bit of extra edge that's required now for the last 10 laps of action they managed actually Lila's car they had damaged the rear right suspension when he went off so but they managed to fix it so he's back out everything looks straight and yeah, one or two guys actually had a cut tire, so we had to, they had to fix that. So apart from that, it's all looking good. And I think uh, 
Ricky's got a slipping clutch, so he's probably going to start from pit lane and okay. start at the back of the field. He can't stop again, so he just wants to have one start. So we'll see how that goes. Right, hopefully, and he can get out there on track at least. That's what we want. And see Bundnick's uh, yep, Viper back on track. He had a solenoid that was stuck on the on the gear selection, so he's fixed it. He thinks it's right, but we'll see. Okay, get to have the V10 back on track. Uh, looks like both Mercedes Benz also back on circuit, although we did see Sun with a slight off in uh, the second heat. But everybody seems to be back and uh, looking ready to go. There goes Sun Woodley. There's Zalila in the background, so picking up on him too, which is always a good thing to see. But uh, three race format, also slightly different to what they normally run. Um, normally run a sort of a, a 10 lapper and then a slightly longer second heat. This time out though, three laps, uh, slightly different format for them. Um, do you know what the plans are yet for Kalami? What's the Probably, they're I the think they, know, they do two at Talon. I think it's also going to be dependent on the program because we have regional extremes there and yes. we have the national extremes. So I don't think there's going to be any extra time, even yeah. for the Super Cup. That's a big one, as I said earlier on. You've got to have that in your diaries. 11, 12 and 13th of April at Carl Army Grand Prix Circuit. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so you definitely don't want to be missing out on that. It's going to be uh, action-packed weekend. Uh, tickets are available already for the race circuit, but of course we will be doing a full live stream production from there as well. So uh, stay tuned for uh, on all your favorite social media pages. Hopefully one of them is Extreme Festival for all the action and all the uh, information about what's going to be happening on the race day itself. Yeah, BMW, I think the BMW club's got close to 60 entries already, so they're going to be quite a big field. And I believe they're keeping them all on the track at the same time. Yes. Yeah, they don't have a choice because there's no, I don't that's, think there's going to be space in the awesome. program. Challenge will have 40 cars. Formula V's, I think, got over 20 entries already, so it's going to be a bumper day. It's really, if you I don't, don't want to miss out on that. You don't one. want to miss. Stay, stay very close to your social media pages for the information on that and where to go and what to do. Because, uh, you know, we've uh, had to fight hard to get Kyle Lamy back again it onto was, the national championship. It was off, then it was on, off, and then it was on again. So it was all, it's all good. It's always good to be at Kyle Hats off once again to Tanya and her team for uh, the negotiation skills to get it back again and for all the teams to agree to go and race there because it is a slightly higher uh, entry fee on the budget because of uh, the nature of the track but uh, needless to say it's still a race track and we definitely want to be on it if it's uh, available let's go racing because if you just take a team like fast development they run about 12 bmws they run all the gr cars he's running over 30 cars in one event so i'm glad i'm not freddy fast <laughs> freddy's gonna be doing some fast maneuvering around on that day yeah that's gonna be a tough one for him yeah. But it's uh, part and parcel of the entertainment that's provided by Extreme Festival, and that's what we're hoping you guys are going to enjoy as much as what we're going to enjoy the start of Heat 3, the final heat now of... Uh, if you were in that car, I'd put money on that car. <laughs> no, no tell you, I know what your, your capabilities are around here. Maybe not in a 4x4, but uh, you know, in a Mazda, you've had a couple of good occasions down here. Yes, I've also had some big crashes here, so it's, not, it's all so part like and parcel. A, okay, so like... The normal racing yes. driving story. I had a fantastic day. I had a really bad day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes difficult to be in the sideline, but uh, you know you're still involved, and it's great. You know, mm. and seeing all these youngsters come up as well through all the categories is, is awesome. If you look at what what Toyota's done with their the Geo the Geo 86s, where they're bringing some kids in, then they really look like kids when you walk through the pits. Yeah, they do. Eh? They're really small, and and obviously with VW with the rookie cup, it's it's unbelievable what. What the manufacturers are putting back in and i think it we haven't had this for many many years yeah. and i think it's i think it's it's gonna do a lot bring the carters into into the mainstream and then hopefully get them into super cups gdc's and, and maybe I, I, do, I do love the fact that they've they've run that whole program through the karting period as well so they run under gazoo racing or they run under volkswagen motorsport through the karting and then step up into mm. saloon cars if they want to go to the single seater route of course there's an option to go single seaters too which Schofield provides so yeah, the development process in motorsport at national championship level is certainly on the up. That's right. Mustn't forget, he also takes Formula Ford guys and puts them into GTCs. Yeah. 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 So it's also, we'll, we'll see what happens also with the karting. Um, their development program, I think, with, with Leroy has been unbelievable. And I think some of the guys are in there. And you look at what, the, what size and how they handle these cars. It's, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's always good to see that, Brad. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we, we always mention the fact that the future of the sport must look good, must look promising. We want some future Brad Binders out there. We want some future Funderlinders out there. That's exactly the process that they followed. They went through the stepping stones and have now gone on to the best in the world. 
But if you look what Micro and VW Motorsports done, they they the prizes they've put up. I mean, we look at Charles Fisher, he's now in a Super Cup car, yeah. and he's delivered. It just on shows debut. He, on debut, he delivers. Yeah, exactly. And his brother, I think he finished top top five in the second race yeah. now. So possibility Again. of a, in the top six and overall for the day. And he came from Rookie Cup, so it, it's yeah, it working. Is. Works. The job is getting done, that is for sure. So uh, as we stand by now for the start of the third heat of Extreme Supercars, driven by Dunlop, it's going to be, uh, I think... Do you think it's going to be closer at the front end between Franco and Stewie? Do you think they might have... Uh, I think it might be, yeah. But I also think that I think that first corner incident, I talked to people. Unfortunately, I don't think we got it on camera. They, I think three of them went off. So they mm. split up the field. So I think if they all stay together, it's going to be very, very close. Yeah, a little bit closer. They all getting... I was talking to them. They said the wind is so bad going... What's corner three now? I can't remember what it's called. Damps. Damps. Yeah. And damps are getting... I got in there so carefully, the cars with error, it just pushes them completely wide. Yeah, they sure. back off completely. So you go right through that half the pace of what you would normally go through. Yeah. That. And then obviously the braking into turn one, mm -hmm. with 40k an hour wind from behind you, it's it's not like a Formula One car, but I'm sure you're still gonna feel it. feeling it down. Yeah, you're still going to feel it. But they say the last corner is unbelievable because they're getting pushed. The arrow is pushing them down and through through the last corner. So they make up a lot, lot of it there again. It's awesome to hear. It's great to hear the insights that Tans can bring. Of course, having been in a race car himself and uh, had a chance to to uh, get out there amongst the best of the best. As a little Laka comes to take up his uh, grip position. Quite late in the day, though. I'm not quite sure why he was so far back and what they were doing, but he's now come and slotted in there just behind Silvio Scribanti on the grid. And then uh, just ahead of uh, Gianni Giannacaro in the big Nissan uh, Godzilla R34. Gianni actually went very well in, in race two. I think he took a second off his first race time, so yeah. he's coming to grips with that car in the Dunlop, so it's nice to see. I think you're going to see that uh, right through the season. Guys are going to just start chipping away there, getting used to how those cars work on the new rubber and how to set that rubber up to work with the car. That's, that's the mechanic and, of course, the uh, technical side of the teams that uh, a lot of these guys have got. You look at Franco's team, I think he's got four or five technical guys that work around that Porsche all day long time. checking every aspect of it you know um the scribanti is the same thing they've got a, a big team um run by byron and and and, and the squad uh stradale motorsport of course bringing a lot of the cars in for these drivers initially and then handing them over to their own teams but teaching the uh, the mechanics the, the the basics on what to do so there's there's big input from this from this category i think Charles also needs a mention in that car i mean i yes. think it's a 2008 he did a 12 in qualifying I think a few years ago they would have been close to the front of the grid. Kind of pole position, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the cars have really evolved. I mean, two, three years ago, I think the quickest time was 11. Now, mm. <laughs> the guys are doing nines in the GT3 spec car. One, one guy I also saw that was uh, walking around here upstairs with us in the, the commentary area in the restaurant was the fact that uh, Nias Modak didn't bring his trofeo out. It would have been nice to see that car on the track too. I'm not quite sure what the issue was there. He sold uh, the car. Okay, there you go. That says he it all. He sold that to Mr. Hammond. He's bought, I think, about most of the Lamborghinis at the moment. I think he's on his fourth one. He's going to put a whole endurance team okay. together with, with pro-ams type of thing. So if, awesome. you're looking, if you're looking to drive uh, one of those vehicles, give Mr. Hammond a call. Sam Hammond is the man to chat to. Yep. Um, I know that um, his younger son is not here. Nathan was driving in the Super Correct. Cup. But... Uh, the younger of the two would normally be in the Lambo as well. Not in this series, in the endurance series, but uh, that's nice to know. Yeah. So rolling out now on the warm-up lap, setting uh, themselves a target. One man to watch out for, of course, will be uh, the Ferrari coming through the pack. We saw earlier on Jason Ebertson, unfortunately, it all wrong in race one. He ended up in the wall. I think too much damage on that 458. But the 488 is back, and Dane Angel is uh, looking pretty hungry at the back end of this uh, uh, He's going to front provide part. some fireworks, that's yeah. for sure. You've got A-plus Class A and uh, GT3 that he's had to line up behind. Uh, C, D, and E are all behind him, so he's got to literally just get through the foster cars. Um, doesn't have to worry too much about the BMs and uh, the, the slightly slower Porsches at the back end. But take nothing away from those cars, because without them, we don't have a pack of 28 cars battling in uh, extreme supercars. Yep. You need to see what the Porsche does now. So Franco, how's he going to try and possibly look for a, 
a record of some kind. I don't think it's the ideal conditions to do the lap record in. Stuart had those this morning in qualifying and nearly got there. Uh, his outright lap record, just for those of you that have joined us in the late stages of the race day, and apologies for the, the uh, repeat, but uh, we do like that kind of information. And, of course, a 106.6 is the outright lap record at this track ever, um, which Stuart did in a LMP2 Janetta. And he was on a 107.9 in qualifying this morning. So that's the kind of pace he can find out of that into Africa Lamborghini Hurricane in second place on the grid alongside the pole man Franco Scribanti. So they're lined up. My lights are on as soon as they go off. They'll be held up nicely by Franco. He's going to try and catch them all as the lights go out. He'll drop the hammer. Watch the Porsche get away. The straight line speed of that Porsche is normally unmatched and there you go just a prime example of how well it works Stewie hangs on tucks in and right on his tail it was Jonathan Detoy getting a good start Dane Angel already up the inside of Gianni Tonacaro making up one two three three places there on the start into turn number one and now looking to possibly even make up another one into turn two onto the back end of Zanile oh. but then spins it so, oh, oh and one of the BMs goes straight into the front end of that Ferrari. Yeah, as wonder, uh, I wonder yeah. if there's some, something down there because that's not normally what would happen in a situation like that. Angel gets out the car. You can see he's not going to be happy about that. But I'm, I'm worried about is there something dropped there in that incident because Angel spun out, and then directly after that we saw the Mercedes Benz go off track and the BM spin at the same part of the circuit. So some big issues there for the two cars. And uh, let's wait and see if there's any change of surface flags put out of turn two, but Yeah, let's wait and see what happens when they get there again. Hopefully they're not going to put a safety car out the highway. So Franco out front starts the race day. And race three of the race day at the front end. Standing start, 11-9. That'll work. <laughs> yeah. Aldo runs wide. Yeah. Slightly hot into that, turn one. That's the wind coming into it. Oh yeah, double yeah, wave double yellow. Wave yellow. <laughs> double wave yellows. Double wave yellows from the recovery vehicle. Just warning the guys that there's two, three cars stricken on the outside. So uh, just warning the guys that there's a problem on the inside of that corner. And I think safety car has been called. Safety Probably car has right been called. Choice. That's why he's uh, rolled out of it slightly there. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm concerned about the fact that there might be some fluid down on the on the track there, but if, yep. they were, if they were shouting and gesticulating that much to slow them down, there there's a good possibility there. that there's something being dropped down red at flag. turn two. Red flag. Yeah. All right, so from double yellows, we go to red. Uh, having only completed one, they'll do a full restart. So come to take up their positions on the grid. And that uh, just, just... It kind of spoils your whole race strategy doesn't it <laughs> you've done everything right or you might not have done everything right it can work both ways i suppose they've already had three starts they've had a long day already so they're going to add another one to that yeah exactly the full restart of course takes place on the grid on the grid formation they will then go around and maintain their formation for that restart not like polos polos do the full restart grid formation and then when they start the the, the restart of the race they go line astern these guys will do a full restart in formation. So um, once we've got everything sorted out at turn two, I'm just watching. Well, it's good for the crowds. At least they get another full race. No, it does. Instead yeah, of, for sure. Running down the safety car, I don't think. That would have been great for everybody. So to the line they come. I did see a slightly better start coming out of Arnie Nierveling as well. He was up to third mm. and actually ahead of Jonathan, Jonathan De Toy for a while. And it looks like... He'll now have to just uh, resume his position, although he was there ahead on the grid anyway. He just was able to get through there and maintain that uh, third place. Whereas Jono wasn't able to just get through initially. I think Arnold also went off in the second race. So he, he was coming through the field. He was a bit quicker than than um, Jonathan. Okay. One or two tenths. So we'll Let's have a look at goes. that uh, in a little instant replay there as well there from our production team. There you can see Silvio going through. Schall goes through. Zolile goes through. And arrives there's backwards. So the Ferrari arrives in that corner backwards. So I wonder if something broke. The BM. Oh I, yes, I why? There's another two. You're right. The BM just literally went straight on. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe you got target fixation there. Could you know, be. sometimes that's what happens. You look into the corner, 
And where you where you look is where you go. That's the the theory behind racing, or any kind of driving. If you're in the, on the roads, even where you look is where you go. And the BMW unfortunately went straight into the nose of um, the Ferrari. So Oliver Hintas is going to probably be having a small chat with Dane Angel about that uh, manoeuvre. But the uh, Mercedes Benz also looped out, and I think Who it was, was, it? was it? I think it was Sun. Sun, yeah. Because it's a slightly brighter car in the background that I saw spinning. So. Sun Moodley also getting involved in that incident. Recovery vehicles sent on their way. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be some uh, a little uh, delay there in uh, the recovery of those three cars off circuit. Um, the one that I was worried about, the spinning one, was the Mercedes Benz, and I was worrying that that could possibly have caught some kind of fluid dropped onto the circuit if there was any. But uh, on the second look there, the BM literally just got straight off. Crazy. Unless something broke on his car as well, which is Could a possibility. Be, yeah. He had no turning or he just couldn't get on the brakes. There was no brakes and no turning. Johnny got out of it quite lightly, I think. He just pulled out of it completely, I think. He just pulled to the left and let everybody shoot, yeah. shoot past him on the right. Yeah. So. Stayed out of harm's way, potentially. Now lines up alongside his stable mate there in the Paget Racing Lamborghini Trofeo. Those little Galata trophies were, were good cars in their day. That uh, Galata Cup that ran. Very successful mm. series. And of course, we were the, the benefactors of that with about four or five of them coming into the country. Yeah. I see Chris is gone again, I think. Or is he not in the shot? Uh, yeah, he might not be in the shot there. He might be just out of shot, yeah. We'll keep an eye out for Bud Nick to see if he's able to maintain the uh, V10 Dodge Viper and still. 8.4 litres of motor vehicle. That's a, that's a machine, eh? It is. <laughs> that's a beast. <laughs> it really is a beast of a car. Uh, proper big machinery. But Chris is also, he, he works on he his is, own car. He's, yeah. a, he's a very detailed guy. He does all the work himself. So it's quite, quite nice to see him. And he's, he's done a lot of laps this whole weekend. But unfortunately, his race, race, race two was curtailed. So. Oh, looking out the window, he's there. Is he there? Yeah, okay, he's just behind great. the red beamer, so uh, he hasn't been able to uh, have any issues. Hopefully, he keeps that to the way it is and stays on with that big diffuser mm. out the back end of the car. He's all the, also the man behind the GR86. I don't know if people know that. But it's racing, yeah. He's done that, and he does it out of his love for the sport, which is great. For sure. Partnering up there with uh, Fast Freddy. Yep. And getting those cars to work, and they seem to be working pretty well t today. All of them finishing up in the 86 League and uh, still one more race to go on that. That's, of course, our last race of the day coming up just after this one. So uh, they've had a long break in proceedings between the two heats, but take nothing away from that. They're still itching to go. I think the media guys more than the youngsters. <laughs> think, yes. That, and, I think those media guys are just trying to keep them in their the element. Entertained, you know? Man walking down the middle of the grid saying eight lapper. Okay. So eight lap race being called there. So they're going to take two away for the time on track and the time behind what was the safety car being deployed and uh, bring it down to eight laps of race action. Ferrari's back on track and circulating, but I don't know if it's going to be uh, deemed race worthy. I doubt that. In fact, both Ferraris. That's Ibbotson's car coming in. That's the full 5.8. I didn't see him on the grid. So he must have come out of, out of pit lane, on maybe the other behind side. Ricky. Or and they, he's on the other side, side, yeah. yeah. So he might have come out late, but he's gone on. Well, he's gone on. on the, he's gone in on this side, so he must be still putting this side. But uh, if Ibbotson's come in and the four eight eight on its way around, uh, he'll have to come in as well. So it's been a, oh, it's been a hard day in the saddle there for the Autas Angel team. It's strange because I think he raced in one of the regional races uh, two weeks ago, and he did he did extremely well. I've got uh, comments coming through there as well, which we do here, just so you know, interactive commentary works. Eh? <laughs> um, first of all, from uh, Johan Foster, thanks for that. He, he loved Jason Lusmore's win there by 0 0.095. How crazy was that? Man? I think it's his first right? win as well. It's his first they, win, yeah. They really worked hard at it. It's unbelievable. And then uh, all the way, I think from Bulawayo, he must be phoning us from Bulawayo. Darren Winterbur says hi. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Bulawayo bomber. And then yep. you got uh, yeah some uh, some comments coming from our usual contenders there, Moira Thompson and and the likes. And I know that uh, Mark 
uh, is also watching. Friedman is watching from uh, from home. Uh, Gerald Ferry was also watching us earlier on. He sent me a WhatsApp saying that the internet was slow, and he's on a 700 mega megabyte fiber line, and he can't pick up there. I said, unfortunately, everywhere in the country right now is being it's affected by this hooligan uh, internet system that we've got. So even if you've got a a thousand meg line it's not going to work uh, coming through on a it's straw, coming through yeah exactly so we apologize for that unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that from our side we're trying to provide all the action that we can and uh, most people seem happy because i got uh, mark friedman sending me a message directly after that saying i'm good my stuff's fantastic <laughs> so uh, yeah i think just certain areas of the of the country might not be getting the the same stream as what we're putting out directly here from the city of cape town and Kalani international raceway so if it's an eight lapper, two laps down, uh, one lap to try and get some heat into the rubber, I'm sure they won't let them go off without that. It is a rolling start, so they have to bring them up there. But uh, as you as you mentioned earlier on, what's going to happen now is standing on the grid, tires are already starting cold. to get cold. Yep. Um, brakes are starting to get cold. Off the field uses tire warmers. Not not everybody does. Yeah. So they'll be a bit concerned. I don't see Ricky. I don't know if you made it out with his clutch. I don't think he's there either. Check, and there's 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 a prime example of how we send our signal out to the world that via duct that uh, duct taped <laughs> uh, little satellite dish. It's the same size as the satellite dish that they used to use with Apollo 13, but now it does full <laughs> internet live streaming. So incredible stuff there, yeah. But uh, no, I'm only kidding, Dave. Dave Peterson, and of course the team downstairs putting uh, the live stream together. We're uh, doing the best we can in trying conditions for internet. I was chatting earlier on, um, I don't know if it was, it was to you, I think it was actually to Rion. The, the internet is so bad at the moment that, I don't know if you've got Bluetooth time, in your eh? car, the Bluetooth in your car won't even connect to the phone. That's how bad it is. So you must know. We're, even we're, the live timing screen in, yeah. in pit lane, you have to keep refreshing it, it doesn't even keep you up to date with it. You know, and if you, I mean, if you watch, if you watch what we're doing on screen right now, and you watch the screen up top, just above us here in the restaurant, um, I can see what's happening. We're getting that's the live feed basically. So we're direct live on this monitor. But if we watch what's happening down on my iPad below me and on the screen above, there's about a 30 to 40 second delay, mm. and that's internet. Nothing we can do about it. It's all part and parcel of that. Um, I know that uh, Dave and Paul have both got a a plan that may rectify that in the very near future but of course that all comes at a cost and that is a there's a costly exercise right there that's not good to see Never one to horribly see. destroyed front end of a bmw that is such a pity mm. and also a good car there so to lose ollie and unfortunately there i've got to say the impact on the ferrari was big didn't look but the bad. ferrari didn't look as badly damaged eh? So I wonder if there's maybe some strengthening bits at the front end of that Ferrari because of the, the nature of the beast that it normally participates in and they've given it a slightly stronger front end. I don't know. Now we're waxing lyrical. This is what you do in commentary you just, in situations you, you just like keep, this. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'll come commentate for a few laps. It'll take 10 minutes. Here we are. Here we are, half an hour <laughs> later. Hans Berza not left me yet. Thank no. goodness. Whew. Thanks for that, bud. Appreciate it. I don't know how you do it all day. I do not know what you're doing, all this commentary, and you just keep talking. We and try, mate. We try. Uh, no, it's unbelievable. It's a talent. We try. It really is. So, we're going to start an eight lapper now with uh, Franco Scaranti and Stuart White on the front row. See if they can keep it all together and hopefully get us through this eight laps. Nice little tablecloth on the mountain there in the background. City of Cape Town is showing off. We've had a perfect day's racing. I thought this morning, I don't know, I think you probably said the same thing. Your guys must have woken up this morning going, No. Oh, no. It was a nightmare for us. Oh, no. When the rain rains, last night. Yeah. No, this morning. This morning. <laughs> I mean, you still joke because it, it showed zero chance of rain. I yes. Mean, our Thai team woke up this morning. No, it can't be. I said, Is that rain? No, it's not raining. And it they, can't be. They, it can't Open be. Open the windows and there it is. We arrived here. There was about, uh, I think, about 10, 10 cars worth of tires. <laughs> Waiting yeah, for changes. For, 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 for wet tyres to, to change over immediately. I've got to say hats off to your team as well. I think yeah, yesterday um, there was about a thousand wheels changed. Just sounds like hey? it, yeah. No doubt what about we can, it. We've done between on a busy day like, like yesterday. You know, at at Kalami we're actually going to break all records. Yeah, we've already 
expanded another team, so we okay. run two two machines now. And we're there also with extremes. We run a, uh, we had to run a, a bigger machine, up to 20, uh, 19 inch wheels, and yes. the width of the tire, and they're quite specific the way that they're racing wheels. So we actually had to purchase another machine just to to make sure we don't damage the wheels. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we sometimes that, our team does up to three hundred tires on a weekend. Well, that's is, that's the kind of thing that people don't realize, and yeah. that's why we bring you in for this kind of insight because mm. uh, you know they see the cars on track and they're racing. They don't know what happens behind the scenes. People in the restaurant this afternoon and this morning don't know what happens behind the mm. scenes when we do a live production like this. Yeah. They can see it firsthand here in the restaurant and see how it all works. They can walk downstairs and actually watch Dave through the production box as well. So yeah. that's what we're going to try and do here. Just change it up ever so slightly. But now it's back to race face. And it's time to go for eight laps of the final bit of action now from Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop. Once again, I don't think there's going to be an answer to the Porsches. Uh, incredible acceleration off that front row. But watch out, Barney Nebeling. Silvio goes with Arnie down towards turn one. Nebeling's inside of Jonathan de Toy again, and can he outbreak him into turn one? It's a hard man to outbreak. Jonathan de Toy on the brakes is exceptional and looks for a chance now to try and keep out that uh, Bobcat and Goscore Audi R8. But it looks like he slotted in behind him and he now comes up alongside him for turn two. Stuart White is second, Arnie goes to third, oh, Whoa. and Silvio around the outside, trying to find a way think, through there on Jono. I think he might have touched Jono there. Maybe a little touch there between them as they come out. They're still side by side, Jono now slots in behind Arnie, and Silvio goes on the hunt for the Trans-Africa Racing and Sudale collaboration Lamborghini Hurricane. Oh! oh! Big moment there for Silvio. That could have done some serious damage to that car. They are not meant to do for that. Off road no. loop sections. <laughs> no, no, stay on the white, no, on the black stuff as much as possible. I've got my good friend Andy from uh, the Scrutineering, and uh, of course, he's the uh, technical advisor at Investcap Formula 1600s. And he said to me yesterday, please show me in the white book where it says you have to drop, have to race between the two white lines. I, I don't know, but I assume that's the rule. So that's the first lap of eight completed. Now they want turn one. Jonathan Detroit sitting in fourth place behind Arnie Nevelin. Run a bit wide as well, but that's cold tyres now. That's all cold tyres. They don't have the, the grip right now that they need. It's going to take a while. And they don't have enough time really, because you said no. four or five laps to come into their own. That gives them two or three laps of really full go. race pace cooler conditions this afternoon, even cooler than what they were in race two. The monster BMW goes through there of uh, Dr. Mike Verrier and looking for a chance now to try and close onto the back end. By the looks of things of Budnick, that's pretty interesting. It's a, it's a five and a half litre V8 Chevy taking on the, what do you say, 8.4 litre V10. V10. <laughs> How's that for some figures? There's no replacement for displacement as they say, hey. R8 versus Hurricane into turn five and the two Hurricanes on their tail. So they're already winning the battle with the Bulls at the moment. In fact, yeah. yeah. All, all but one. Stuart White, Stuart White's A-plus car is the only bull out in front of uh, the rest of the hard charges there. And Arnie Nebelin keeping them all at bay. I saw some flags waving in the background there as well, just on that last shot. Just trying to work out where that was. But, uh, needless to say, it is Jonathan Detoy trying to close down on Arnie Nevelling and the two Scrabanti boys just bridging that gap ever so slightly between themselves and Jonathan Detoy. And Budnick. So Budnick would be second in Class A at this stage. Yeah, Correct. second. He's Charles Arangis, Charles, yes. yeah, would be leading it out. There's Ricky. So he did get out of pit lane on that slipping clutch and gets going. And that would put him into third place. That's the reason he's out there. Yeah. Score those points. Retta leads class D. Blunden leads class B. And Renzo Torrento is there in second in class D. Uh, Mike Verrier, class C leader. A little bit further up the road. In the monster beer. Nice run out of... Uh, Mom do there for those two cars. Lead cars already down towards turn one. There you can see the traction starting to come in. They're able to turn in to turn one a lot better. Closer to the apex. Closer to the line they want to be. They're on. ready. They're ready very close to what they did in the first uh, second race. 
getting very close to those times. Zulile also putting the pressure onto the back end of Gigi now. Gianni Donacora feeling that pressure now from Zolile. Because with the A-plus car, we'll have a little bit more squirt in it than uh, Gigi's got in that R34. Also, just want to mention, I know we haven't really had a shot for me to mention it at all, but that one shot I saw of Stuart White um, in his interview earlier on, he was also mentioning the fact that um, it was Calso Scribanti's birthday on Thursday. Uh, he would have turned 80, the late Calso Scribanti. And I believe they're running a tribute sticker to him on that, that car as well, the front which is of the car, yes, really I nice to that, see yes. that from the team. We actually did something special with him on the Cape 1000. There's a, there's a shot of me going down the hill in the Austin, then coming up the hill in the 599. And it was uh, made into a mouse pad for everybody that uh, attended the event. So that's, that's nice awesome. little tribute to them as well. Big supporters of that one. And of course, big supporters of the extreme supercars now driven by Dunlop. So Frank and Stewie evenly matched. 109.1s, 109.2s, 109.5s, 109.2s. He's actually in catching the him a little bit, but. Yeah, he's closed it slightly, but uh, Look, uh, as we, we saw. Know, yeah. <laughs> as we saw in that second heat, he can just literally. But if you look at the GT, GT3 class, 10.9, 10.9. So they're yeah. matching each other to the tenth of a second. Yeah, well, that's awesome to see. And even Gigi, okay, well, yeah, he's maybe not there yet, but 13 fouls, but he's Sylvia. had a bit of traffic. Silvio, 11-6. They're there and thereabouts. That's, yeah. what, that's where you want Quite them to close. be. Within that second gap is where you want them to be, huh? So across the line, and another lap completed. We're into the halfway stage being completed now. Into the second half of this eight lapper. Franco still continuing in the 10 or the, the 109s. 244 four that time. 531 from Stewie. Could be possibly quite frustrating for Stewart. Uh, knowing you know the kind of skill he has as a driver. And everything he's doing in that car is right. And he just can't bridge the gap to the Porsche. No Maddy, I think he's just teasing him. Yeah, oh, I think so too. That, that's what he's doing. Oh, I think so too. Silvio. All on his own, so pulled away slightly there from Aldo. But not close enough to Jono. Jonathan Detoy, uh, has he made a little maneuver? Let's have a look at that. Yeah, he has. A 10, mm -hmm. 9, and 11 dead. So it's about two tenths there between him and Arnie. So he's certainly looking for a third overall. See, Clolila just got past Gianni. Yeah. And Chris is uh, running half a second quicker than Charles. So double he more yellow flags there. down into turn five. Who's gone off? Possibilities of a car off here at turn five. Seeing those yellow flags waving. Inside Porsche. No, it's the monster BM. Uh, it's the BM. It's uh, Veria. So Veria must have spun out coming out of the exit of turn five. Always easy to do when you've got a lot of power under the right foot. Just that acceleration might be too harsh and loops the back end out. Pity to lose him, but I'm sure he'll get back on track. It didn't, like, didn't look like he was stranded. Looks like Arnold. Arnold's pulling away from, from Jonathan a bit. Now, Jonathan closed that gap down, but I think Arnie's responded. Yeah. yeah. He's just done his quickest lap with 10 9. 10 9. Now, down that back straight away, Stuart White looking for traffic. He's found it, but is there enough time? Because there's only going to be a lap. Yeah, only a lap to go after this, so, well, could be. Yep. There's four or five cars that are in that, in that marked traffic at the back end that could help him out. Let's see what's going to happen now as they come through there. One of them is, is Jimbo. Not too much of an issue there. Porsche on Porsche, but uh, slightly differential uh, or different uh, versions of Porsche there. Going through is turn one. Is it An Anthony Blunt? There we go, into turn two, and a smoking BMW out front to head as well. That's also not something you don't want to be seeing at this stage. No, it's... Oh, two smoking BMs. One was the Monster, one of area, and the red one just ahead there is also starting to smoke ever so slightly. But, yeah, uh, easily done in the end, but it has brought the gap down. 
Is that enough though for Stuart to have a go? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Here we go. Stuart got the power down out of Sorrel Sweep in a big way. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. There, once again, just a little bit of a app on the boost. Keeps him out front and the Sheriff is on its way for right. another victory. Look at that. Stewie's going to make it hard for him though. Runs good corner speed, but just not got the straight line speed to outgun the Sheriff of Killani. Once again, it is uh, Franco Scrivanti with a victory in the Extreme Supercars A-plus category for round one of this championship driven by Dunlop. And it's Arnie Neverling, hangs on for third, great job. Top of the GT3 list there for Arnie for the first time. He beats out Jonathan Dettori and Silvio Scrivanti, who also beats out his brother Aldo. Aldo coming through there for third place in A+. But Nick hangs on for the win in Class A. Here he comes now in the Viper. What's and happened to Shaw? Shaw Larangis. Yeah, you know, he's dropped right down into 15th place, so... Uh, he, he apparently stopped two laps ago. We might have missed that watching something else on the circuit. So uh, he's dropped right out of it two laps ago and off the circuit. So Arangis may he may still be classified though because uh, Ricky will get second. He's down in 15th, 6th and they completed 8th. He's still within the classification. So he should still get classified for third in Class A. Class C went to uh, Budnick. No, sorry, to... Uh, yeah, I would have gone to Budnick, surely. No, he's in Class A, I think. He no, he's Class A. Pick your part. So where's Class C? Class C would go to Jimbo. Jimbo gets it then for Class C. Class D goes to Marco Retta. And that wraps up uh, our coverage of Extreme Supercars driven by Dunlop. Hans, once again, thanks so much, bud. Absolute pleasure. Really, really awesome to have your insights in, in, in the commentary booth here. I still don't know how you do it all day, but well done. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be up next with uh, the final bit of race action coming out of Gazoo Racing SA Cup. That's our last bit of race action here from round one of the Extreme Festival. We'll see you soon.
So the final race makes its way onto the circuit now. It is Toyota Gazoo Racing SA Cup and the 86 League. And as they're making their way around, let's catch up with a couple of the new contenders in those uh, incredible Toyota Gazoo Racing GR Corollas from the media side and see what their plans are for 2024. GR Cup has changed completely this year. It's just a whole new look and feel. It really is good to see that uh, Toyota and the Gazoo Racing Squad, back in this racing, are getting behind the series and changing things up. But from a media point of view, it's just like some new faces going on here. Take us to it, Burns. How's it going so far? Oh, it's going great. Um, Toyota has been a wonderful team to, to start the season with. And um, yeah, I think we're in for a lot of fun this season. And let's go. Have you had the right act already sent down your way about uh, what you can and can't do in these cars? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, I'm sure you have. But uh, you also had a little bit of experience, so hopefully going to be uh, up there and uh, in the mix from the start. Yeah, um, it's been an interesting start uh, since first practice and now the second practice. Um, the car is perfect, uh, big brakes on the cars as well, and I mean, I think I'm just trying to get myself now in a manual car on track, uh, where I'm just trying to get my gears right, but I think that you can't fault the car, it's going to be an exciting season. Um, the guys are gentlemen, I think, like you said earlier, they did get the memo. <laughs> Don't about that, we'll, we'll chat later about that. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's um, overall excite excitement um, all around. Selfie guy, Al, how's it been so far? Um, I think many of us will agree that it's a dream come true. Um, most of us are in the, in the automotive journalist game and um, this is the pinnacle basically for what we're going to do. It's probably the funnest thing that we're going to do yeah. for a very long time and it's probably the funnest thing we'll ever have done. So very grateful to Toyota for providing us with the opportunity and it's a great opportunity for us also at Car Magazine to be able to share these experiences of track days of how the motoring sphere in South Africa works with anyone who's interested and um, the good news is it is alive and kicking there's a lot of action going on um, and an example I always give just to digress that to the still stay on the topic of Toyota is we look at how many teams were at the Dakar that were from South Africa Toyota included and it's an impressive number South Africa's got some incredible talent here Six League makes his way down towards turn number one for uh, the final race of the day. Eight laps of action coming away now from our media challenge in the Gazoo Racing GR Corollas. And Sean Nurse was the man to beat in race number one. Let's see if he's able to do anything about maintaining that uh, double victory uh, honor that normally goes to the first round amongst our uh, media contingent. It's, uh, it's been a standard option with them actually on a few occasions now. And they'll be looking to sort of try and hunt him down if they can. Kumbi on cars. Uh, Kumbi Machasi will be looking for a chance, of course, to uh, possibly uh, take him on. Let's see what we can get out of the rest of the pack. Bernie will definitely look to improve if he can. And uh, maintain that battle that was in earlier on. But at the front end, expect to see these little 86s being uh, put through their paces. Particularly by Davi Fonamava. He was the man that they all had to try and find some kind of way of catching. And uh, if we... See that car, the back left hand uh, windscreen has actually got a learner's ticker on it. And it's a little tongue in cheek joke there from, uh, uh, we're not going to say who, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of retribution being shown for Darby and him stepping across into this category. But just uh, some fun with the uh, categories and the inter relationships that happened with those categories as well. So Funamova is in the purple wing machine, he'll be on the front row. And looking to try and stay at the front end of that battle if he can. Heading into the start of this one. Dylan Prozzi will definitely be looking to improve. He got uh, up onto the podium. And was fighting around that podium position all the way through race number one. And the man from Zimbabwe definitely looking to uh, become a big factor here in this class. The 86 League will start things out there. Those rear-wheel drive Toyota 86s. Of course being put through their paces now. Not by the media contingent, but uh, this year by uh, the younger drivers in the uh, GR Cup. The specs basically there, of course, are a four-cylinder boxer engine in that GR86, and it's a 2.4 naturally aspirated machine. It's got the paddle shift, it's got an exhaust pipe on it, and it brings about 180 kilowatts of power. And then behind them, of course, are the GR Corollas, 
uh, 1.6 litre three cylinder engines and uh, looking to give about 220 ish kilowatts of power six speed manual and uh, going to uh, take on the GRC GR86 Cup competitors out front so here we go lights out and it's Darby Fadababa getting the drop as they head towards turn one now we wait to see if they uh, update the timing so we can see exactly who's who in the zoo here heading towards turn one Nico Zafiris was on the front row there and looking for a chance to take on Ryan Nyker so Chaba Mashigo will definitely be a man to watch out for he's in the triple seven car and was of course the uh, the champion last year in the media challenge and he'll be looking to maybe just uh, up his pace there to stay on pace with the the younger drivers here in this final heat of uh, GR Cup SA driven by Netstar Bernie Halberg was slightly higher up there he is you can see him into uh, the, uh, the the hunt there but not quite at the front end of the field because at this point in time it's uh, once again Sean Nurse and Hannes Fisser they're not doing the damage at the front end Alex Shahini in there as well any known car there of him just ahead of Yucca van and uh, then Bernie Halberg and Kumbi uh, Machikazi from Kumbi on cars running in the tail end of the field right now let's go back to the front end and see if things start to heat up there inside line on the 70 car of Nico Zafiris and it's Shachaba Mashigo who uh, gets up on that inside line using that inside line to his advantage of course is Shachaba because remember he has got uh, a couple more laps around this Kalani International Raceway in these 86s than some of the other drivers uh, maybe not as many laps as what Darby Fonham has had in his race career around Kalani International Raceway but certainly um, in the 86 car he's had more laps than Darby has but it's not been able to give him a chance to catch the man out front and uh, within the space of uh, the first lap being completed he's pulled 1.4 seconds has Darby Fanamava over Sichal Mashigo. nice move there from Dylan Praji Praji moving up onto the tailpiece now of Nikos Zafiris just getting through there on Ryan Nyker Ken Swartz further back from that and then uh, all on his own some there Sean Nurse leading things out in the uh, Corollas so it's similar vein in both fields at this point in time that we can see leader getting away and leaving the rest of the pack to sort themselves out behind him and that's in both the Corollas and in the 86 league Darby able to pull 1.4 seconds in the first race our first lap of the second race and if I look at Sean Nurse he's pulled about a second or 1.2 seconds actually over Hannes Fisser and Alex Shahini so you'll see the hazard lights coming on showing you that uh, the ABS systems have not been uh, shut off on these cars they will still run standard ABS on these cars as they come under braking showing that when the hazard lights come on that ABS system comes in and assists the driver to do the braking that's required as well as allowing him to do the turning that's required at the same time and then into turn two the pressure's on because now we're seeing Zafiris looking pretty dangerous and wanting that second place back over Machigo so Sachaba has got some work to do he's got a younger and uh, maybe less experienced Carter on his tail but uh, certainly looking for a chance to uh, show his prowess here and then not too far behind that Dylan Praji is bringing a steam train along Nika and Swartz have joined him and the three of them are trying to work together to get onto the back end of uh, Nikos Zafiris and make it a four-way fight for second it'll be a five-way fight if they can get there though so it's fun and over onto the brakes down into turn two into turn five Praji hangs on 286 on his tail in fact Praji's lost out there so Nike has got through I say 286 is actually 285 on uh, Praji's car so good run across the line there from him Sean Nurse quickest on the Corollas and also quickest of everybody out there right now 126.7 there for Sean Nurse and that's not a bad run there from the uh, brand new Corollas there involved in this category 
So Gazoo Racing SA Cup driven by Netstar. You see Sean Nurse go fastest out of everybody, including Darby van der Mava. That I just put Darby van der Mava's tail up slightly. If they pass that information on to him on the uh, pit wall, he might just turn the wick up ever so slightly to improve his time. He'll only be about, uh, what, a tenth he's got to find, one tenth of a second to go uh, into the fastest car on track mark. Hannes Fisser tucked in behind Sean Nurse. I say tucked in, but it's about uh, one and a half seconds to play with between the two of them. Inside line here from Sachaba. Defending for his all his worth as they go into turn five. Same thing can be said there from Ryan Nyker's point of view. Nyker in that battle for fourth. Trying to keep out the Zimbabwean. And he in turn is trying to keep out Ken Swartz, who's joined the party. So up towards turn two they go. Mashigo from Zephyrus. Bit of a gap now between Ryan Nyker, Praji and Swartz. They've lost a little bit of ground there. Should have tried to stay there with Ryan Naka because I think he could have helped them bridge the gap here to these two. So Chabo Mashigo and uh, in second spot, the third place raging in the hands of Nico Zafiris. Can he find a way past? We'll wait and see as he gets onto the back straight now. Trying to use the slipstream slightly there as well to have a go on the uh, passing down at the bottom of the straightaway he pulls out is there enough time for him to go around the outside probably not around the outside of Sachaba Mashigo that'll be a pretty impressive maneuver if he gets to pull that one off Mashigo gives him a little bit of room and just squeezes him slightly but I think Severus has got through there I think Nico got a slightly better run coming out of uh, Cape Town corner and he's now a wing mirror to wing mirror nose to nose as they cross the line heading down into the final well, into the uh, start of another lap and into turn one. Oh, it's still close. A little bit of a battle scar there, so somebody's touched. And once again, Sean Nurse goes quickest again. 126.6 now out of Nurse in that Corolla. Battle scar is just that uh, door and uh, sort of B pillar to C pillar. Soul that runs on the side of the car. It's come loose. Marshals will be watching that just in case it becomes a bit of a, a problem and maybe a, a safety or issue there that they would be concerned about. Doesn't look like they're too concerned just yet though. We're happy for it to stay on and for them to continue racing. Down into turn five. Darby van der 2.3 seconds up the road. Late braking from the 70 machine again of Zephyrus. Hanging on for that three spot. He's not going to give it up. Second and third fighting hard here. He does not want third. He wants second. And Zephyrus has got through now on Sechaba Mashigo. Nike coming. But is there enough time for him? These two having a bit of a dice in the media challenge in the Corollas. So Yako van der Merwe and uh, the seven car there, Bernie Halberg. Almost side by side out of Cape Town corner. Here they come, completing another lap. And that is lap number six in the bag. So two to go for the front end, two to go for the media challenge cars. The Corolla Cup, the Corolla GR Cup, and the 86 League having a magnificent day in the saddle here for the opening round. New drivers, new cars, other than Sachaba Mashigo. 
All getting a couple of new, new bits of livery as well on those Corollas running with the, the new color scheme that GR will be running worldwide. Inside line and no, no door opened whatsoever there. Chelmer is going to have to try and find another way around. Because the door just seems to be being shut on him all the time. Nico Zaveros wants that second spot on the podium. And they start their final lap. That battle still raging into turn one. Prodigy's made his way up into... Fifth place behind Ryan Nyker. And he'll have to be worried. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's getting up close and personal now. Sichaba Mashiga trying to find a way through there on Nico. Nico opened up the door. Sichaba had a look. Then had a little bit of a closing of the door on him while he was in the, uh, the doorway. So, for the last time, onto the back straight away. Everything she's got using all 180 kilowatts of power on those cars heading towards Fastron Corner or Cape Town Corner as it's affectionately known here in the city of Cape Town. Gazoo Racing SA Cup has been pretty awesome for the start of their championship for 2024. Side by side and door to door. Sill to sill you could say there. But 86 League is going to go to Derby for them. have two wins out of two starts. Sechaba Mashigo timing it to perfection to get through there for second place. Beating out Nico Zafiris. And Orion Nika hangs on to keep out Dylan Praji from Zimbabwe. Then it's Sean Nurse, Hannes Fisser, and Alex Shahini who come through for the top three in the media challenge. So that kind of wraps up our day at the uh, first round of the Extreme Festival at Kalani International Raceway and uh, driver's still coming to the line there at the back of the pack of course is Kumbi Machazzi and uh, sorry Machikazi Kent Swartz had a little bit of issues in the closing stages and had to go back into pit lane so pity to lose that youngster but watch out for him in the future uh, 11 of the 12 finishing up there and uh, getting to the finish line here comes Kumbi on cars to wrap it all up Wrapping things up here from our side, a massive thanks to our team down in the production house, Dave Peterson and Paul Bedford, to uh, wrap up, of course, uh, the day's racing. Uh, it was also great to have some fellow commentators with me today, Heinz Berzer joining me there. Uh, we got uh, Daniel Rowe in the seat as well, and Clint Mutton came and joined me for some zx 10 Masters Cup action. Uh, we'll be doing that more and more throughout the season, and of course heading uh, to Kyle Army on the 11th, 12th and 13th of April, for the next round it's a combination round of the regional and the national championships that's why they're running it over three days so definitely something you don't want to have off uh, your calendars make sure you make note of that uh, date 11th to the 13th of april so lots of race action heading up towards the uh, the sort of cathedral of motorsport here in south africa Carl army grand prix circuit and uh, of course lots of action at swat Cups happening over the next couple of uh, meetings as well. We've got Historic Tour making its way to Swatkops International Raceway. There's big action down here at Kalani International Raceway as always and uh, always race action that you want to be seeing. Get onto those social media pages now. Go and check out all the race action here from the day and the live stream. Share it to all your friends and fans and family worldwide. Let's uh, keep uh, moving in the positive direction that we've got here with our live stream feed and uh, giving entertainment to people all around the world. We had people from New Zealand, Australia, uh, earlier on joining us <coughs> throughout the afternoon the Europeans have all joined us as well and a couple of guys jumping in now in the early morning in the US of A uh, on uh, some of the fees that we've had today so uh, from my side a massive thanks to all the marshals and medics as always and uh, race control for running a very smooth day and uh, from uh, the extreme festivals point of view Tanya and her team uh, working in conjunction with Des Isom and Mariska Rodane here at the Kilani International Raceway to bring you the first round of the Extreme Festival. On behalf of our team downstairs and uh, all of our TV crew out and around the circuit, we hope you enjoyed all the live stream action and we'll see you at Kyle Army in a couple of weeks time 
on the 11th to 13th of April. From my side, Greg Maloney, the voice of choice. Take care then. Bye-bye now.